see both these guys' decks. Do we have the Mox Fields for the deck lists? Um, they should be up. So Perfect. We can take a look at those guys when they get them posted. I'm excited to see if... So Sam obviously picked some stuff that's not going to wind up in her main deck that we thought we're going <clears> to do for Thespian Stage and, and things like that. Right. So I'm curious to see what she's playing main, what she decided to move into the sideboard. Yeah. Um, so... Oh, okay, so she is doing a main board uh, helm combo. Okay, that uh, makes she sense. Also, listen, she also is, I will say, not uh, as adherent to the strictures of competitive magic. So if she's playing like 43 or 44 cards, ah, I would not be terribly surprised. Okay, interesting. Uh, she... Because she finds it more difficult, she probably just finds it more difficult to make the cut than... Gotcha. She didn't add swamps to her deck because I'm assuming she's playing more than four lands. So she's probably uh, playing... Can you scroll up and see how many cards are in the deck? 32. 32 so cards in the deck. Swamps, so if so she's playing eight swamps, she would be playing... 12. 12 plus, lands Plus two MDFCs. Six. Doesn't that say six included? Oh, six including main deck double face cards. Got it. Um, she's on eight swamps. Got it. So she's playing very land light. And, and I yeah, hate so, it, but I hope that it works out for her. Yeah, I mean, um, so, I mean, essentially, it works out to 15 lands. But, I mean, go down, because, uh, uh, you know, Moxfield will show us the mana curve here, and you'll get a better sense of why I believe she's doing this, which is, if we just scroll over, and there we go, and boom, guys, dynamite. It's, uh, it, you know what? It's not that the curve's not low. Sure. It's that I worry how many keepable seven-card hands she's got. Uh, yeah, I mean, Assuming she... Assuming this is the case. Like, that's what I'm worried about. Now... The new mulligan rules aren't bad. You can mulligan once or twice and be okay, especially with a deck that's got some really powerful combo. Uh, it's, got so it's got so many tutors in it. Uh, a card like Skull Clamp, like you said, can make it up. My issue is I think she's going to be mulliganing a lot looking for mana sources and or keeping a lot of one-landers. And that's just a scary place to be in. You can get, you can, uh, you can get unlucky. And in a seven-round tournament where you're playing every single person, almost always, and everyone even, who's played VR even the knows, Even the Masons... Kind of, you're kind of trying not to get unlucky. Even the Masons among us have never gone seven and zero. The three time, and uh, you're gonna have that kind of variance in uh, in a VRD, which is why like that is the holy grail of of this format with like the meta that we've kind of cultivated. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Swift. it's really hard to do it, but yeah. like you Swift. just you just go with the best formulation, not the one that is most likely to get you to right. win. So uh, Swifty, to go seven zero as opposed to anything else. Sure. So Swifty's deck got it uh, over here. Um, he's playing a fairly good looking uh, yeah. blue white control deck, splashing a little bit of red um, for some cards that he's got out of the sideboard. I think he's got at least one main deck red card. Here so, uh, but I can't see it. Um, I, uh, a we braid, the whole thing, so a braid, kind of comet, stellar pup, yeah, just like very, very light, comet, on, very yeah. light on the red. Mm -hmm. So you know, I I pushed for this matchup to be uh, our first one, uh, mm. not only because we're we're doing our best to make sure that like, excuse me, as many as possible of the featured matches are Chicago versus St. Louis. So we're gonna yes. have the other players play our intra city matches yeah, off yeah, camera. Absolutely, that's a great uh, idea. But. Also because, like, at least in my estimation, uh, these look like the two 5-2 and two decks. and They look nice. And, you and, know, and they look like they'll have a really nice match. Yeah. You know, Prog prognostications forward, about, like, who's going to get what record and everything like that. That rarely works out, except in my case, because I basically nailed it to the T last draft. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> but, like, I, I think that coming out of the draft, these are the two most coherent, uh, m most dangerous decks. And I think it's just going to be a really good match because uh, what Swifty has that is really going to stymie Sam is exile effects on the removal. He does. Yeah. So that Swords to Plowshare, Solitude, uh, Solitude Council's Judgment, like all Prismatic of that stuff. Ending? Yeah, Prismatic Ending, yeah. Um, and a lot of good stuff looking there, so. And so, like, you know, also we can say, uh, or, well, some people might say that Sam has the best-looking deck after the draft. I think that's easy to say because she ran mono-colored, so she was able to just run roughshod over everybody else in terms of getting what she wanted. I'll be honest, uh, I think Sam does look like she has a really yeah. good deck. 
she has got a serious deficit in play experience. Yes, we'll say that one hundred percent. And like, um, listen, I, this is this is a this is a woman I love, mm-hmm. uh, but no hate, no hate. She, I mean, yeah, but no. she sure. she does just she just categorically does not have that play experience. No, yeah, she she play tested yeah. the deck at infinitum because that's one of the things that she had to do to get competitive to, to get competitive yeah. mm-hmm. in this format and like that's like you got to do what you got to do to to get there but like yeah nothing the the deck that she drafted she did mm-hmm. so in no small part because she does not know what the what many of the cards in her opponent's decks do mm-hmm. and so if you draft thought seizes with not get rid of your opponent's best card but get rid of the opponent's card that I know the least about. And like, I don't, I have an uncertain fear level over mm. that is like, it, it's, 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 it's like a, a game theory, like Nash equilibrium thing where it's not based Start on, out, on it? pure utility. It's based on their utility relative to you. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, that's, that's why she drafted this deck. And, Oh, that could not get worse for Swifty uh, going double ones. Uh, <laughs> so Sam will be eight on the from play Sam. Match. Love it. You know, there, there was a discussion uh, about whether or not uh, Sam wanted to be on the play for a lot of these matches with the deck that she has. You know, just having that be a kind of a means for card advantage. Oh, thank you, Swifty, pointing out the Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo MD. Uh, mm-hmm. An esteemed doctor from Medicine University, a philanthropic billionaire, playboy, genius. Uh, I heard he wanted to be an astronaut next. Uh, yes, I, I, I'd also heard that. But, you know, rumors abound about such a nearly mythological figure yeah. Some in pop culture. Some would say the most interesting man in the world. Yeah. Um, so looking at, and also at some point, Mark, if you're out there, uh, you should remind uh, the players on camera to uh, just at least to some degree, hold their cards up to the camera. Uh, so we've got a good sense of like what to comment on. But what we do know yeah, is that Swifty has, an okay job. has an Urza saga and yeah, a Vincer and a, and a, and a, not a steam. That's a hallowed fountain. Mm-hmm. Whereas, Oh, there we go. Sam, <laughs> Sam's got uh, two mountain or two swamps, uh, a bitter blossom and some other stuff. And she's yeah. going to start off with a nested shambler. Beautiful. A little old border on that nested shambler. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Swifty's hand looks very Ooh, slow. Yes, Unless it he's does. Got something he's got something away in there that I didn't see. At least it looks like his two, first play is going to be to fairy time raveler, which yeah. which is not going to help. Quickly, Sam comes oh, out of the gate here. Oh, and Sam has an inqu- is that an inquisition? He does have there, an inquisition? Or is that a grief? And a thought seize. She's going to hit him with a double discard spell here, and if she just takes his cheapest cards away from him, oh, he could be in a lot of is that a prismatic here. ending? That is a prismatic ending, which she could potentially scoop away from Swifty with this inquisition. And then if she goes after his Teferi with the Thoughtseize, uh, his see. first play isn't coming down until turn four. Oof. That's, and his Glacial Fortress, as of right now, is coming into play tapped, yeah, and which it, means it's going to be hard to use all of the, the ticks of Urza Saga. Yuck. Well, so, and it's looking rough for my man. I'm not going to lie to yeah, you. Yeah, so, and Sam, I think, you know, in my estimation, did the smart play, which is getting rid of the prismatic ending. Yep, it, yep, like, agreed. You know, you can say that this uh, this zombie deck has like a lot of recursiveness and it, you know, whatever, but like it is important to have a zombie on the board and online so that Gravecrawler can do its thing when necessary. You know what? Uh, and so she, yeah, she Sam does. Sam kind of got busted for not being able to take a land out of his hand um, with the thoughts he is, but. I do like the gusto there. She's like, yeah. oh, this guy only has two lands in hand, and this one's an enchantment? Yeah, fuck that card. Ow! And, yeah, and so she so does She does here. the, hey, uh, you don't get to play until turn four. Oh, my God, and she, took, and she took the Teferi. I, mean, I actually think that's perfect. Just, Way to go, Sam. Just like, it, just like it got drawn up. Mm-hmm. Um, so now Swifty's really got to find some cheap interactive spells. The, the tough part Swifty finds himself in now is that he needs to find cheap interactive spells. He also needs to find lands. And so in her hand, uh, she's representing Helm of Obedience. Yep. Uh, like a, a lay, no, that's a, that's a Tatsu Zumakawa, whatever. Mm-hmm. The, the land. Can we go ahead and pull that one up? Takanuma. Takanuma. Yep. Takanuma Zaka. So she's playing it. She won't get her channel value out of it. But oh, she but does okay. Have so so what she's, what she's going to be able to do this turn is she's going to be able to attack with Nested Shambler. Uh, okay, oh. so she didn't. 
Okay, so what she so does... So this is kind of a tricky one. Because she's putting the minus one, minus one counters on it, I believe she's not going to get any squirrel tokens. Uh, That's... Unfortunately. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, if, Mar- if Mark Mark can let her know. Yeah, well, Swift, Swifty did yeah. the, the hard work Swifty there. Swifty was actually our resident judge for quite some time. Uh, the man's very knowledgeable about the rules and uh, and a pretty darn good magic player to boot. Yeah. So, so uh, with with Sam's um, matches, you're, you're probably going to see this uh, fairly regularly where um, she'll... There, there'll be an accumulation of tiny kind of mistakes like that where she has the opportunity mm-hmm. to get in for an extra damage. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It is nice that the deck she have is, the deck that she has is particularly forgiving of that. Mm-hmm. Now, if I understand correctly, Swifty should be at 18 life, not 19. Uh, she did not She did not attack. No, but whenever oh, the zombie point, control yeah. dies, each opponent loses one life. Should have triggered, uh, though. Yeah, if we, is, could, if we could go ahead and put Swifty down to 13 because of... Is it a yeah, may trigger? It it it's a miss trigger. It is what it is. Um, All right, so Swifty gets a game thing. loss. That puts Sam ahead <laughs> early. Damn. Yeah, you know, uh, Plague Belcher just a really oppressively powerful card. Um, so Swifty's making a little bit of a comeback here. So Sam yeah. sacrificed a little bit of early board presence for a big punchy threat, which is great. Um, but now she has to come out of that. She has to come out of that and not let Swifty get a stranglehold on the game. So wait, did he? I guess he drew into the Mox Emerald. Last turn, he drew the Mox Emerald, okay. which uh, I, didn't allow him to play any of his four drops because his land still came into play tapped. But it did allow him to activate his Urza Saga uh, twice, which now has has provided him. They're with both four fours. Four okay. And black is notoriously bad for killing artifacts, so I don't think uh, Sam is coming through with any. You know, mass artifact destruction or anything. I, I mean, she's so pretty just on the hook for this. Frank, frankly, uh, the card that she wants to draw right here is just Dismember. So she attacks in with the Plague Belcher and takes care she of both of them and maintains and she, her and Plague Belcher. Yeah. I don't know that Dismember is in the main board. Mm-hmm. Uh, computer, Derek, please verify. I think it's probably in the sideboard, though. And yeah. so... Uh, in the meantime, Swifty yeah. is looking at uh, being able to play either Five Mana Teferi or Karn next turn. Karn threatening to just pump out more Silver Golems. So that's going to be a tough thing for Sam to beat. I think what Sam might need to do here is shift into, okay, I've got a Dark Confidant. I'm going to be drawing and, extra cards. Okay, right so... Uh, oh. So she... She has to show that to him. She, but I a, think she did. I okay. think she just showed but him in a way that I believe I believe that it was a grave crawler, mm. which means that she can now... Uh, start. No, she can't start. She's very close, she doesn't she's very have close to having the combo, and if she doesn't have the full combo, she at least has creatures that can attack. Uh, you know, plague, uh, plague bear, plague belcher can ping for some extra damage. I think she needs to get into a. Okay, so I'm she's got to figure out how to combo mode. Because... Uh, yeah, so she's got a, a bitter blossom, and now these can. Uh... That's a okay. Rough one. I mean, but to be fair. Uh, this is still a. This is still Sam gets, uh, an extra card and an extra creature every turn at yeah. this point. Yep, can't disagree with that. And uh, you know, theoretically, uh, she's drawing extra cards. If she can come up with enough cheap combo pieces, uh, she'll be looking good. Um, I think. She's got to be a little bit careful here that she doesn't throw yes. away too many of her on-the-board resources. So far, she's been pl- pretty liberal with just kind of throwing those things away and not worrying about uh, jockeying over board position too much. Okay. Swifty's going to so plant that Teferi real quick. Not putting anything... Yeah. Uh, Until Swifty gets something in hand particularly impressive, so he's kind wait, of on did that she one just, Did she just show... Was that a culling of the week? Um... Uh, possibly. Possibly. It was something that cost, what, three mana? Four mana? Oh. <laughs> STL in Chicago. Heck yeah. That's really what we care about here, okay? Absolutely. Even if my team refuses to acknowledge that they're supposed to not kill each other in the draft. <laughs> uh, can we put that, just you know, for, for symmetry's sake, put that right above the uh, St. Lotus logo underneath the dice? That would be delightful. Love it. Beautiful. All right, we have... Oh, so Sam actually played a Contamination, which is a cool one. Yeah. Uh, she's got the Contamination it, plus Bitter Blossom. Now, it hurts that Teferi's already out on the board. It also hurts that he's got 
two different colored moxen. And okay. And it hurts, especially that he has Karn Silver Golem in his hand, which he can just play off of colorless mana. Um, but he says, I'm not dealing with any of that. Puts it on top of Teferi and says, I will have my colored mana. Thank you very much. Which is fair. But I mean, Swifty actually was in a position where he could potentially fight through that contamination. And he says, eh, you know what? I don't really care to, actually. Uh, I'll deal with it later. But yeah, the longer this goes on, you know, obviously Dark Confidant can pose a threat to Sam's life total. But if you consider the fact that two cards are being drawn every turn, and even more if you get into a Skull Clamp territory... She already has Helm of Obedience in hand. And so if she at any point just draws into Dothy Voidwalker, that's that's basically game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's tricky. Swifty is playing an interactive deck. He's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, but at this point, Sam's in a pretty bad position. She does need to she needs to hit here. Um and we'll see. The contamination should be helpful, but cards like well, Benser, yeah. and uh, it, the counter spells that he's got. Um, at, uh, and so she's going to be able to attack in with one of her flyers uh, to get that Teferi down to one, but it's going to stay on board. Unfortunately. Um, yeah, and so the contamination is what she will be drawing next turn, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, off of uh, Dark Confidant, which is not out of all the cards in your deck, Contamination is one of the ones you don't want to be uh, hitting with Dark Confidant. No. Considering no, the she's taken a lot of damage off for Dark Confidant so far. She hasn't just hit a lot of lands, which is usually what you want. Okay, so do we actually see Swifty's maybe Grandmaster plan here? Is he's got the Thought Scour in hand, and he can use that to pick off the top two cards of Sam's library and get rid of that Contamination for good. Now, against so Sam's deck, that's kind of interesting, because there are some cards he could flip into her graveyard that would be quite good for her. Um, so... And I believe yeah. she just played a, the, oh, we got ley line and that's going to get countered. Yep. Swifty says nothing here. At, with the way Swifty's hand is looking, he's got one of those, if I don't want it to happen, it's not going to happen kind of draws. And, and Sam's going to need kind of a running series of good stuff coming off the okay. top in order to get back into this. But she, yeah, she does remember to get in, um, and keep that Teferi within striking distance for next turn. Mm -hmm. Now, to be no, fair... No, she does not. She gets in and hits his face. She okay. says, that guy can't minus right now, so I don't care. We're getting in there. We Look, we know we have to kill him eventually, and that's 13 points. So she flips over Contamination and something off screen that we can't see, but let's hope that it's not a special tool we'll save for later. It's a swamp, so... Um, you know, not, nothing as lucky as, like, hitting a grave crawl or anything like that, but, you know, Swifty gonna untap and draw. Pretty land light for Swifty. He's only got three lands in play. Um, against some decks, that would probably hurt him, but Sam, fortunately, doesn't have a lot of artifact removal in her deck. If any. Yeah, I, I, I think very recently they might have printed, like, a black card that destroys an artifact, but before that, I think there were, like, none in the game. That it did. Uh, so... I don't know if she's even running any main deck removal spells. Uh, there's no Dismember. Um, there's no Tragic Slip. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that was probably a mistake there to block uh, that construct because she, he's or she would have been able to just take that damage and then swing in and kill the Teferi. So it's definitely a little tricky in the sense that she is all the way down to 10 life, and she's been taking quite a few damage turn off her bob. Mm -hmm. I, along with the Bowder Blossom, I think Swifty's finally done the calculus and said, you know what, I can attack with this 3-3. Three, three. Didn't even make it a 4-4 four, four pre-combat. <laughs> a little loose there, buddy. Um, Idiot! A little loose, I will say. But, um... How, what did he use to cast that, Karn? Oh, he gets to untap two lands with his Teferi because he ticked up. Okay. Um, okay, so we have an Entomb, so that means Gravecrawler is online, and if he lets a Phyrexian Altar happen, uh, that still doesn't do anything. 
now she's got uh he's got solitude in his hand which is a bummer um he's also got a lose focus which will act as a pretty decent counter spell for whatever sam is doing since she's also a little mana light and there's there's the grave crawler yeah which obviously she doesn't need to counter basically all swifty needs to do is keep so so ideally you know we don't like she's she can't be guaranteed to have it but uh you would love to be able to have a um uh a sacrifice outlet available to counter essentially at this point do you go face or are you going after planeswalkers uh i at this point i am Mm -hmm. I would have started already going at the Planeswalkers. Um, I, you know, I hopefully Teferi would have be at, at one at two, two at two at this point, and then I could go at Karn and say like, I dare you to make another construct token. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, threatening the Karn doesn't seem bad. Threatening the Teferi last turn seemed okay, but Sam's pretty sure she's like, listen, if I'm gonna win this game, it's gonna be by trickling out single life points from my opponent. If so, if looking at the board state right now. Uh, what I want to do is, like, I don't know if it's this turn that I want to use Dark Confidant to block. I think that that, you know, you've got uh, four fours in terms of constructs. So using mm-hmm. a Relentless Dead and a Dark Confidant to double block one of the constructs, I think is what you want to do. Then you pay one to return Relentless Dead to your hand, and then you pay another one to uh, return Relentless Shambler to the battlefield. Mm, that's interesting. And I like that. That's like, that's the recursion that you're trying to get out of this deck. Sure, sure. Relentless Dead's a pretty interesting card. When our when our cyborg is back, we'll have him pull it up on the screen. But yeah. it was a fun one. Jerry Thompson won a Pro Tour with that card yeah. uh, quite a few years back, back in, when Amon Cat was the standard. I actually think it was Pro Tour Amon Cat. Very, very popular sort of strategy. Uh, one of the first casual decks I ever built was a Zombies deck. Hmm. Little, little uh, you know, 11-year-old me or whatever would absolutely lose his mind looking at a card like Champion of the Perished or Relentless. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're just so much better than they used to be. There's one or two that's like, oh, well, this enables a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. But, uh, or that that are from that era. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, just in general, the power level is so much stronger. All right, so uh, Teferi has been minused to put the Dark Confidant back in the deck. I don't know that that's a great call necessarily on Swifty's part, uh, but mm-hmm, whatever. Um, Bitter Blossom is still going to be doing damage. Uh, the Vincer has returned. Oh, okay. He put he out wanted, enough yeah, to go, he just to, to go, to go off for 10. With the construct tokens. He yep. was ready. He and Gravecrawler can't, Grave can't, can't block. Yeah. Okay. So. Swifty found the line. Yeah, you know, and, and so um, that's why I think in that instance, you make sure to keep the Planeswalkers as low as possible because you can play mm-hmm. the attrition game. Sure. I think ultimately that's probably what Sam had to go for there, but it's tough. Swifty had a really Ag- pow- agreed. had reached a, a point of having that 4-5 or five mana. He had a lot of powerful cards in his deck. And, you know... Drawing that Mox Emerald was huge. Drawing that Mox Emerald was, was big and... Uh, after, like he his opening hand was not good you know the no. stuff that he found wound like wound up making up for you know, ultimately uh ultimately what was a tough tough uh turn one for him and that goes back to what we were mentioning like in the initial rounds of the draft like going mox mox urza saga that won him this game yeah absolutely ba- i mean, I mean urza based saga on... is a crazy magic card yeah. making two constructs and then just going and finding a different mana source, really, really insane. Yeah. Um, him getting to make that one extra construct very, very easily. It was probably the difference between a win and a loss here because if her plague uh, bearer, or plague belcher, got to attack one or two extra times, she would have been cruising to a victory there. Yeah. Um, man, you know what? I got to give out mad props to Sam for coming out and doing something like this as her sort of introduction to magic. <laughs> it's, been, I, it's, it's such it's, a crazy thing to do, but like... Yeah, it's insane. What a, like, very, like, sort of bold, and I really appreciate it a lot. Yeah. If you are watching along at home and also want to do your first Vintage Artisserie Draft, get on our Discord server, which we will post the link to. Uh, join our community 
do a draft online, dip your toe into the format. It's a hell of a fun format. People play it all over the country and all around the world. And uh, there are always guys like Brandon, me online, who are uh, ready to talk about the format, um, help people out with first time drafts. Well, we'll, we'll be around to talk about the to about ask. the format. Yeah, lots, <laughs> help help lots is a. You can't help ask, is a funny you can't word. ask Brandon for help. It's like asking a blind man to lead you to water, okay? It's true. I have a I have a divining <laughs> rod. That's a magic card too, I bet. Hilarious. Exactly. Talk is equal to argue. Or just like loudly state one's own opinions. That's yeah, that, that is a lot I of say, what we mean when by I talk. Say it's coded. talk. I mean a lot like I will tell you that I am the expert and know everything, and then you can just listen to whatever. When in fact talking. that is true of me. <laughs> so <laughs> Divination has not been picked yet. Are you sure it's playable? Um, that's a great. That's a great question. <laughs> Draw two sorcery. Um, as three we mana. all know, <laughs> the first time that the card sorcery two blue draw <laughs> was, print, was printed, um, it was called Council of the Soratami, and it was printed in Kamigawa. Before that card got printed, um, no card in Magic had that text. So really, when you say divination, what you're really asking is Council of the Soratami. That inspiration card is would be so close bad. to the card I described if it wasn't an instant and also cost three mana. But I appreciate that flavor text. Wow, what a what a dope flavor text. Derek Bot, will you hand me a Budweiser? Why do I talk like a robot? That's because I'm translating because into you're robot. Try, yeah, you're trying to get yeah. it to understand you. It's like uh, when you talk weird to Siri to try to get her to understand you. Oh yeah. Remember back in the day? Remember back in the day? When they when kept like, asking Siri to like show me where to hide a body? And I'm like, it's been a year. This isn't funny anymore, you fucking idiots. More. Anyways. <sighs> Getting drunker really about excited. two o'clock in the afternoon. I was about oh, to. Oh, thank you, comment, Mark, but, really... but we got a whole box. Let's get drunk. <laughs> Have you ever done musical theater, Brandon? <laughs> That's you... not ever something you would guess about me, right? <laughs> You should, uh, you should. I don't demand to be the center of attention everywhere I go. That's weird. Uh, Council Show Tommy hasn't been picked yet. Are you sure it's playable? You know what? It might not be playable, but at least it's original. That's what I'll say. Just like half the decks in this draft. Boom! Roasted. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! I got him. I mean, um, like, I honestly, I think it is cool that, like, it's not as fun when people don't come in with the idea of, like, I'm going to draft Minsk and Boo. I'm going to draft it so early it makes your head spin. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. fun, and I want to play it, and uh, like that is what is propelling me yep. through the rest of the draft and through my matches is because like I, I want to do something cool and fun. I very strongly support that. However, that doesn't mean you take Sulphur Falls before a Fiery Islet, for example. But uh, it's like, if you don't... like This is one of the only formats where you get to do that. Um, if, and not, I, if not the only format. And I will say, we went back and forth about Minsk and Boo a lot. And we, I could not figure out if you didn't take Ooh, it first or is... second, you know, round, like in the second or third round. I, I, I truly could not figure out in my mind whether or not someone from down here in St. Louis was going to take it like second or third pick. Like if it was going to be the first colored spell that they drafted. I mean, it it, does, it hurts that you don't know who is drafting because yeah. I think if you knew the lineup, you'd be like, oh yeah, we're good. I would assume so, but I know Dan typically keeps his finger on the pulse pretty well. I want to say, or, yeah, Dan, Dan, I'm, I'm not crazy. Okay, Jesus, for some reason I just thought I <laughs> said the wrong name of the person who was in the draft. Um, Dan typically has his uh his Ooh. finger on the pulse pretty well. A grave crawler followed up with a hymn to Torak. Yeah, that's beautiful. And you know what? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We that is it. such a powerful card against Solitude. Ooh, oh, nice. it, which hits. I nice. didn't even know he had nice, it in his nice, hand. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, because if you choose to Solitude in that moment, you go from seven to three. Right. Mm -hmm. That is brutal. Yeah. And you don't um, even know what you're left with. Hopefully, I mean, I would love to see Sam really try to come, like, come out with something really strong this turn. Well, she, well, it's imminently possible because she has not only Entomb, but Vampiric Tutor. Yep. And so uh, at end of turn, she can Entomb and Vampiric Tutor for a uh, reanimate. As long as she doesn't in the or, right order. Or, and then she can just 
uh, get that reanimate and reanimate the solitude and exile mm-hmm. the chase from his prodigy. Now I don't know how much she's practiced with Vamp Tutor. I don't. I think that was. She's in had a. Hand. She's had a a better amount. Like that is actually one of the things that I kind of had like a, a discussion with. Like, hey, remember that you can do, you this, can do this at the end of their turn, and you can do it in your own upkeep. Yeah. So yeah, because it's possible that vampiric tutoring for. Well, I think she drew the entomb maybe. I was going to say vamp tutoring for like reanimate and then reanimating solitude and killing Jace there probably would have been very strong. Um, and vamp was the card that she drew that turn. So yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So close one, but it's, sh- it's interesting. Now she doesn't have any big reanimator targets per se. It's not like she's, putting she does a, not no. a archon of cruelty into it's, her graveyard and reanimating that. Reanimate is a value card exclusively. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. it's it's not like you're reanimating a grizzle brand and then like having to get in like swing in with it to recuperate the life that you lost from reanimated the grizzle brand uh, it is a situation where the cards either have enter the battlefield triggers or it is something that completes your combo that you need to get back like you need to reanimate a zombie so that you have a zombie to bring back your, back your grave crawler absolutely so Swifty's got a little untapped draw action. I'm wondering if he's a little land. Uh, yeah, I here. don't. I don't think, based on what we've seen. Okay, so uh, yikes. So that he's absolutely going to take the swords to plowshare. Oh, I mean, he does need a land though. Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm thinking. That's I'm the that's the beauty of oh, it's it, it's here. ponder. It's not. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, he's going for the land, and he's saying, yeah, you can hit me again with your grave crawler, not a big deal, but she's going to go with... Oh, no, 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 don't don't vamp first and then entomb. Uh, that does look to be the mistake she's making. Now, it's possible, like, after she realizes what she's done, she'll be like, oh, hey, you know, I kind of messed this up. Is it, is it possible I could just kind of run that back? And I'm sure it's right to I totally uh, to, to be fair, it. I also might have mistaken Entomb for a Nested Shambler or something like that. Mm, I uh, think it was Entomb. It looked okay. like a single block of like five or six letters or whatever, so I think it looked like Entomb. Here, here's the thing. Is I'm already putting in my vote. If that's what happens, if she vamps and then Entombs, uh, I, I say we all collectively forgive that. And just I, move on. But, you know, I, hey, I I'm think that's biased. probably the case. I think that's probably what will happen. I don't think anyone really holds it against her. I mean, but to be fair, she also already has um, Gravecrawler out, so she might just be waiting to, mm-hmm. uh, like, she's she doesn't feel like she needs to use Entomb, and all she's doing right now is getting either a Phyrexian Altar or, let's say, a like a, a Plague Belcher or something. That might get complex because 50 does have one mana counter magic in his deck. It's true. Um, that is a fair point. It would, I guess, be up to Swifty maybe if he wants to grant her that kindness. Um, I I do have a feeling that it would be something she could get away with, but we'll see. She That might not even be her intention. Yeah, it looks like she doesn't even really care. She just wants okay, to yeah. get to it and draw her card. So. I can respect that. It makes sense to me. I wonder if she's trying to resolve Ashna's altar here. Oh, no. She's going to Dire of Colossus. Interesting. And okay. so th- this is one of the things we talked about, but like you will see perpetually with, I will say, newer players, mm-hmm. uh, especially when they're playing on a featured match being viewed by, you know, dozens of people or whatever. Mm-hmm. The anxiety comes in and you always revert back to the habit of playing your spells before the combat step. Sure. Sure. And, uh, now, I do think Swifty's got a pretty nice line here where he's going to plow, flip Jace, plow again, and really clean the board up and look very strong going into the late stages of this game. Um, we'll see then if Sam can rebuild some kind of a threatening board, but I have a feeling she's going to be in a tough spot. This matchup looks like it's gotten a little bit away from her, which yeah. makes let's sense. Also, let's also uh, remind, so many remind Mark to put that in exile. I don't think she Oh yeah, she's got it. necessarily realizes. Yeah, I mean Diagraph Colossus is like an objectively better card than um uh than Gravecrawler. Yep. So you'd like theoretically want to do that. 
Mm-hmm. He gets to play it again, so it doesn't matter so much. Right. But uh, yeah, in this deck, you absolutely want to get rid of Gravecrawler. Uh, because it looks it, like he's actually, I think he's going to go for this sideboard card that he drafted, uh, this green-white multicolored card. Could you pull that up for us for the text? I know the relevant, the most relevant part of its text is uh, when it comes into play, you get to search up some lands, but more importantly, it stops your opponent from paying life or sacrificing cards, um, you know. Uh, so it's going to stop any, like, astronauts altar shenanigans, any, um, you know, blood artist sort of combos, stuff like that, so. It's a 4-4, four, four. and uh, it doesn't have keyword looks like it should have flying, but it kind of does, if you're just, if you're, if, if you're like, eyes are kind of crossed. You, you, it's... The fact that it has boar in the creature type, you're like, oh, okay, now I get it. Mm-hmm. it, it it's kind of inscrutable at the beginning. Mm. Now, I, I but don't he can't, imagine he can't that he play, has a basic forest card in his deck. Uh, no, that would it doesn't seem like that would make a whole lot of sense to me. Mm-hmm. But by casting this card, this four drop does not have access to white mana, mm-hmm. uh, meaning that this grave crawler cannot be. Don't excuse let this me. Hurt. This grave crawler cannot be exiled turn. this turn. Mm-hmm. So if she, which could means that a Phyrexian with, altar, yeah, so can make she, this pop off. If she can remove the boar, um, if she can find a way to kill the boar, uh, yeah, I don't. Sam is not a fan of sideboarding. I will say that much. So um, I don't know that the dismember came in. I saw that she had boarded in Vampire Hexmage, which seems uh, like a fairly good choice. Wait, okay. wait, wait. Players can't s- sacrifice. Yeah. So that means yeah, she just no gets Astro. contamination for free. Uh, no, because it's not activating ability, it's a triggered ability. So the cost of contamination is not like you're you're paying a cost for the no. ability. It's just no, unfortunately. She still has to. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, Bummer. Not... I mean, it, 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 it still works out for her, but... She it, can still play it from the graveyard. Yeah, out of all the ways that she could have gotten back into the game, Contamination seems like a, as good of one as any. Um, however, now she has to get, deal with getting beat down by this boar and getting uh, pressured with, like, a Jace Ultimate or something like that. But we'll see. She's still got some cards in hand. Game's not above it. Or game's not uh, game's not over yet. You can be a big pig, too. Oi. da 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 Sam tapping her mana very oh, quickly. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm right oh, Castle Lockthwain. She draws an extra card, figures she needs to pick up uh, some options here. We'll see what happens. Sound at 10. Yeah. So, at our next upkeep, that contamination is going to go away. Unfortunately. She has, she has, in the meantime, managed to draw a couple of cards. She still has the Grave Crawler. Uh, in play and has managed to prevent Swifty from casting any spells for two turns. Yep. Which is nice. The unfortunate fact is that he's got some flash cards uh, and he's probably going to be able to, you know, use his mana on her turn. Man, he's missing a lot of land drops, though. I don't know how land light he's playing, but wow-wee has he missed a lot of land drops. I mean, yes. uh, This, the reason we wanted this matchup to happen first is because at least I I believe that these were the two most well crafted decks coming directly out of the draft. All right, we got to reanimate. Is this coming down or is this getting? Oh no! She could hit the solitude. Yep i I'm guessing maybe she wasn't thinking about the idea that she could hit her opponent's stuff. If I had to guess. However, that probably would have ended very poorly. So if he would have simply played his Venser, picked up his own Solitude, and then, you know, threatened to have a Solitude for this game. Kind of a rough one. Instead, he's going to stick uh, Venser in yeah. there, bounce that guy. And it looks like I have an attack for six when she's only at five life, and that should be game. game. First blood goes to Swifty, game. representing Chicago, Blouses. baby. Nice job, Swifty. Way to clinch it up and take it home. Yeah. Um, Sam, seems like there are a couple things she's probably going to get used to playing with her deck against everybody. Yeah. Doing some little, you know, vampire tutor tricks or reanimating her opponent's stuff. 
definitely room to improve, but I think, you know, props to Sam for stepping up and drafting what looks like a very, very good, very, very cool yeah. zombie deck. I will, uh, you know, I'm not, I think it would be overly biased of me to go out there right now and to uh, mention anything specifically to her, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, somebody else who's out there can absolutely say a lot of these things, which is number mm -hmm. one, as we identified previously, I think Swifty is had the best draft, not including her. Sure. I mean, I, his, his deck looks very good. I think that Swifty's deck was almost uniquely uh, drafted in a way that disrupts uh, her combos and essentially uh, counters what she's doing. It has it, it it follows tempo very well, and the fact that it, it has exile effects in ways that other decks just absolutely don't uh, is particularly painful. So I, if I were out there, what I would say to her is that it's like this is th that was what you just played was the hardest match uh, I, yeah, theoretically that, that, that you're surprise. going to be playing today, mm -hmm. and that now it's out of the way. Like you yeah. can, you can, uh, you know, hopefully feel less stressed and feel more confident going forward as like you're, she's undoubtedly going to be picking up, uh, game wins and match wins going forward. And like, as she said a couple weeks ago, she's like, I would be over the moon. These are not her words. She would never use that phrase. She's like, I just want to go four and three. Like, that would be so cool if she had a winning record. Well, I'm hoping, and I think you are right, that that was probably your toughest matchup. So, I fully believe in Sam. Um, and I think uh, I think she's going to have better luck in some of the future matches. Meantime, we got Jeff coming in from Swifty. And Jeff played one of his matches off camera. And looks like he got a quick W in that one. So, I when I talked to Jeff, he's very excited about his deck. He's feeling really, really good. He yeah. really, really likes sort of his, his overall plan. Yeah. So he probably played against Dan. Yeah, he played against Dan. <coughs> so that's interesting. I'm, you know, I'm very curious to see how that uh, that match played out. Um, but uh, hopefully, we'll get some little uh, elven messengers in from the far reaches of the other room <laughs> over here, and they'll uh, they'll give us some insight. Uh, it wouldn't not, not necessarily now, but you know, eventually, uh, we'll it get some reports about how these how these matches are uh, how, are playing out. It wouldn't surprise me if, in a pure race, uh, Jeff with a with a decent draw just out, outpaced uh, Dan, and Dan wasn't able to hold up. I mean, it's probably close, but Jeff's probably going to have a lot more opening hands that look like a fast combo kill than Dan does. Uh, Dan, you know, really only has channel kills that are looking super fast. Correct. And uh, <clears throat> if so, our uh, Derek bot is currently uh, being serviced. That's weird. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> all right. Uh, but no, our, our Derek bot was out for a little bit, but if uh, now that Derek bot is back, uh, maybe we can pull up the mox field uh, for Jeff and see what made the cut for main board and what was relegated to the sideboard. It did seem like there are a lot of choices to be made. And so we shall see, but uh, yeah, as of right now, um, in terms of both play experience, play skill, I said both, in terms of all included, those things uh, along with quality of draft and against the field, I think that it seems like Swifty is the front runner. Um, kind of going back to what I was saying where it's like, I, I think the perhaps the average or the aggregate number of wins for St. Louis may be higher. Mm hmm but it, I think Swifty has got a really good chance to take this down. And I think he'd be super stoked to, to pull in a dub. I like I, so I, too. I love Swifty. I love the, uh, I love the creativity with the decks. Um, I, I don't know uh, that he's ever taken one down. I don't know if he's ever gotten first place in one of these drafts. Uh, but I think like I would be so stoked for him because I really like the way that he's not afraid to, uh, try things out and go a little off the wall. And like, mm -hmm. in fact, it's like a requirement, which Absolutely. I, per I personally, I personally love. Um, and it's awesome when that comes together. 
So it looks like Jeff did in fact dump all of the adventure value creature package over to his sideboard, and in his main deck, he's looking can like I, a pure combo deck. Can I ask a, a question? A lot of creatures, yeah. What does the initiative do? <laughs> the initiative puts you into the Undercity, uh, which is a custom dungeon that you can only get to by doing the initiative. Ooh, sexy. Um, and then you explore down, and it basically kills your opponent. I mean, the initiative is like you get a like a monarch token, basically, that says every turn go further into the dungeon. And the dungeon kills them eventually. Okay, so reveal the top 10 cards of your library, put creature in Let's get back down to the action. Deck's looking nice, though. Okay. Got a few turns hey. of land go. It looks like Swifty was probably on the play. Grand Abolisher. And led off with a Jace Vrin's Prodigy. Jeff uh, answered with a Grand Abolisher. And then Swifty you know, missing his third land drop. He's uh, been doing he played prismatic that regularly. Ending. Yeah, so if he is looking, I don't know how land light he's playing. Maybe we can have uh, our guy check how many lands he's playing, but he is, yeah. He's our... Land drops. Oh, okay, so he that's he has balance in hand. That is not a... Th th this seems mildly intentional, but also not the best strategy. Uh, hmm, this is interesting. So I think that he's just... He is tr attempting to get Jace... Uh, up to Planeswalker status this turn uh, so he can cast Balance, wipe out Jeff's creature, and uh, eliminate his hand. Mm -hmm. He does He does have Balance in hand, and it looked like, at least to me, that he had another land in there as well. All right, drop I will that say, right if the results are that Swifty has 15 lands, a main deck, double face card, and two Moxon, that's a real shame. He should really play more freaking lands. Oh my god, it's like... I disagree with what that. Do you that's mean? no. That's don't no. look. Okay, you guys are looking at me like I'm insane. No. I'm, you're not the, insane. What it's is just the like, point of having a mox if it's just wholesale replacing your land for turn? Just play another so land you, at because that point. because then you have another spell in your hand. If you're accelerating into something and if you're missing all your goddamn land because uh, you only have 15 fucking lands. Listen, what? man, go ahead and play. Go ahead and play your cryptic I would commands play, I would play and your mystic confluences and all of your vincers and caracuses. That's fine for that kind of deck, which, to be fair, this is, is kind that of kind of yeah, deck. Yeah, that, to be fair, <laughs> this, this is, is that kind of deck. deck. I I still uh, I still think that for Sam's deck that the the land choices <laughs> could have been thirteen and thirteen plus two plus one, and that's fine. But uh, in yeah, in the case of Swifty's deck, if he's I, I do agree that he needs to go up at least going up at least one is a, a better main board decision. Oh my Just, lord. Uh, Listen, you know, unfortunately, the the facts of the matter are that if you want to play all the super cool spells you want to put in your deck, you do have to put lands in it. Okay? Gross. That's all I'm saying. Gross and stupid. What do we got here? We got a Ranger of uh, Ranger Cabin of Eos. We had a little Jace oh, and we got action a... to shrink it, and we're still... We, we hit a land drop. Okay, we're, we're but... We're at three lands now. But, now, as we have noted, Jeff mm -hmm. does not have strong, if any, counter magic... And this balance is going to stomp his wiener hole. Yeah, that assuming is that, he that is the technical spell. guys. That's the technical term. Don't be gross. Yeah, assuming that he doesn't have a counter spell, Swifty could rip a balance off right now. If Swifty is suspecting that he might have a counter spell, he doesn't have a four. He has he has the lose focus, right? Uh, well, what he could have done is he could have used Jace to give his spell pierce flashback until end of turn, right? It lets you play it until end of turn, uh, yeah. and then cast the balance and been like, "Do you have a counter spell? Well, I'll just spell pierce it." Who cares? Um, now that wouldn't have worked the best against that single blue mana counter spell. I but in general could have been pretty could have been a decent line. Yes, I th I think that I think that Swifty is looking at this right now and saying like because Ranger Captain of Eos is what's attacking right and it's a yeah. it's a two something or is it a three mm -hmm. three power? It is a three three normally and a one three after <clears throat> after getting his, hit with your stability. Okay, so like he just, it seems to me that Swifty is just baiting out more creatures. That this is just a, like, all right, this is this is how you want to do it? All right, all right, friend. Um, Keep go, go, that, that's go definitely ahead. That's definitely possible. It's go also ahead, sort of a fact. Some more creatures out there onto the battlefield. That's how, that's how Swifty sounds. That, that's, his, that's his voice. I have heard that guy before, and he definitely does sound like that. That's true. So, so here's the problem with delaying that choice, though. Why are you on a... Is 
A, he could be reluctant to do it because Jeff has fewer cards in hand than him, and he doesn't. Okay, he did. He did tick down, and this is what is happening. Okay, there you go. Um, now I think you have to do this because I don't think letting Jeff go to another turn where he can sack Ranger Captain Adios to silence you, and then just you know potentially combo off or something stupid. I don't know that that's necessarily where you want to be. Agreed. Um, oh wait, he 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 might not have ticked down. He might have just gotten. Yeah, he hasn't ticked down the Jays yet. So. That is a swell speller. Swell 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 speller. Swollen spicoli. Uh, well, this okay. Just like me and my fifth so grade spelling bee. He, here's that the, guy's here's a swell the thing. Speller. This is a this is a ticking time bomb. Is that the right metaphor that we're using here? Because now what you've just done is given Swifty the opportunity to make this an instant speed balance. It has so, it has protected your board for the right now. However, however, Swifty's got a lot of instant speed, like, get fuck stuff. Well, so that's true, but you have to keep in mind, there is both a Ranger Captain of Eos to wholesale silence Swifty, and there's some other runes to protect the spell caller. Does, it, so. does spell caller say cast or play? It says play, doesn't it? It oh. lets you cast the spell. It puts okay. it back onto the stack. Um, but... Okay. Yeah, the, the problem is that, like, Mother well, of Runes protecting it is going to be uh, a tricky one. So. However. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, um, fair enough. You know, we, we will see. At this point, I, I think I'm thinking. to basically it. sack his Jace in order to get a clean ponder off to try to either reset the top of his deck, look for some action. I He knows he needs to hit land drops. He knows he needs to get something in play. So. Um, we're going to see. Looks like uh, Noah took down Mr. Stephen Hagen. Damn, I would have loved to get that match on camera. Um, we're definitely pulling in some different people for next round. So if he doesn't just get to run off all four of his matches, all right? You goddamn fucking Swift, video hog. Swifty guy. That's what we call him. Swifty, we call... Listen, oh, listen. Now, a yeah. peeled supreme verdict that he has in the main deck. That is a nice looking card. See, that's a card that would normally, in a lot of drafts, wind up being regulated or relegated to the sideboard. But in this draft, with so many people playing creature heavy decks, he decided, "Give me my supreme verdict. I want it in there." Jeff, of course, Man. has the card that can counter a supreme verdict, the uncounterable wrath. But spell is already in play. Can't do it. Oopsies. We've and then, ditchy. assuming that this does resolve, we will then have and, a balance result. Well, but he, it, it is a, a may, right? Yes. Yeah, so he doesn't have to, like, sacrifice one of his lands or discard cards if he doesn't want to. Because the, 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 right. they have the, the creatures number, are all going away. Yeah, they have the same number of lands. I'm not sure how many cards Jeff has in hand. But Jeff might have a few cards in hand. It's possible he has more than Swifty does. Uh, as Swifty's definitely played a lot more spells this game than Jeff has. Which is, I think, exactly what Swifty's calculating right now. Is it which is it more mm -hmm. valuable to me? And typically, like even if Jeff has to discard one card, I think you you go down a land. Oh wait, no, they both have six, so it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, just in general, I love the fact that uh, that balance has been not maximized or optimized to its abilities, but it has been uh, very effectively Im embroiled in, uh, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. like interspersed within the contents of Swifty's deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I think you would almost always want to silence here because although it is a may, uh, generally speaking, you always want to just cut your opponent off from options, right? You, you never want to give your opponent a may when it could just be a you can't. Um, there are some people, some absolute fucking idiots, that would uh, testify to be like, uh, you know, you should let your opponent, you know, maybe you should like allow your opponent to make the mistake, right? And I tell those people that they're both wrong. You've never that. played against me! Because I will absolutely I make that mistake. Are you, are you like Craven from Spider-Man? No, or I'm Jason oh Statham. <laughs> oh. Oh, Jason I'm in the Sa transporter movie. Jason says a prolific magic player. Genius. Somebody is laughing very, very 
aggressively. I, I sound like a small child today. Yelling. Yeah. Oh my god. Mark's child has has grown his laugh very prodigiously. This is a all right. Well, while this is all taking place, Mason, have one of your famous famous monologues. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Uh, you know, obviously overwrought in its conclusion, and I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Smart. Thank you for that brilliant piece of information. So we're gonna see Jeff go for his intuition here, which I have to imagine is one of the better things he can do here, right? So A, I really wish I knew how many cards. Caterberg, tell me how many uh, cards um, Jeff has in hand when you get a chance. Um, but this is not only gonna empty out one of the cards in his hand, kind of disincentivizing his opponent from maybe trying to go after his hand on the balance. Also keeping all of the valuable pieces, uh, all the valuable bits in the graveyard where they're nice and safe and cannot be supreme regarded away. How's it going, Mark? It's going pretty well. This intuition is uh, is interesting. He's just he's protecting things, right? Is that what we're mm-hmm. seeing? There's nothing yeah. special happening. Yeah. Um. You know, I'm not sure how many cards he has in it. It looks like three. So he mm. had four, uh, which means that if Swifty had cast his balance, he would have made uh, Jeff discard a card anyway. He's just blowing his uh, intuition now, giving him the same number of cards in hand, and make it so balance doesn't actually do anything post uh, spell color. Which is nice. Um, and then he's getting a pile of Savine's Reclamation and some combo cards. Uh, it looks like Cephalid Illusionist and Nomad and Core. Mm-hmm. Uh, in order to tell his opponent, hey, look, it doesn't really matter what you put in your gra- in my graveyard. It doesn't really matter what you put in my hand. Because Savine's Reclamation is going to give it all to me. Yeah, and, and as, as they point out, you can just... You, you can use balance to, to your advantage here to make sure that he can't leave something stuck in your hand if you want it in your yard. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, if he ends up wanting all of this in the yard, he can achieve that. Uh, yeah. So, very nice. He is silencing. He, he followed your advice and didn't want to sound like, I believe you said, someone not incredibly intelligent. I, I don't remember your exact phrasing, but something yeah, yeah. like that. No, that was my exact phrasing, yeah. actually. I said, any any non-big brain genius. Yes. Um, man, so if he has a main deck to fairy's protection, huh? That seems like such an odd duck of a card. It is. Uh, this is actually the first time we've seen it in one of these live drafts. I'm sure that it's useful against a big combo field or something, but mm-hmm. it really does. It, it doesn't feel like something I would immediately reach for, but given all the creature decks that run around, it might make some amount of sense here. Mm-hmm. There are also some interesting things you can do with it. You know, your opponent goes to take infinite turns or something, and you're just like, uh, maybe not. I'll just, I'll just take a, I'll just take a quick nap here. Let you take your infinite turns, and uh, I will, uh, I'll come back to you later. Sorry, you were talking so long that I just woke up from my infinite nap. Ah, oh, <sighs> boy. We're so happy that you're back. <laughs> <laughs> Two times out of 47 legal, picked at 322 round 41 on average. Yeah, not a super popular card, but uh, I believe, didn't we have someone try to do it with like a Chronotog totem or something? Well, that might have been Swifty. Or a Lethal Vapors or some goofy goofiness. Kind of fun. Um, um, in the meantime, Jeff has used Savine's Reclamation, and what is that? Maybe Dread Return or something? Um, point is, he has put all of his stuff into play. He has put his two cards into play, and then by milling his entire deck, got Narcomoeba, Dread Return, Thassa's Oracle, Thassa's Oracle, Trigger, Resolves at Jeff with an empty gr- library, and he has won game number one. Just Man, that intuition looks so strong, being able to grab both of those combo pieces in Savine's Reclamation, saying, it really doesn't matter what you put in my hand and what you put uh, in the graveyard. They're all coming back. Um, it's just kind of inevitable. You need removal spells. You need something. And the worst part is, if you do have removal spells, if he's casting the Savine's Reclamation targeting both creatures at the same time, you're not even be t- able to interrupt it. Nomads and, and Core has zero mana activation. You can activate as many times as you want and at instant speed. So if you ever put a removal spell on the stack to target one of the two creatures, if they're both in play, it doesn't matter. You're already dead. Kind of a brutal combo to have to fight through. In Swifty's case, he's almost just going to need to counterspell things. But then Jeff will have a bit of an advantage because he can basically take all the time in the world to set things up. And unless Swifty can really put the screws to him, he's going to have a lot of time to try to cultivate a perfect hand where he's got all of his combo pieces, he's got whatever interactive one-mana counter spells that he can find, uh, and Swifty's going to be kind of stuck playing these chunkier mid-range threats that we saw be very good uh, against uh, his last opponent, Sam. 
but maybe not as useful against uh, a more sort of slicked down combo deck like Jeff has. Yeah, I. Swifty needs to draw more lands when he needs them, at least. Uh, you can't really keep playing. Uh, you, you certainly don't want to play a cutesy balance type of game uh, where you're holding back a land to hope to like fart out one of theirs. That's just, it's not going to work against the caliber of players that we have here. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty rough um, looking at this list and like it, this, listen, this is not immediately intuitive how, how recursive this list is. It's not no, immediately no. intuitive what intuition intuitively will intuit. That is the I verb in the what Jeff all wound up putting together here is a very resilient deck, which when he was, you know, I, I gave him a lot of praise during the draft for this, but Jeff is one of those guys who will always find his way that he's going to combo you. Like, he's very good at it, and I've seen him do it a bunch of times in a row, and I'm always impressed. Um, the man looked at the field, said, this looks very mid-rangey. Everybody looks like their decks are pretty fucking slow. I'm going to, instead of trying to go pedal to the metal and just make sure I have the fastest combo I possibly can, I'm just going to take it a little slower. I'll put in cards like Grand Abolisher, Esper Sentinel, Mother of Runes, uh, Ranger Captain of Eos. I'll take all these cards that normally you would put way on the back burner because they're, you know, quote-unquote, too slow. And instead... I will just play this very, very resilient deck. That's why he's got the main deck rally, the ancestors. That's why he's got the dread return and the reconstruction and the reclamation. Like all of these things I mean, are just building redundancy. He's putting the same stuff into play over and over and over again, just daring you to try to pick them off. Uh, rally the ancestors on X equals three with a spell coil in your graveyard is just so dirty. That does sound kind of fun. Yeah. I can't uh, lie to you. That sounds pretty funny. That it like, and it's like, oh, okay, you're, you're targeting this thing. Well, it's not going to be around next time. Cool. My mom just told me she's watching the stream. Brandon, you want to say hi to my mom? Her name's Tracy. Hello, Tracy. This is my friend Brandon. He's a dirty, dirty she knows. Saint Louisan, but he's a cool guy anyway. <sighs> <laughs> what up, girl? <laughs> Anyways, uh, back to the action. Uh, we've got uh, Jeff and Swifty both at 1-0. Jeff taking down the first match, as you just yeah, saw. You know, I, I'm not going to lie. I was I was so confused by some of Jeff's choices, but I think, like we said before, once we got to the end and we got to see the way Jeff constructed things, I'm really impressed. Um, you know, the Cephalid Illusionist combo used to be a legacy deck called Cephalid Breakfast that would do uh, the same thing. Um, I believe it was generally considered to be like a defunct combo deck because it didn't work very well within like the time constraints of, of a normal match of magic. <coughs> um, or maybe that was just Four Horsemen. Maybe, maybe Cephalid Breakfast didn't hit, it hit the same way. Well, Four Horsemen was non-conclusive, right? Hi, Tracy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But that yeah, was, so is what, what is the technical? Derek Bot, what is the technical term for the reason Four Horsemen was not uh, allowed? Non deterministic. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, and so. Yeah, breakfast was okay. It just fell out of vogue because, like, I mean, come on, rest in peace exists. Like, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, very easily counted. Who's going to register a damn narcomoeba in the year of our Lord 2014? Are you kidding me? We've got better things to do with Okay, Swifty playing a Glacial Fortress tapped on turn one, and then a Ponder to look for lands on turn two. And boy, howdy, I'm just gonna, I'm yeah, gonna this not is... say anything about him getting mana screwed again. <sighs> I, just it out there. Let's just, let's just hope that all of these mana and land issues that Swifty's going against have just been like bad shuffling or something like that, or just like, you know what, hey, probabilistically, sometimes this happens. Classic magic player, blame the shuffler. Uh, I, he probably has some more lands in his hand. I, I don't think he kept a one lander, but he's going to play his Jawari Disruption uh, as a land, okay. and we'll move on. Let Jeff crack his fetch land. He's going to search his library very quickly and put down a hollowed fetch Yeah, he's got other lands. Okay. 
Uh, and he's he got also, a mox in his hand. Yeah, so this, nice. Okay, so, I mean, he's setting up a, a, a nasty, mm-hmm. nasty little balance here. Um, and, like, once again, hey, please, uh, play your Planeswalkers first and yep. don't don't get too cute with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Swifty going into Ooh. Teferi, because here's the thing, uh, Teferi can make your balance instant speed. And uh, I don't know if you know this, that that can be very very painful. Yeah, absolutely. Especially um, because they it's their turn. They get to draw a card. They get to play a land, and you mm-hmm. get to decide whether or not that's the order in which it happens. Uh, yeah. You get a, you get a shuffle balance into that mix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, there's always these really funny conversations that can come up when uh, when you play balance, right? Because the best draw in your entire deck could involve you just mulliganing to three and playing land balance or land mox balance on turn one. Yeah. Having zero cards in hand, your opponent yeah. discards all seven of their cards and just loses on the spot, you know? Yeah. Um, it's a funny concept, though I've never actually seen it happen. Someone just mulls to three and has, you know, whoopsie daisy, perfect three card opener. But I mean, even land land balance is pretty freaking well, good. So. You know, like, I was talking about this throughout the draft. That's why you want Urza's Bobble and Mishra's Bobble if you're leaning into the balance thing, which you can't do in VRD because it's a singleton format, and sometimes you just don't see that stuff. Yeah, but, right. Uh, kind of a tricky one. It does um, It does certainly, more often than not, force your opponent into a situation where they have to discard a card that they wouldn't discard uh, otherwise. So Swifty's still developing his mana nicely. We have a, a pithing needle, and I'm guessing that's going to name Nomad and Core uh, to stop him from. What is the, the see, is Nomad and Core a three drop or a four drop? That I do not know. I think it might cost one. I'll be honest, but I'm not. It does not. Sure. Okay. Nomad well, in, Nomad in Core CMC. Nomad in Core CM Derek Bot. What is the CMC of Nomad in Core? What is it? A one drop. I told you. Nerd. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's a one drop. Stuff Jesus. Illusion is, I think, costs Jesus three, Christ. maybe. It could cost two, I suppose. But That card's too fucking good. It could cost one in a Ban blue it. or two in a blue. Yep, there you go. Ban so it one drop and two drop, baby. <laughs> ban it and vintage. Exactly. And then let's ban Lightning Greaves, too. No. That's too funny. Ooh, it looks like uh, Swifty brought in his big pig again to stop his opponent from maybe casting something like a Dread Return. <coughs> and now we see the somewhat awkward position that Swifty is in, where he's got to hold up his mana. And he can't play um, his Planeswalkers. And he can't really play his Planeswalkers or his pig because he's just got to hold up counterspells and really try to play around whatever Jeff might do to him. Now, I think he's only doing that because he has the Urza Saga in play and can activate that. Well... And even and with the, that being the it looks case, like he has a sword splasher in hand as well. Uh sure. So potentially if his upon if Jeff really goes for it, he could always plow the spell clutter and get the pithing needle back. Right. Which could be quite powerful. Looks like he's gonna make himself a golem. And now we'll see if he wants to make a second one before going into the tank. I actually imagine he will, and then he'll hold up lose focus and maybe swords to plowshares and stuff. Uh no. No, it looks like he's just gonna. Yep. Go. Okay, all right, that's fine. So he is gonna go for it. He's gonna make a second token and go search for a card. Now he's got both of his mocks already. So, so what, got is, two... what else is he gonna go get? He doesn't. Where's he? he just has the one mox. He just drew the other one. This oh, time. oh, so, okay. Look at that. Uh, well, and Pithing Needle is underneath the spell queller, so yep. fail to so find. So it looks like he's got nothing to find. Really getting. I bet he right really now. wishes he had an Urza's Bobble right oh, about now. Oh, uh, I'm guessing he wishes he didn't draw his other mocks. So that's kind of <laughs> it. Up. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, the, the exact opposite of what happened with Sam. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Where? Oh wow! I happened to draw this immediately beforehand, so now I get both of them. Now it's like Shuko I get both of them, so I don't no get to love. do anything. Listen, I've played with Shuko. It doesn't deserve love, okay? Just like me. Just like me. <laughs> Anyways, Get him with the tiger uh, balls, we're maybe. going to have two four fours, one of which will be swanging and banging. 
You know what's a fun fact that I happen to know, Brandon? Uh, is it about koalas? It's about Shuko. <gasps> uh, and what I know Rip. is that that hand position with the with the fingers splayed out that way, uh, cupped ever uh, so slightly and crossed over like that, uh-huh. uh, is the traditional uh, hand position for a tiger. For jerking it. Uh, if oh. that's what your hand has to look like to jerk it, then wow, I'm. I got a double fist, baby. I know fist I call it, you baby. a large man all the time, but wow, that is impressive. Yeah, yeah. Holy. It, it operates the microscopic forceps. <laughs> Anyways, moving <laughs> off of this, we have we uh, had a attempt four, at two, a rest fours. in peace and a Dovin's veto. Dovin a veto, which a veto. I believe, if I'm not crazy, I think that means Swifty tapped himself out so he could no longer play a counter spell. Yo, my greatest friend, Dolphin's Vito. That's 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 a fun thing you could say. <laughs> Do, Dolphin's Vito. Anyways, uh, that is the cephalid illusionista. It is, and he's definitely threatening combo. However, if Swifty does have Swords of Plowshares in his hand, like you said, uh, Swifty can always threaten to cack the spell queller, get the pre- uh, get the pithing needle back, and stop any infinite combo from happening this turn. So, do I mean? Do you get the spell queller or do you just get the cephalid? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I would imagine you would uh, maybe you want to get the cephalid uh, since it could exile it wholesale. Um, and that not seems, have to worry about getting it. Well, because then you could also just get your uh, your pithing needle pithing needle back by at other means. Days. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That seems like it makes a fair amount of sense to me. You've come to me on the day of my Dovin's video. You'll come to me on the day of my Dovin's video. Dovin that's looks a, like... That's, you know Dovin what? looks like You really like brought that, that together. That was yeah. missing a little bit. And well, you, you just... Listen, that's why to, we're a great a, team, give bud. Give it to hyphenated, okay? That guy is putting oh. it up in the chat here. Well, see, I don't read chat because I can't read. Uh, that's a fair point. Uh, is that why your mouth's always moving every time you're trying to like, look at a magic card? Uh, yes. Hilarious. I have to have auto cards... <laughs> Everywhere. Is that why all, all the your time. cards are in Braille? Huh. That would be uh, interesting. Yep. Um, no, I can't read Braille either. That's that of, would be that way, seems that seems excessive. But that would be kind of crazy, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm thinking about what the boar does outside of stopping specifically dread return. And it's I mean if dread if tricky if yeah. I mean if dread return is the combo slash intuition is a combo, you're shutting off two out of 40 cards and one that makes you instantly lose. Like I, I don't think that it feels like a very burdensome sideboard. Oh, and Swifty but, hitting him with the, I only have one basic planes in my deck. Yikes, buddy. Play more than one. Yeah. This land situation. Play it as your, this, what? 15th land, 16th land. How many did you say you had 15? My God, man, get another land in your deck. Get another basic yeah, planes, please. I, oh, I, God. I, I will say that this is uh, this is kind of an unraveling mistake here a little bit. Alternatively, uh-huh. and I was thinking about saying this in the first game, get a forest and board it in when you board in the pig. Because yeah, I actually yeah. think that no, might like, be decent. <laughs> if you're boarding it in, then why why not? Yeah, absolutely. Look, Mason, we already heard you play more lands rant. <laughs> Listen, Eric. Uh, it is not uncommon when we do EDH cubes with my friend Jim. Shout out to Jim Hausworth. That's uh, not Cube. Eric. That's Carrick. Crick. Eric. Uh, R.I.P. Assume, R.I.P. That, shouts to I our dear that friend was Eric Levine. Yeah, uh, Eric Levine works over at Wizards now, so he's not allowed to associate with people like us because he never knows when Brandon's going to say some crazy shit like you know, uh, fucking uh, kill that pig, but in like a racist Italian accent. So. Uh, gobble the goop. Yeah, see, Eric, it's not, no, no, Eric, guys, Eric guys, guys, we're just joking. Everyone knows that it's not racist if it's against Italians. Oh, anyways, well, thank goodness. So we've got <laughs> what? Derek Bot looked very upset by that statement, but he just doesn't understand that Italian men are the other white meat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done now. That was. That was too much. Okay, not good. Uh, Sadly, wait, so no is Eric this Levine here today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're all devastated. Take back the Budweiser right now. No, oh, no, I know you can't. And Mark, I already Mark, warned I, the rest I of the guys. I say that. I say that sober. <laughs> I already warned the rest of the guys that by the end of the night, for the last few matches, you are loosey goosey, baby. So they're all ready. Don't worry. 
Uh, okay, we didn't commentate on literally any part of the last uh, the last part of that match, but it looked like Jeff played a lot of his cards, which you really don't want to do if you're Swifty. And you just you really don't want to let Swifty. Jeff yeah. do that in that situation. That's if you're rough. Swifty. That's yeah. rough. I can't believe we literally got so distracted we missed the whole end of the match. It looked like what happened was Swifty put his dukes up and said, "You can't combo," and then Jeff said, "Yes, I can," and then he comboed. Devastating. Uh, yeah, they're, they're D side boarding. Alza. So. All right. Well, rough one for Swifty. Jeff deck looking pretty untouchable. We'll see how that works. Uh, Jeff, not a stranger to putting up like a six, one. Maybe he decided he wants to be that first seven L. Yeah. Uh, he said to himself, look, I need a couple trophies before I can be the winningest player. Ever I mean, of he, all time three specifically, you know, just off I, the top of my head, but it, he can be the first seven O in St. Lotus history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, you know what? There's there's one or two of them every tournament. Very nice job. Uh, Hi, yeah. and we're back. So Hello. We've also got face. we've also got uh, the overall score um, of this yeah. intercity matchups uh, at one and two, mm -hmm. with Chicago having the two one lead. Uh, yeah, going to the scoreboard. We've got uh, in no, so unupdated we list some more matches. Yet. Uh, I mean, Chad, me. Chad, and Dylan are both playing. Oh, you is think it, they're just locked in it, internal combat? Over is there? it dumb shit mm -hmm. uh, with uh, mm -hmm. a bunch of counter spells? So it makes sense to me that this match has not concluded yet. I like um, it. Yeah. So. Old tragic hunt. Let's see how it works out for him. Uh, we'll, Who we can we get in the feature match for our next one? I know the people want to see. I want to see Noah. Oh, oh we're okay. getting Noah so, versus Jeff yeah. now. Well, okay. Oh, Noah oh. versus Sam. There we go. <laughs> oh, but it's not. It's not the Sam we know. In it's actually Sam He this time. So it's it's the doppelganger Sam of Sam. He. <laughs> Sam, Sam He. Uh, <laughs> Sam. Actually, it kind of sounds like Sammy. Yeah, just, yeah Sam He. Sam Sam she just like the banshee. Sam um, she. All right. Ooh, and we get to see Noah. So Noah picked up a W in his first game uh, against who was it? Dan or no Stephen? He picked up a win against Stephen, and uh, now he's looking to run it back and improve to two and oh, he's got his Gigantha uh, companion this, ready to rock. This feels uh, this feels really bad for Noah. This matchup. You think so? I I I do. Um. That's interesting. That's interesting. I will say, let, let's take a look at what he's got here. So he's got the Ren and Six. Uh, I'm going to look at basically what does he have that's interactive because he wants to be interactive in this matchup. He's got a Ren and Six. So he's got the, Punishing Fire combo, which sounds nice. Which sounds absolutely garbage. It's what? one of Punishing yeah. Fire is probably the worst combo in VRD that is whoa, still whoa, considered whoa, whoa, like whoa, a whoa, combo. Okay, okay, first of all, I was saying it would be good in this matchup. First of all, second of uh, all, against uh, the, the recursive we, zombies. Yeah, why not? Just mop all that stuff up. Keep it all. Off Just the give. Love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Remove like no. a couple of guys and then remove. You don't even need to bother talking about that when you have Trinosphere. Like, like the full art of Trinosphere is looking at our so faces. That, so that's the thing. Those two things in combination with each other. You remove the zombies that are already. Oh, you play mean you get to pay four? You get to pay four mana to deal two damage to a target that no, can get only, played it's, from it's the a, graveyard it's only, again. It's only three mana. Yeah, but then you have to pay one to get it back. Yeah. So that's yeah. garbage. That's so trash. All right. You're trash. <laughs> Obviously, you have no appreciation for the fire. I anymore. am refined and artisanal. Yeah, Anyways, yeah, we'll uh, no, that. Trinosphere is honestly the real backbreaker in this matchup, mm -hmm. especially if Noah can get this out on turn one or turn two. Mm. Uh, it prevents all of the recasting of gra uh, Gravecrawler from from the graveyard. Yep. Uh, however, um, any of the benefit that you're getting from Renan 6, uh, which you know, I don't know to what degree that's the focus of Noah's deck, but uh, I'm guessing Renin Six is going to be pretty minor, though. If but there are any one toughness creatures that pop up, being able to ping those guys off is really nice. Obviously, uh, yes. Uh, I think you know, especially making sh well the fact that it's at sorcery speed obviously doesn't help it. Um, but you know, Sam being able to play a carrion feeder and then uh, immediately sacrifice a grave crawler to it is like you know that that gets around that little tricky problem. The fact that Sam has Dothy Voidwalker and Grave or and Leyline of the Void is why I not only do I think that <laughs> Punishing Fire Grove of the Burnwells is, is Dookie McSandwiches, but uh why, you know, she has two kind of built in preventative measures against it. 
All right, that's going to be interesting. We're going to see. Um, oh, and I, Noah takes a mulligan to six. He does have a mulligan to six, and he's got a once upon a time, uh, I believe, Sam. A grim monolith. No, so it's going to be Noah first, and he's going to lead off with that once upon a time, the two mana cantrip uh, that looks at the top five cards of your library. You can put a lander creature from among those cards into your hand. And a mana crypt is going to be going to the bottom. And if it's the first spell that you've played of the entire game, you can cast it for free. Very exciting stuff. So he's going to use it to get everybody's favorite Eldrazi Tron creature, Nattery. That's my least Very favorite cool. Eldrazi Tron creature. It's everybody's least favorite Eldrazi Tron it's creature. Stupid. I was being sarcastic. And it's stupid and boring. Haha, ha, Brandon doesn't know what sarcasm is. Everybody make fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you've <laughs> discovered I'm autistic. You're the last one. <laughs> Which one of these colorful buttons here uh, plays a laugh track? That I can't don't know. Don't. It goes. Button. It literally goes on for like a full minute. It's miserable. I love it. I ha- that's why. That's why I have it turned down all the way. Love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> what if we need a solid minute to get over how funny that sick burn was, huh? Uh, <laughs> well, that's a good point. I do not know. We have a Cavern of Souls naming um, something dumb, I bet. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be Eldrazi, but it could be... Oh, it's naming <laughs> monoliths. <laughs> mm. um, genius. Love it. Uh, he could have used... Uh, maybe hey, uh, hey, maybe hey, the bud. cavern's actually uh, well, on like elk. Or what are you whatever, doing there? I'll, uh, I'll reshape your mana. Is. That's what that card says. I'll oh, end of turn in tomb. Okay, in Sam, Sam might have some uh, some combo little prospects. some little spiciness. I mean, like she, uh, I don't think that she can win this turn. Uh, I mean, she could if she had like, oh, like, I, did, I didn't play a Mox and I have a Dark Ritual and I have blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But th- this is not a... We're not living in fantasy land here, okay? No. Um, but she could, you I know, Meat Hook Massacre. I did see that she had Relentless Dead kind of in her uh, hand at the start of the game, so she might just be looking to play a turn two Relentless Dead and then like play a turn three, you know. Grave Crawler, yeah. Yeah. So that would be interesting, though obviously... You probably don't want to lead on the Relentless Dead just because it's such a valuable creature to have mana with. Yeah, and th- this is Ooh, where that... Definitely that... doesn't get to untap that Grim Monolith. That's okay. He's not going to try to tap it for mana. Yeah, oh my is... god, he's tapping it for mana. Someone call the police. He's tapping it oh, to play Jesus, a land. They got here so fast. What the hell? Um, oh, and we get to see a little, little Blade Reforged action. And we're probably just going to see a ship in for six. I imagine both are going to get into the red zone here. Yes, they are. We're going to exile a Carplusion Forest. Uh, uh, can you pull up the text on Layla? Uh, first of all, no, of course, you took, you took the eye out of Lelia and put it into Carplusion Forest. So uh, you made a car. You made, I you made it's Carplusian. It's not. It's Carplusian. Are you sure? Yes. Mm, agree to disagree. Lelia, we just saw. Lelia. And Carplusion Forest. Car. Carplusian yeah. forest. Carplusian forest. There you go. Carplusian. Carplusian. Uh, and so we've got a bitter blossom, a relentless dead, which honestly should be, you. I. I don't th- think. I. I think using all of your mana here is potentially a mistake. Uh, with considering how big Lelia can start getting, and the fact that Gravecrawler can't block. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um. Yeah, this but is a, this at, is a at, at a, actually, at, to be fair, at a certain point, uh, Bitter Blossom just gets to block Lelia every time. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But then Lelia starts working as a free, a uh, card as a free machine, Bob. A card advantage action. Now, Noah is not the one who wound up with Pithing Needle. So his options for one mana cards with Karn, I believe, is pretty low. However, does he have a Relic of Progenitus that he could maybe get? Uh, he does. Yes, I believe that was the 45th or 46th pick, one. maybe? And with no, I think, it was, I think it was earlier than that. Yeah, unfortunately, Sam, um, having a card in her graveyard yeah, means it that it's really not going to threaten anything this turn. Um, so if Sam is untapping with, with some ambition to combo her opponent you know, straight out of the gate... It doesn't look like Noah will have but, much of a chance to uh, interact it, with that. That's incorrect because this is the absolute turn to make that happen because she does have an entomb in her graveyard, which she can exile instead because yep. uh, he does not have the one to pay for it. Yep. Well, that is... This, if, if, if it's going to happen, 
Do it now. Yep. And this is going to be... Let's go, honey arguably bunny. Arguably going to be the last turn that she can. Um, yeah. You know, Noah's threatening all kinds of stuff, including just like a mycosynthitis uh, after this turn. Yeah. So this is definitely the time where Sam's got to get a uh, big wombo combo. Got to get, get, get a pop in. Got to get, mm-hmm. get, get a pop in. So does she have the astronaut's altar in hand? Do, 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 do. This would be a six low roll if she just had it. I mean, she can just kill the Karn. Uh, she can. Absolutely she can. Um, which would probably help against any Mycosynthitis beatdowns. However, she's also at six and is getting attacked for just a lot of damage. I guess he's showing... Well, I mean, the Gravecrawler can't block anyways. Uh, and the Bitter Blossom can block the Lelia. Yep. So as long as there's nothing coming out, however... We do know that Noah has a uh, Bloodbraid Elf in his hand. Now, he has no red mana to cast it, funnily enough, uh, because he did not aim Shaman with his Cavern of Souls. Yep, and Contamination hits the board, which means... It's an interesting one, though. Sam, uh, Though Noah is kind of in a situation with Karn that he doesn't really care about having colored mana anymore. Uh, and he kind of just has everything that he needs. He's got a sort of feast and famine, or a sort of fire and ice that he could use potentially. Oh my God! Wait, is he main decking sort of fire and ice? I mean, Jesus. yeah, oh but my God, what is he doing? One, once oh, again, it, it it really doesn't matter. Uh, in term like that's win more at this point because it doesn't prevent Sam from just blocking with the perpetual bitter blossom tokens. Uh, yes, that is true, but it does allow him to have one gigantic Lelia and a matter reshaper with a sword, therefore kind of diversifying into I mean, that, threats. that, that, uh, that clock was always present. So the, the, what I, all I'm saying is that the sword of fire and ice is not assisting in any way. Um, to be fair, the contamination doesn't do anything to improve Sam's board state unfortunately yeah so uh basically what sam is going to be looking for now is uh basically just i mean a phyrexian altar would theoretically be lovely but with that relic of progenitus out it's it's going to be nasty so really cutting off her legs there and um preventing her from although to be to be fair if if she was uh she was really on top of her shizbot. What she would do is you play Phyrexian Altar, sacrifice the Grave Crawler, adding one to her mana pool, and then if Relic of Progenitus is popped, uh, sacrificing Relentless Dead, Relentless Dead mm-hmm. to do the same thing. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and that is going to put the Clamperino on things. Yeah, that's pretty. Pretty tough. Uh, Trinosphere kind of locking it down. Yeah, Trinosphere is nasty. Lilia being the card. Wait, 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 wait. Did she just exile her? Oh, because those are enchantments, not in her graveyard slash exile. Yeah, she only had the. Can I just say how much I hate it when people don't just play it with their deck graveyard and exile like all in a row Mm. yes you can say that that's okay i will you know what that's why wizard passed all those laws about how you have to play when you're on camera speaking of my friend eric levine did you know that uh, that guy once told me when uh judging at a level uh as a level three he once had to kill a man for playing his lands in front of his spells Oh my kind of god, crazy. don't you hate it? Just walked up to the feature match area, shot him in the head. No, no, everyone knows it was a knife. Anyways, continuing on, we've got... We didn't play Trinosphere, we played Sword instead! <gasps> what? Noah! Wait, oh, the, Tr- the Trinosphere got exiled with with Lelia? Yeah, Lelia. Hey, Thomas Bunch of Letters, thanks for the follow. Those are Remember, numbers, actually. Every follow we get, Brandon is going to pull out one of his eyelashes. Moving on. This seems like a moving target. <laughs> Which is going to be even harder for you to hit once you don't have any eyelashes. <laughs> like I could hit targets in the first place. <laughs> I prefer Walmarts. Hey, hey. zip it up. All right, so we got uh, this uh, Ayara. 
popping down on the board. Oh, love her. Is she's, not, a, she's a really fun one. I'll yeah, isn't she's super helpful. Card. Other than So Gravecrawler is going to be able to take out Karn this turn. Uh, I mean, like, if you're in this situation, why is she holding it back? It can't block. Uh, um, yeah, that's just, that's just, yeah. I think that's just a play mistake that's just going to keep, kind of, going to keep happening. She, I think Sam's going to look at the board state and feel, like, stressed and mm -hmm. uh, uncertain, mm -hmm. and then just default to passing the turn sometimes. So, yeah, it's a little nerve wracking. Uh, it is. It is what it is. Um, it, I mean, perhaps. Wait, what? So, oh, he, the he turned uptick his relic Karn. into a creature, and now he's equipping it with the sword to try to present a combination of lethal attackers that will yeah. not give Sam a chance to block her way out of this one. Yeah. Okay. It does look like it's going to be successful, which should mean that in a moment uh, they are going to count up the lethal trigger with the Sword of Fire and Ice and call it a day. Forgive, I appreciate it. Good job. That's right, Crick. We do yep. appreciate it because we don't like how full Brandon's eyelashes are. They make us sensitive about how our spotty eyes are. Come Come away. Yes. <laughs> Uh, luscious, luscious hair. Anyways, so uh, yeah, it's um, I think it's a bit of a bummer to see uh, kind of games decided by this uh, situationally, where it's like, okay, uh, Noah was able to win that one because of you know the the Karn uptick on the relic and and everything. Noah was probably going to win that game uh, mm -hmm. regardless, sure, but. Uh, by just not recognizing that Gravecrawler did not was not useful whatsoever as a blocker, and that you you know that's a tool that you have. It's just like let's get that in there. So um, you sure, know the, the yeah. Karn wouldn't have been online, Relic of blah blah blah, blah. but uh, you know you're at least you survive another turn and you force that Relic to go offline, and you know you can call theoretically like we've seen there's been crazy times when like let's say like you're in the finals and like a player is at one life and it's just like how you like oh yeah yeah just put them away put them away and then it just doesn't happen and then sometimes you know they've got a food token it's just wild caterberg expressing a deep hatred for watching anyone win through the combat step yeah he yeah it. stupid I, honestly Oof. it's like i don't i don't understand why they haven't banned combat damage yet at the very least, you can win through loss of life from a lethal tendrils, tendrils back and being like a classy, what? classy gentleman. That's a pro gamer move. The real pro gamer move is not even having it in your sideboard. You just cast Wish and say, oh, I guess I win. You, oh, wow. That's you clearly, lethal, huh? you clearly right. don't want me to go through those steps. Yeah. Am I right, fellas? Am I right, fellas? That's just a... S Next time I play I haven't been Red drinking Agro, that much recently, oh, and I'm noticing that it's real. These I've had like three Budweisers, and it's really catching up with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need to get myself some water here in a minute because my throat is starting to. Ah, uh, no, I'll grab one here. Maybe after this match. Discord not being good to you. That's okay, Thomas. When you get your Discord fixed, you can come online and play magic. With <laughs> they us. don't call it Discord for nothing. But hey, 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 hey. Hey, you know, Brandon, hey, hey, think, Robot think, Derek, can I have another Budweiser? You got one right here, buddy? Hell Boom. yeah, bro! Chakalaka. Thanks, Robot. Uh, if, anybody, if anybody's just joining us now, uh, we have designed an AI robot, uh, which we have named Derek, for which stands for Don't Even. Regardless, ev every Everyone karate... Knows. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's Derek, our famed AI robot who has now uh, had to go oil himself. Anyways, this is VRD Noah on Gruel. Take you to Shul. Gruel Drazi, baby. It's a uh, even though it's he a didn't it's pick rabbinic. Any of the goddamn Eldrazi. I still haven't lit him up for picking such. <laughs> Oh, why yeah, would I yeah. work so hard on this list if you didn't pick any of the cards on it, you absolute nerd? You know what? Because somebody respects the Also, he had an opportunity thing. to pick the dopest card. I told him that if he was splashing white, he should try Mirror Entity, because that's an Eldrazi. Mi no, Mirror Entity is awesome. But then he didn't pick it. Wait, There's wait, no does, does, that, does that count character. when you're casting it? Like, does, is, mm -hmm. does Changeling work? Yeah, so it gets discounted with, like, Eye of Ruben. 
It's dope. It's a one mana card that I. It, I mean, it. Gas. It's so. It's so goddamn strong. It's like so I, there, there have been uh, multiple times. Like I, not only that. Like I think. Uh, I think the best storm deck. In VRD is Gruul, and it revolves around uh, the Squirrel Storm and um, Empty the Warrens because you can cast Wall of Wood, you can cast Mana Morphos, you can cast uh, the, the sh- is it a Shaman? The one that comes in and adds either like red, green, red, green, or whatever. Mm, you know what I'm talking about? Um. Uh, Burning Tree Emissary. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you've got Burning Tree Embassy, that, that wall that you can, it's cost one green. Tinder you can sack it. Yeah. yeah, Tinder Wall. And uh, you've got, like, you have the best, second best storm card in this format, which is Thrasta. Thrasta. Interesting. And so you just got to turn one seven seven hexproof, uh, trample haste. Uh, and, like, Gruel. Gruel oh, is the we're online, baby. Ooh, baby. And it so looks we, like oh, we, we got a nested shambler game. into a demonic tutor. So now nice, what this nice. what this means is that we potentially have if there is a if there was a mox, she would have played it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if there is a dark ritual, then we've got a Phyrexian altar, grave crawler, and we're we're and we're possibly infinite, but not in the face of Trinisphere. Nope, that makes things ouchy wowies. Yep. That's a rough one. Um, it looks like, you know, he's tapping a, an ancient tomb early and often, so maybe there's a chance Sam can capitalize on that loss of life and try to beat him down a little bit. He did rip the Abundant Harvest on turn one, and it found him a Minskin Boo. So I think in this instance, she's hoping to have an Iara, or maybe maybe it's just a Phyrexian Altar. Yeah, there's the Iara. Uh, so that's a ping one, gain one. Now we swing one, and this becomes a uh, every single damage now becomes pretty brutal. Yeah, what I'm thinking is Noah's about to take three more damage and play a Minskin Boo. Um, it seems like he probably has lands in his hand since he. Uh... Okay, we we boarded in the big blue guy. I have to figure out what that card does. Can you pull up the text? I don't actually know what it is. I, 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 have, I assumed it was a meme, but if it's not and he actually boards it in on people, then I have to figure out what the heck it does. Yeah, the Trinisphere, uh, you know, I, if you look at these decks next to each other, you say like, okay, well, generally speaking, I think Sam's deck is better positioned. That's not true when Noah gets... Uh, Trinosphere in uh, both of the games here. Um, Trinosphere really uh, wrecks her shit. That yep. it, it's it's really, card. really painful. Mm-hmm. I consider it like the one prison piece that kind of just always hits everybody in these formats. Um, yeah, when you play it early, uh, you play it often. It just okay. shuts people. So in. yeah, it puts them on one spell a turn. We've got it. I mean, this Orvar is a changeling, so our Eldrazi and Cavern of Souls is working on it. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, so we've got a Bitter Blossom. Why did, oh, she had paid three because of Trinosphere. And uh, that is Minsk and Boo, correct? Yes, it is, which uh, go ahead and pull the text up on that one in case anybody doesn't know it. Minsk and, and Boo and is everybody's new favorite Planeswalker kay. dominating the legacy format. So, we, so what we're looking at here... It doesn't really help because it has trample, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Minsk and Boo always has trample and haste, and as an uptick for Minsk, you can put three plus one plus one counters on target creature with trample or haste, and then as a minus two, you can fling any creature at your at any target, and if that creature was a hamster, you get to draw X cards. Cool. So he's attacking with a seven seven trample haster right now, and potentially threatening to throw it over and gain like seven life or uh, draw like seven cards next turn. Which is pretty good. Uh, it is. I don't think that it will have the loyalty counters um, because, well, so Sam should just let this six damage happen because she does. Like, I mean, we can't really see. She's at twenty one. Okay, 
Why? Yeah, I was uh, gonna I was gonna say just let the damage happen and then like you can sacrifice uh your nested shambler to get to draw an extra card. Uh and then like you can just play the ping game. Like get Minskin Boo down uh to one. Mm-hmm. Like you you're capable of doing that next turn. Um and like you're 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 fine. Just uh don't throw away your resources just to block damage when you, mm-hmm. the resource that you have on board is the thing that's going to gain you life and keep you in the game mm-hmm. and keep you... Uh, Noah also going all the way down to nine life, kind of playing on the knife's edge. Uh, Wait, uh, where did... Was that... Through a combination... Of, oh, uh, he, so he played a Haywire Might, uh, is which it? is a one-drop creature that you can sacrifice and uh, destroy an artifact or enchantment. Uh, it took mm-hmm. out the Bitter Blossom. Uh, I, but he paid that seems an extra two life to do it, so he's all the way down to nine. Uh, yeah, that... I mean, you're... I, how concerned are you about Bitter Blossom? Like, I, I, I feel like... Okay. Yeah, tough to say. Thought, Sam's thought gonna thought answer for the three. Thought here. The, see, I mean, a three-mana Thought sees, it, all that's doing is preventing you from playing something else like Noah's hand looking very nice here next turn he's got a uh, cavern of souls uh, and can play bloodbraid elf uh, the bloodbraid elf's a little awkward considering Trinosphere is sitting on the board but still a three power hasty creatures when you're threatening so much damage so does Trinosphere make you pay three for the cascaded card yes it does yeah. so you don't have to pay its initial cost but you do still have to play three uh, so you still do still have to pay three for it. Okay. Yeah, this is a. Uh, oh boy, on th- on this side of things, I am I am I'm feeling bad watching. Uh, yeah, Sam's w- these game these that. games with Sam where, um, you know, the oh, value she's... of Iara. Wait, yeah, because she had Iara on board previously, so what she could have done at the end of that turn. A sacrifice a nested shambler to draw a card and still have a one one uh, squirrel left and available to her, uh, and then you know gotten out of this mess. Yeah, uh, Sam just seems like she's running into a lot of trouble with the Trinosphere. Uh, only being uh, yeah, the, 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 the Trinosphere is, is 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 one of those kryptonite spells where mm-hmm. it's oh. Oh shit! You know what? Turns out it would have been really nice to have permanent removal. Absolutely. Yeah, guess what? An abrupt decay would have been um, pretty dope. Mm-hmm. And it, it, you know, the the value that Sam got out of drafting this deck the way that you know her plan was was like, okay, uh, we're going to go mono black, so we're not going to have to fight over lands. We're going to get every card that we want. We are going to get exactly the deck that we want. Uh, I'm going to take a lot of the sideboard cards that really hurt me in the middle. You only have like 10 to 15 picks to be able to do that. Yeah. And right. then at that point, okay, that's, that's a, that's really unfortunate how that. Yep. So that's a, uh, that's a fling and, of the hamster and, and a draw seven. Yeah. And that, uh, and a rough one. Okay. So sacrifice another black creature. All right. So, I mean, at that point, I mean, maybe you tap it to sacrifice a nested chambler. I think I probably would, because what you know, what's the difference? At least you get to draw a card out of that scenario. Right. But this is, uh, I think, this is going to be the primary reason that Sam loses a lot of her games, is just like being overwhelmed on board state. Sure, well, yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, the combo elements of her deck do require a few different parts. Uh, It's nice because they're all sort of uh, somewhat useful cards in their own. Is that History of the Skull? No, that's a Mirror Breaker. Fable Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Breaker. The opposite of History, in fact. Just a story. However, great story nonetheless. Another three mana coming down for... Yeah, so we haven't seen Skull Clamp make an appearance in any of these games, or Dark Ritual, or Mox Jet. 
And I believe the only games that she's played have been in the ones that are that have been on camera. So, right. Um, yeah. uh, really unfortunate where we've seen her draw into the ley line of the void, and then the, you know, her couple first picks uh, not showing up in her hands to really accelerate what would otherwise be you know like a winning combo. But right. That you know that's that happens. I think mm-hmm. there are so many times during these VRDs where I you know I've drafted. Soul Ring, one. Th- there's been the one time that I drafted a Black Lotus, but uh, I, I think I went f- five matches in a row without seeing Soul Ring previously. Yeah, yeah. And like it, sometimes it just happens. Sometimes you draw a Trinisphere mm-hmm. in the games where you need it, and then sometimes you just like, oh hey, I got I got this Black Lotus with my first pick. It'd be really cool if I ever saw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that looks like yep. it's going to be the game. Noah game packs zoning. that one up. He's got the uh, Bloodbraid Elf in hand to do the hasty. He's got the 4-4 hamster coming up in Minskin Boo. So yep. that one was about all she wrote, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, props to Sam for putting up a fight anyway. Yep. Um, we'll see. Noah. Noah's deck looking solid so far. We'll see if he maybe can be the Chicago champion to be able to put down Jeff stop him from running amok. Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to see like what happens in these intra intra squad matches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's possible one of us could pull, you know, away from the rest of the group. Uh, you know, like have one person beat their whole squad. Yeah. Uh, and then come out and just have to win the matches on the other I team. Would it's possible we could also pick up key losses, you know. It makes me feel a lot better about uh, the decision to have everybody you know, try to play their intra squad matches off camera, uh, because that means they're out of the way earlier, and then the the meaningful matches where like so, collusion could be occurring. Uh, not that I suspect any of the <laughs> incredibly <laughs> metamucilletic, f- moral fibrous uh, players in this uh, in mm-hmm. this VRD. To I, w- I would never expect them. No, and I think that's part of the reason that it is at the at its core an individualized event. You know, uh, the incentives are you don't want to like tank your draft. You know, throwing picks away, trying to trying to hate draft somebody. You know, you're trying to yeah yeah. Okay, what match do we have coming? Here? Question for you, what for, match do you we have, have? A judge here? question this for looks Derek? Maybe Bot? like. Chad and Dan? Is that who we have playing? Uh, isn't Kalik away more or less likely in intra squad matches? Like, which are you doing? Is the best deck you all throw to them? Yes, well, you're right. That is yeah. what I would so, imagine, but But, like, if, if all those matches take place before, and this is just us, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is. Like, I, doing I a little thinking session about be, this. That would be the bigger issue, but. Uh, if you have, I don't think we have to worry about that. The, so, if the the majority of the volume of games that are being played first are those uh, intra squad matches, uh, then if they're taking place, then you don't like nobody knows who to throw to. So, like, it makes it a yeah, very bad decision. Start, yeah, that seems somewhat reasonable. Actually, that 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 makes sense. If they're like your first matches, you're like, okay, well, I mean. Right. You can speculate which of your teammates can do best, but let's say you're like, oh, well, you know, X person has the best deck, they'll probably do the best. It's like, oh, actually, the matchups are pretty awkward. They, yeah. they get unlucky, you know, whatever whatever it is. I, I think the formulation of this in terms of, you know, I mean, obviously, if you're going to choose coaches for St. Louis and Chicago, the two guys you go with to be on commentary and to be those guards are, are, are Mason and me. Obviously. Let's fucking go. Uh, Chad starting off with a little Git Probe action sees a fairly mild hand, I would say, from Steven, not threatening anything too crazy, but a Psych Rift to help buy some time and hopefully uh, pick up some artifacts so that he can thought monitor, so he can power a thought monitor out, use some of those artifacts as Tolarian Academy, make a bunch of mana. Chad, in the meantime, finds his Sensei to the top and plays his Sprite Dragon. Can you pull up Sprite Dragon for me? So, now, I have previously done some uh, shenanigans with uh, uh, Sensei's Divining Top and Monastery Mentor, which honestly I think gives you the highest upside of any kind of, we'll call it a spell trigger, prowess trigger, whatever. Yeah, uh, because I really love 
Sensei's Top and those types of decks. Yeah. For any of you guys at home who maybe haven't played the Sensei's Top since the band and everything, um, the play is typically you put top on top and then draw top for turn, which gives you a During one upkeep, mana. Yeah. yeah, which gives you a one mana extra spell to play extra every spell. single turn. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just an extra prowess tr trigger every turn. And when you're talking about Monastery Mentor, uh, which it's just a free 1-1 one, one prowess, every, or not free, but it's a one mana 1-1 one, one prowess every turn. Your Monastery Mentor is just a 3-3. Three, three. And then, you know, on top of that, you still get all the benefits of top, but it's just a, it's just free cards, uh, free board state. I absolutely. It's, it's free real estate. Ooh, uh, Steven gonna hit Chad with the gentle. Uh, Mark just came in, and so I'm gonna have Mark, uh, uh, Mark cover for me for a second while I go oil Derek. That's a new uh, euphemism I'm using. It's your piss, your piss. Well, hi everyone. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Doing great. Exciting to see Steven have a chance at this matchup. He's uh, <laughs> he's at a rough draft according to him just talking to him out there gotcha i wasn't sure how he was gonna be feeling about it i really wanted to pull him in here and talk to him at some point about it mm -hmm. um it looked like he was a little all over the place in the draft but you know i i believed that it would come together after he cut off some of the chaff and look yep. okay as a finalized deck if he's not feeling great about it that tells me something since steven's done a lot of these he probably knows what a good deck looks like but still totally <laughs> I, I have no doubt that he's still going to pull a middling record but uh, he, i know he's not he's he's not hoping for a 6-1 right gotcha, that's kind gotcha. of the mindset he's in well really all that matters is the four matches against chicago right let's be honest <laughs> it's true although the the one three record that we're seeing at the bottom there is not great for our chances it sounds pretty great for our chances let me tell mm. you but that one is jeff blyden and that man that man looks like he could go on a tear i believe he is currently 3-0 so that oh, is that's looking God. pretty good holy if he takes it all down with the crazy goofy white creature combo deck a cephalid breakfast i believe is the title cephalid breakfast bus in breakfast is what it sounds like to me god damn. so so we have sprite dragon that just hit the table did mm -hmm. that that got bounced off of something like i yeah, see there's so a Steven bought a little time with a psych rift ah, uh, and it. then i think he was maybe hoping to be able to use the mental misstep to counter like the sensei's top but he mm -hmm. instead used it to counter a swan song that, uh, that makes was trying sense. to counter the dryad, which normally wouldn't counter creatures, but does counter enchantments, kind of busted. So. Sure does. This Talarian Academy is not looking the best. It currently taps for one off the back of that Seat of the Synod. Mm -hmm. But we've got a, a single artifact in play, so Thought Monitor costing six total. It's quite a bit. Uh, one, two, three, four. Five man, it only looks like Ursa yeah, so adds a nice artifact to the board, though. It does, and it potentially allows that to tap for mana, so we should be seeing Thought Monitor to come down next turn then. Mm -hmm. This strip mine, uh, Stephen picked up at a bargain rate right, this draft, yes. thankfully. Yes, I, I have to imagine that it was uh, an unfortunate side effect of everyone forgetting that it existed yep. for a really long time. Um, I had passed off a list to Noah this morning, uh, color-coded, to try to emphasize um, mm -hmm. priorities for different cards. It's and shocking that you forgot to the, include it. Yeah. Strip mine is in the top tier <laughs> of uh, uh, must-take cards I see. at the very, very front. However, Noah, props to him, went off my skeleton and mm -hmm. definitely uh, drafted a whole bunch, drafted his own version. Uh, I'll say that. He didn't draft... If you're off my list, all these guys are thinking, capable young men. I know you couldn't tell from the one and two seat earlier. <laughs> oh, roasted. Uh, Noah was being incredibly polite as he dusted people earlier, and that was just, like, pretty rude all around. I don't know. I feel like if somebody's going to beat me, I want them to be a little bit rude, and he just, like, seems like such a nice guy as he's yeah, just plopping you know, that's everyone. why I'm so popular around here. Golly. <laughs> Boom! Yeah. Got him. No, Noah is a super polite guy. He's just, like, the nicest dude. Makes it really hard to hate him, but I'm doing my best. <sighs> that's good. You got to you gotta carry that torch for the rest of the gang, Mark. So I thought Steven was really far behind this match, but w that Urza really does kind of balance the board out. It, it brings him. It brings him from a spot where he just can't cast anything to a pretty sizable evening up. I will say. No, absolutely. Chad. Uh, Chad doesn't have a ton of mana in play. He doesn't have a ton of permanence on the board. He's not doing anything too crazy at the moment. He's got a exactly. V click, uh, which we're probably going to see hit the board this turn, assuming that he doesn't need to snap Caster Mage that Swan Song, which he can't even do because he only has one blue. But, hmm. 
looks like we're going to see a little one, two, three, four, five, six. It only costs five. I see six, and that guy. Urza should tap, right? Yep. So choosing to keep the construct out there, which will be attacking as a three, three. There's still Absolutely. a system that's Assuming that he doesn't have anything else to play. But yeah, Ur Urza's going to start activating that last ability and just completely mind desiring him out of the game. I would have to imagine, uh, unless by the time that's happening, Chad should get to cash out his ancestral visions. Well, but next turn he's going to do it twice, probably, unless unless he drew good things. Yeah. So next turn he can pick up his Lutri and then threaten to you know potentially sure uh, do some kind of big epic draw turn with uh, ancestral visions. But yeah, forking in ancestral visions is pretty strong. It's kind of fun. Steven, you, see it, you see it coming, you know. Steven isn't the one with the remand though, because that would be the like. Oof. saltiest Oof. beat I can yeah, imagine. You're right. That would be uh, that'd be a little brutal. The mental misstep getting it spent there, but uh, can you imagine just like mental misstepping the forked uh, ancestral? It'd be pretty oh good. Oh my god. I literally can't imagine that. That sounds too bussin'. Too, too powerful. Oh, there's a questing beast sitting there in Steven's hand. Nice of him to show it to us. Love it. I don't know if Chad's gonna have a chance to get this ancestral vision resolved, given that he's at 10 life. There's a whole lot of creatures there on the other side of the yeah, board. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Chad's just running out of room. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really have time or mana to... Did he also not play Venusia? Who's had such a good start with that Sprite Dragon oh, and, right, and no, top? No, double blue. But just kind yeah. of drew nothing after that. <clears throat> you know, he never actually spun the top into mm. Sprite Dragon every turn. Uh, if he did, he might be in a better spot. Sure. Um, I will say. I think he has a Bolt in hand, right? Is that the red <laughs> card? And I want to say Chad might not just be... Uh, I believe so. Um, I want to say Chad might not really be that familiar with that play pattern. Um, all right, I'm going to step out of this for a second and give it to Brandon. Looks like Steven's going to be crashing in for the for the win here with this questing beast. Nice uh, of Brandon to step in just in the moment to watch his own little boy come and claim victory here. Hey, oh, hey, this my boy. You want to switch seats so when it cuts back to us and it says I'm Brandon and not Mason because that is. That is the greatest indignity known to man. That's Anyways. Uh, you'll note that I found you some Budweiser Zeros, which should really help. Oh. Uh, sponsored by Anheuser-Busch. It's, it's, a, it's a zero alcohol product that still provides all the same great taste. Wow, that is, no love from Budweiser. that is racist against Italians. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I, I did like how we got to see the Urza Vanguard card. That was pretty exciting. And yeah, there was, uh, if you follow along in the Discord, if you type in exclamation point Discord, you'll see the link to it. Uh, you can participate in strange drafts where we get to play Vanguard cards, like Mishra here. I don't oh know what's still happening. Apparently he didn't actually win. Um, I was just wrong about that. There's a lightning bolt that popped off the cons. What happened? How, how did he not win? This is kind of deep analysis that we're hoping. He, okay, he, he hit the decision. Oh, well, that would be because he's at 14 life. And right. Lightning Bolt does not do that many. Okay, so we're still in the middle of an attack step. He, he already popped off the uh, Stowaway. That's what happened there. So we're still seeing a Construct coming in, the Questing Beast, and the Dried Releasing Grove. It looks like Ursa's hanging back along with the Flying Tutu. Snapcaster Mage came in, uh, flashing back something to have killed the, the Stowaway. And then a Bolt finished off the... Uh, the construct. Double block on the dryad, uh, which kills the snapcaster. But bright dragon is still pretty strong here. Let me get this microphone right here. Good. Yeah, you're fine. This is fine. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. So ancestral visions is going to pop. So Chad's at six life. Uh, he gets to he gets to draw three. Uh, didn't have a chance to get Lutri in hand to make it a true a daily double. But. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> good. Good. Uh, I do see a four spike in hand there for Chad, and a Beaumont. So we can a V click counter his own Lutri. Brilliant. Uh, the V the V click seems like the most impactful card that's going to happen here. Uh. Yeah, you can't Lutri a V-click, though. Oh, and Delver's the last one. No, Lutri's not going to do a whole lot this game, I don't think. No, but with a Sensei's Dividing Top, you do get a 3-2 fly. 
Empire out of Delver with all all due probability. However, um, Urza on board with the Telerian Academy, um, this feels like, I mean, Steven is representing eight mana, no, seven mana at this point, and any kind of free spell he casts. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he's paying five. He's spending the Urza? Uh, to spend the Urza at the end of Chad's turn, which makes sense to me. If you've got the mana, make it pop. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. and he has exactly eight mana to get that up to a six six pro everything. That's pretty good, and we know that Chad does have the uncounterable. Click. Yeah, Chad doesn't have a billion click in the force bike, but these are. Am I redeemed I, with I, my overwhelming infatuation with Hex Drinker? Or my assessment that it is the best green creature card in this format. I think that in this situation, it does show that when you have eight mana available, that it does win more than when you're already... Hell yeah, bruv. Yes. That's what I say about it. And you know, this uh, Noble Hierarch means it's actually attacking for seven, so we can take him to negative one just to get the rubbins. Oh. (laughs) You don't get rubbins for free. Anyways... (laughs) <laughs> the head shakes. My goodness. Did any of you el- any anybody else feel the rotation of the earth shift? They were monstrous. Anyways, uh so, so Oh, that, that, w- that was wait. on Steven's turn. Oh wow, he really should have done that at the end of Chad's turn. That's much better. So uh Urza doesn't allow him to cast it immediately, so you can't cast things at different speeds, it appears. It does say until end of turn you may play that card without paying its mana cost, which means that you still have to obey time your restrictions. So that, it, it doesn't get around the force spike problem. Ugh, that seems kind of dumb. Yeah, yeah. I think Urza really needs to be pushed more in power level, and I can't believe that they decided to print this card with 75 lines of text and just overlooked that. There are only eight lines of text. Yes. Okay, so I can count. I just can't read. Did Steven just level up the Hex Drinker on his opponent's turn? Uh, not if I have anything to say about it. It shouldn't matter, but we might as well get that fixed. So I believe we are going to verify that situation. I mean, he's got the extra three mana from the totally. Hierarch and the other two. It's no trouble. It'll, it'll be solved out in the end. Yeah. But yeah, it just... Good to know that on in round three. I mean, does of, does Chad have any ability to... No, he's holding a V-click, uh, Force Spike. Yeah. Oh, the V-click's gone. He's just holding a Force Spike, so there's no interaction that's going to happen. And Steven still has enough mana to do it if he wants to commit to it. I guess he has to play around a Vapor Snag or something that he... that I, I don't know what Chad's list actually looks like. I don't think there's anything there that Steven would even have to worry about. Oh, no. The, I can already tell, by the way, his hand... He's thinking about it? Yeah. Okay, so there's four. Okay, good. Okay, he okay. saw it. <laughs> he did. All right, he just didn't see. Also, he has an Urza. He can tap his thought monitor for mana too. True. The, uh, see, that's the that is the issue with these decks that like Steven and I draft on the reg is that when you make sure that there is a like a sixty percent synergy coefficient between mm-hmm. any two given cards in your deck, your board states are automatically complicated if they exist in a a surplus of five things on the board. Right. It's it's just this is compoundingly I, complex. See, my decks tend to have three permanents on the board. Two of them are lands and one of them is a lotus petal. I, and that's, I was that's just going like to say. Win. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to do that much thinking, so I just prefer to not have anything on the board. No thinky, just drinky. Exactly. Yep. All right. Luckily, we got our uh, got our Chicago representative back, so we can hear more deep analysis from <laughs> our friend Mason. You can you can flash that back. Incredible. <clears throat> All right. How did our game go? Steven got it. Oh, okay, nice. Well, he did look like he had a bit of an advantage going there, so that's nice. Uh, yeah. So he oh. wheeled Urza, got a hex drinker, and then next turn. He had, well, he actually had nine mana mm. available, but he 
was able to use eight of it and swing in for a lethal with a protection from everything hex trigger. Yowza. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a report from the floor. Um, our own Dylan Papke uh, is playing against Jeff, and they are one and one in games with Papke on the play for game three. Oh. So we'll see how that unfolds, but maybe someone trying to take a run at Jeff's undefeated streak so far. So um, up to this point, I will, I will say this. Number one is that, I, I mean, I didn't understand what was happening with Jeff's draft, mm -hmm. and that's that's on me. Like I just I didn't <laughs> understand what those cards do, and I made very little attempt to get to understand it. So uh, I want to say congratulations to Jeff, which is also why I picked him to represent the St. Louis team because he is always a strong drafter and he always goes always. at least four yeah. and three. Always, uh, and he knows what he's doing. Like mm -hmm. even if it looks janky as hell, it's always very strong and has rec recursiveness. Um, Absolutely. Uh, the other thing I will say is that uh, Sam just was deciding not to report some matches yet, and uh, she took down Dan in between her feature match uh, oh, appearances. Hey, nice job. So right. uh, she was able to get out a uh, a turn two contamination against Dan that before before he that could uh, yeah. before he could use his elves to any real effect, and okay. then uh, on game two. Uh, she was able to have, she had a ley line in hand, was able to vamp tutor for a, uh, what you might call it, uh, the, the Helm of Obedience, delicious. and uh, did a little culling of the week to Helm of Obedience into a ley line, mm. and uh, just knocked the snot out of Dan, Dan Zeroni. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, way to go, Sam. Also, way to kill your other fellow teammates. I, somebody's got to lose. Ooh, and, and our boy Swifty takes down Dan the Man. Dan playing a much simpler deck, I think, than he usually plays. You know, he yep. usually plays a little bit more complicated of combo decks. Today, he's just playing a nice, simple, hey, I play I play little dude, I play bigger dude, you die, maybe. Yes, no, maybe so. I had to <sighs> mute myself because my mic was reverbing. Gave it a bomb. Uh, anyways, we are starting off with Darcy. Wait, Which did, feels uh, there's no way he. I think he drew, he drew into the it. Darcy off the get probe, right? Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah right. Just wanted to make sure we were on the same page here. Active uh, volcano destroy target blue permanent return target island to its owner's hand. Very cute. Yeah. It's um. Good at destroying. It numbers, is good at bouncing your. Good at time walking your opponent when they I, play island. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Delver is good in this format personally. I think Delver's probably fine. Uh, like, it's probably it's, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Like, you know, you've got the Sensei's Divining Top, which is the thing that makes it okay. Uh, I yeah. I think if you yeah. don't if you don't have that, then you're forcing your deck around a 3-2 flyer that is honestly pretty inconsequential in terms of what it's up against. And if you're not doing four, like, this is not a 4 of format, as we, sure. we talk about all the time, but... I uh, I think that Chad has created the ideal conditions within his deck for a Delver to be okay, to be a serviceable creature that uh, that you get you got out there. Yeah, I think a, a majority of the time when you play the card, it's just gonna not flip over for he, uh, for a few turns, then eventually flip over, and the, the highs of when it flips over right away and really gets a lot of damage on your opponent are nice, but. Uh, it's just a, it's, I think it's just a fine card on average. Some real highs, some real lows, uh, but you would hope. So, yeah, apparently on, for our on-camera matches, uh, Chicago was just smoking St. Louis. Uh, it looks like, maybe not necessarily with this, on this turn or the next turn, but uh, Steven seems to have a bit of a commanding board presence. We, I mean, we know that Chad has the whole breacher in hand. Yep. yep. We don't know how, it doesn't seem as though there's anything that's going to maximize the effectiveness of that. And, uh, Temple of Epiphany coming into play tapped. 
Yeah, some of these uh, tap lands. Uh, Swifty had some tap lands that hurt him in his match yep. against Sam. And uh, Chad is definitely having some issues with some tap lands of his own. So not ideal, not perfect. But yeah, I don't know what else we're going to have issues with. <coughs> Maybe I'll just have to talk louder. Uh, you just have to direct it directly at where the mic is. Yeah, I can try to do that. I'll just hunch over like a gargoyle. You have not moved and it was completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is the weak stone and the and the might stone. Oh, that's cool. So this is uh, got a couple different options when you play it. You can kill a guy or draw two cards. Uh, looks like Steven is choosing to kill a guy. It's, you know, aggressive, but it's not wrong. The meat stone and the hook stone <laughs> and the <laughs> massacre stone. Sorry, Derek bought. Can't you know? Doesn't always interpret. The, the commands. You'd <laughs> think as a computer he'd be better at spelling, but apparently not quite. <laughs> it's, it's all this mumblecore rap you kids are into these days slash 2017. <laughs> <laughs> that you kids definitely are into yeah. right now in the year of our Lord. What year is it? Who's Lord? 2023? Oh. <laughs> Praise Yeesh. Tiamat. Anyways, Yeesh. uh... You know, one of the things I was concerned about with Chad is this, uh, is the mountain problem. He's got two of them out there, so Fire Blast is online. I don't know if that ever made it into the main board. Uh, uh, Derek, Derek, but let's try to pull up the, uh, the Mox field just very briefly and see if it's not in there. Okay. We don't even have to pull it up. Derek, but is really advanced AI technology. He's got a photographic memory, an eidetic memory, I believe they call it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie to you, though. This, this is looking pretty rough for Chad. I don't know that he can make it out of this one. Uh, no, not with the hand. That, like, this is why I don't really love Force of Will. Or, sorry, um, what's it called? Force Negation? Uh, Force Spike. Uh, ah. Because, a, like, many of these decks want to play Land Acceleration. And if you, like, people have access to your deck list. They know that you have Force Spike in your list. It's very easy to play around, especially when you've got a Noble Hierarch, you've got Tillerian Academies. Sometimes you're just like bleeding extra mana, and it's just like, okay, well, I can play one 4-drop this turn, but I can't play my other one because I only have 7 mana. Yeah. Damn it! Right. It's, yeah, it's so rough. So, uh, yeah, you know, Steven being one of those decks uh, where there is absolutely a surplus. Um, and... Like, you got a whole Breacher, that's cool, but uh, the one card remaining in your hand is being Force Spike is... is Whoa! Just, okay, oh, that's interesting. Oh, wait. I expected him to active Volcano to kill that whole Breacher, but instead he drew a card off his Waterlogged Grove and did not leave Red Mana open, so... Well, I mean, he doesn't really have to. I mean, now he leaves himself with no Red Mana, period, which is kind of interesting. Oh, Oh, yeah. No, that's accurate. Yeah, not totally sure about this uh, this particular play. Uh, yeah, because Urza is just blue mana. Uh, do you mind if the, the Might and the Weak Stone, we can't pull that up? It's just... All right. Uh, well, you're going to keep looking at the Meat Hook Massacre, because this is what happens when you, when you try to look up the Might Stone and the Weak Stone. Genius. We get Minsk and Boo, which is basically the Might Stone of the Week. By the way, I asked uh, I asked Sam during, my, well, not during my bathroom break, but <laughs> I went out there, I went to the bathroom, and then afterwards uh, talked to her, and she's like, "There's too much text on that card." I didn't not I didn't know what it did, and so like I was just like, "I'll be honest, she was basically it doesn't playing. seem that good to me." Minsk and Boo, or oh, we're talking no, about the Might Stone and yeah, Weeks. Was she talking about Minskin Boo? Yeah, she oh, well because when she was yeah. playing her match against Noah, uh, she just like there's there's too much text on the card. I didn't know what it did, and I like I was just hoping to not have to <laughs> have that revealed to me. Yeah, yeah, um, I can understand that. And ooh, hey, we got there on the red mana. Nice. Now we can look at activating some volcanoes. So it looks like what we did on our turn was we Ancestral Visions to draw cards, and then we Treasure Cruise to draw more cards. 
and then we passed. Hmm. All right, so Telerian Academy is for five. One, two, three, four, Earth. five mana. Yep. So it's spinning your Urza. We're going to see what we hit. Hopefully it's That's what we land. call a Spurza. San Antonio Spurza. What do we get? Oh, that's a n- nice Ooh, one. Dove in hand of control. That is a nice one. Hello. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty juice. You know, Chad maybe can find himself in a better position, assuming that he untaps. Uh, you know, he did draw six, seven cards in a turn. By the time it gets to his next turn, he has all his mana up. He will have seen eight new cards. That's a number. So, uh, this construct is swinging in for five. If this becomes a problem, yeah. So, just sacrifice Darcy. Uh, Steven is in kind of a commanding position here because, you know, at any point, just active volcano on that whole breacher. He's got plenty of mana to pay for a four spike. Yikes. Yeah. It's looking rough uh, for Chad in this one. Yeah, and that dove in hand of control, uh, basically sphering all of uh, Chad's plays, going to put him in a pretty tough spot. We'll see if Chad has a chance to get back in this one. I mean, damn, that's a lot of cards in hand. It's a lot of cards in hand. Now he just has and to figure out a way to actually play them, to deploy them. Yeah. You deploy things in football, right? In football? Yeah. I don't know. Oh. I thought you were the sports guy around here. <laughs> Well, wow. <laughs> uh, listen, the Derek program listen. that we used to make our robot is actually, was actually a sports betting pro, algorithm. Pro originally. vaccine, pro choice, pro wrestling. That's how I feel about <laughs> it. That's my political party. Uh, too funny. Too funny. I'm only pro two things in this world. And that's Ukraine and... In the uh, WWE. <laughs> Hell yeah. woo Lord praise <laughs> God himself, Vince McMahon. <laughs> May he speedily and efficiently uh, convert his WWE asset into billions of dollars <laughs> in service of all the good work he's done for our Lord and Savior. Hey, Amen. Anyways. Hey, man. Proselytize, brother. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Here's what we have. We have a four spike, a bunch of lands, a petty theft slash brazen borrower, uh, and Steven casting a suspicious stowaway off of Yeah, I have, a, I have a hard time believing Chad's going to get out of this one. No, I'll be yeah. honest. Yeah, I mean, the, the petty theft costing three. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, petty theft against this token is pretty nice, to be honest. Uh because it forces Steven to take his biggest uh, threat off the board. Um, and then you get a 3-1 flyer. That's cool. Uh, that you can play that doesn't... You can't target it with Dovin. He doesn't have a... Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it, you can't expect Steven to not have anything in hand when he's only casting stuff out of his deck mm-hmm. at this point. So, And, like, Brazen Borrower getting... Um, imp- impeached token. that way. Uh, wait, what? It managed to ca- uh, get the golem token off the board, but mystical dispute tapped. Oh, oh, he has to pay an extra three. So yeah. okay, so basically he just doesn't get to play it that turn, which honestly is huge because it keeps the Dovin alive. Right. It also just keeps Chad without being able to play more spells, which is pretty brutal. Oh no! Oh, yeah, this is this just this just makes. Oh my god! Who who would have thought? Uh, and so are we, and we're not going to see Urza beats. We're going to see suspicious stowaway beats. Certainly are. Yeah, we certainly are. Uh, okay. Or not. That's I fine. think maybe he just played the stowaway. I think that might've been what the, I he got it off of a spin. I'm pretty sure, but well, oh, we'll okay, show sure. he paid. You he will pay a st- load toss. My Idiot, what a stupid Twitch handle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Th- no, this is actually relevant. The draw that Chad just got was a Dovin. 
or not sorry not a oh, Dovin, a uh, Dak Faden. Yeah, interesting. I'm wondering if there's anything too valuable to catch cuz Might and Weakstone don't do much. And yeah, I don't know if there's anything I mean, really it, it, it also costs 4, which is not ideal. It costs 4. It costs Does it? 4. It's a non No, oh shit, it doesn't. Love it. Man. Okay, so he is Derek Bot is really on top of shit. I don't know about the Might Stone thing i'm not sure about that uh yeah i also i also question its efficacy especially for a five mana thing like regardless it is something that takes a mana resource away from steven right uh like he's down two mana yeah, and he's now, down whatever. Really I don't know what that card does, but whatever it does, he doesn't have access to it anymore. Uh huh. But you know, an attack for five, absolutely brutal. I'm trying to lightning bolt something off, but I don't know how many treasures Stephen has. Treasure. That is what. <coughs> Sorry, too much Budweiser. I'm gonna stop. Hilarious. Anyways, genius. Um, man, that's got to feel bad to have that four spike in hand just the entire time. Well, it really wasn't uh, an optimal timing. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I. And it also doesn't look it, as good I mean, when your opponent busts out multiple moxen. Yeah, it it really. I think it. This is evidence for a conversation that can still go either way, which is like, do you have four spike in the sideboard or in the main board? Uh, sure. Some sometimes it causes your opponents to, you know, play, play around, around it and play play slower, which can give you enough time to assemble like a combo or whatever. And uh, unfortunately for Chad, he is not the combo player. He is not doing the Splinter Twin. Yeah. So, um, d- to what degree does it help you? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Not sure. Uh, however. Okay, Keeping it in, yeah, I don't we're know. We're finally going to see our big Jace, big old JC boy, Is that right? Jace or Teferi? Oh, I'm sorry, Teferi, I think I think that's the five-drop Teferi. Yeah, the, well, sorry. A, I, a I five-drop Teferi. Jace. I don't know why. They, I, they might as well be the same thing. Right? Mono Blue Planeswalker, hello. Everyone knows Teferi's Man. always been blue yeah. white. What the hell? Listen, I, I do think it's absolute jank but i would have loved memory jar in this deck like if you're reliably you know spinning urza to do five you can reliably cast a memory jar and <laughs> it just eats your butt with Tim, with teferi yeah like you just make it, one or two of the tokens and then boom combo. yeah i mean or you just play the Teferi, spin the jar, and then ult. All righty. Chad, untapped, drawing, looking for something, looking for anything. Can he find a way to hold it out? It looks like he drew another land. That man is getting flooded. Like he wouldn't believe. He's at seven, and Werewolf is flipping. Uh, it looks like Steven will be joining Sam in the one and two region of this bracket. Hell yeah. Bringing our uh, total closer to parity. And, you know, I feel, here's the thing. I have several times been on the... Uh, receiving end of negative diagnostics from commentary where it's, I mean, you know, a, a friend of mine, let's call him Garrick, Garrick Ravine saying like, Oh, I just don't think I see what Brennan can do to get out of this. And then out of nowhere, a winter orb a balance. Let's, 
Ice Fang Coatl, oh, Brain Freeze, and then the game's over. Mm-hmm. It's, it's happened before. Um, but now that they're actually shuffling up cards, I think... <laughs> We maybe I call just for this match. maybe I just have the magic that they don't, and I get that. That makes sense. It's I'm, rough. It's I'm a rough one. But I'm a very hey, special you know what, boy. Chat, that puts Chad at uh, reported one and one so far. Which mm. I believe we've seen more of Chad on the feature match area, so there's no way that can be accurate. Let's um, no, let's I think go that to was Chad's the... first shot in the feature match. Oh right, right, right. right. We 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 saw Noah twice there. I don't. But believe just. Yeah, Jeff, it doesn't look like he's finished his match against Dylan. But God, I hope that Dylan can bang out a win against him. Wait, so were Chad and Dylan not playing when everybody else was... I think that match... I'm I'm really not sure. uh, Yeah, I feel like that match went unreported, Mm, uh, the results of that match. So... uh, Next, we got Steven versus Swifty coming in. Katerbug. Katerbug, if you can go verify uh, these match report results. Because (laughs) somebody's slacking. (laughs) It sure as hell isn't me rocking the mic. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Just bringing you the hard-hitting truth. Straight to this you video. You don't have to try Damn. <laughs> Woo! High five. All right. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Careful. When I do that voice, people are like, oh, that guy definitely does math. Holy. <laughs> I mean, Woo. listen, if you've got, if you have ADHD, then you have to do math. In order to stay exactly. regular. Don't accidentally uh, tweak yourself out too badly. Woo. Uh, Alrighty. Swifty and Steven coming up. Swifty. <laughs> And Steve. <laughs> All right, we can just remove the end on Steven's last name and then just get Steve. Hee hee. Steve. Hee hee. Step. Hee hee. <laughs> Genius. Chicago sucks. Yeah. Eat. Chicago sucks. Yeah. I'm with eat those Nards, guys. losers. Fuck those fucking <laughs> nerds. Oh my god. How did they even get this place? Oh, how did they even know we we're doing this today? Oh my god. Good thing I 55 just goes straight south to here. <laughs> they might have got lost. Fuck. Yeah. Idiots. Chicago, dude, fun fact about Chicago people they don't know how to drive. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, they <laughs> listen. Not that they're bad drivers. They just I, legitimately don't know how. There's no drivers is, at it in Illinois. Is, as much as I like, uh, you know, being combative with the St. Louis uh, Chicago rivalry, uh, St. Louis absolutely has you beat on worse drivers. That is nice. that is nice. absolutely that's, fucking true. That's a great point. At least you guys have the competency oh, to be able to drive uh, to be able to drive 90 miles an hour with mostly without getting into accidents. Hopefully, uh, we can barely drive like. 27 miles an hour without getting into accidents. Ooh. It's not like our <laughs> streets even have reflective paint, but uh, no worries. All right, so uh, All right, Swifty versus Swifty, Steven. Swifty starting off I with kind a quick of, mull, quick mulligan. I kind of see these decks as being in like uh, in a bit of a similar vein. Obviously, there's um, some slight... There's a red splash overlap with like a major blue theme. Uh-huh. Whereas Swifty has gone uh, white blue with the main color and Steven has gone green blue. Right. Uh, the, the, you know, the artifacts obviously help that out a lot. But uh, just in terms of pure power, there's a good amount of parity between these decks. Like, like Oko and Teferi are kind of like right there for each other. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And just like that, this is pretty, what a very nice start. This is what I want to see. The four, four this pro is, instance on turn two. This is how magic was meant to be played. Get out a one drop creature that can just attack for way too much damage on turn two or three. I like it. Now, Swifty did draw Supreme Verdict. He's got uh, an out to this hex drinker, regardless of if it becomes a miniature protagonist. Uh, it m- might, however, cost four mana to play it. Very well. Arrivederci, ciao a tutti. Arrivederci. Hala, hala, city of Squala. Hala, hala, I prefer. I, I prefer Ciabatta. Because hala bread is. It's a little bit and too. No it's, it's, just, it's, it's just a little bit too sweet for me. Yo. And, you know, that's fine. You know, I actually need. It's better than the rye, I'll I need say that sugar. much. I tell you that much. I need some sugar. I need to, like. Are you feeling a little hypo, hy- hypoglycemic? I'm so tired, Brandon. You don't even know. I was up so late 
Thursday night. Yeah. Into just such a into a drive of a night on Thursday. I am dying tired. Every oh, muscle no. in my body is screaming at me. Is this a, a prismatic ending? This is a prismatic ending. So uh, wait, wait. I thought it was. Oh, strat. he d- he did it at instant speed when it was when he was trying to pump it up to four. Mm-hmm. Swifty also went aggro with the uh, with the thought tower again and milled. Oko wait, and wait, wait. Why is he untapping? Uh, because that was a sorcery Isn't... speed ending on Swifty's turn. Wait, prismatic ending sorcery speed? It is. Ooh, but well, Stephen presenting yet another great yeah. threat with Urza. <laughs> Um, this one but might see, have to get cleaned up with Supreme Verdict, but we'll see. I want I want this to be the Twitch clip for why I believe that Hex Drinker is so good. It's because you put it down, you start leveling it up very aggressively, and during that entire period of time, you're not spending any cards or resources other than that turn's mana. And then by the time your opponent has figured out a response to it, they have sunk multiple resources into accelerating their path to be able to deal with that creature, and mm. you have used fucking nothing. Yeah. Other yeah. than your mana that turn. Absolutely can't disagree with that. So Swifty doesn't want to wait around for the Supreme Verdict, maybe because he doesn't have a second white source, but either way, he decides to Swords to Plowshares the Urza, and then Steven responds in kind with a Strip Mine on the Urza Saga. Did, so Did he accidentally reveal balance off of that? Or was that just to us, or did Steven... All, I mean, who, who knows, but um, yeah, we I saw that there's a balance. Yeah, I think it might have just there. been to us. I think we might have just seen it. I don't, I don't all know All right, that so this is a it. construct attack for three, taking Swifty down to 13. It's uh, pretty good. I mean, yeah, Steven's got a shit ton, and Yo, Swifty's DJP got 100 three. Now following. All right, Thank so you very much, my friend. That construct says, and we draw a card. Remember, for every follow that we get, Brandon is going to cobble a shoe. Yep. Every two follows, that means one pair of shoes getting cobbled by the man uh, himself. Every man paid himself. subscription, I will haberdasher. A whole haberdasher ride. I, I will hab, 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 haberdash. I will haberdash. Anyways, we have got a plateau hitting the board. Ooh, what if you did a delivery service, but instead of delivering food, it was just hats? Um, called like haberdash. Ooh, it's like because like Haber is kind of like Uber, yeah, and yeah. like do- Dash is like yeah, DoorDash, like door yeah, Hab Hab Dash, Haber Dash, and yeah. yeah, so you get a you get a custom made hat, custom delivered to your custom door. Ooh, also, I'll build a door for you. Also, want to do a door delivery yeah. service? Yeah. yeah. So it's you basically call it door doors. Do- door door. <laughs> Uh, door doors and haver dash that'll work perfectly Ooh, Soy door door. coming in off the top rope with the big comet and that does four roll to four so it pings steven for five and for then five minus, yeah it's however much loyalty comet has pre ticking him down so you shoot for his loyalty and then you tick him down jinkies uh, batman two. so um, you would obviously prefer if Steven had some kind of creature, but hey, you know what? You got to work his life total down eventually. And <laughs> That's what they tell me. Smooth, brace, smooth Brain Plays when the, was the one that says Chicago sucks. I thought that was Caterberg. I'm not going to lie. I don't know who Smooth Brain is, but uh, well, I, don't, I don't need to say anything that his username doesn't already imply. Uh-oh. Okay, we got a little, uh, so little crop rot. Now, the, the a Phyrexian portal does not oh, really boy. help right now. No, what else did you grab? Did you I mean, it, it could help, but not really. Um, I think... I mean, did Blight still get sideboarded in? Uh, because that's game, if <laughs> it did. I hope. I don't think... I, I just... Based on how this... How long this has taken, which is, to be fair, not very long... Uh, a Blightsteel would just be out if that had been I, sorted out. I just can't... Does he not have Blightsteel in his main In the main? Deck? Why would you? To tutor for it. When yeah, that's a good point. doesn't have a bunch of creatures in play. Oh, yeah, my God. Wait, you know what? That's a real good point. Oof. Dan loses to Noah. Dan is having a rough day today. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the, the small green men not coming through yeah, for him, unfortunately. I, that's a bummer. Uh, yeah. That could have been me. That could have been me out there. God damn it. <sighs> Holy shit. You let somebody else take the shrapnel for you. Or uh, a thought monitor. That's just, that's not good. Tinkering a spell that normally you try to cast for one mana. Rough stuff. Let me tell you. <laughs> I mean, to, like, to be fair, you 
you have a two, two flyer, which when bounced back to your hand, uh, is very, it, for the most part is very good. Cause it's just, it's more card advantage. Uh, and just does damage to planeswalkers and gives you like, I would rather have a blight steel if I'm being friggin' honest. I don't disagree with you. Blight steel seems like it would be important. This should teach Dan to not try to play Mason's deck. You know what? I think if anything, um, you know, I, I will say uh, an actual real critique of Dan's deck is uh, my same critique with basically every creature centric deck. And that is that it's not really about the creatures. It's not really about the game plan. It's about the interactive cards that you have to mess with your opponent because your creature plan is always going to be strong, but you need the disruptive cards to try to keep your opponent a, off balance. A while braid, you kill them. a braid is a is a great. A great braid card is there. a really good fucking card. Yeah, in, the, in this format particularly. Yep, and then we saw the roll from oh. uh, Ka- Comet that allows you to make two hasty Deuterinos and get in for the beats. Everybody loves that. And with a really quick game by Swifty. Uh, yeah, that um, Co- Com- Comet Pup. Yeah, Comet. Uh, if Derek said, was here, we'd, we'd pull it up. But. Swifty has said Comet has been great so far. Ooh, we're going to get a Jeff versus Noah on deck. Caterberg, did Jeff win the match against Papke, or did he lose? I'm guessing he won. Who? Uh, Jeff versus... Uh, our f- Dylan? My, f- my friend Dylan Papke. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I forgot that he put him in as Dylan instead of Papke. We we call him Papke because yeah, sure. we have another. Uh, my best friend's name is Dylan. Um, Dylan won. Let's go, Chicago. No one defeated Yikes. today. Listen, there was one thing that I could. That, listen, there are two things that I can lose today from the booth. Okay. One, that's my city not winning. Okay. Two, that would be yeah. someone crushing a seven zero and leaving me like some kind of fucking chump. All right. Right. Because then you know I gotta I gotta battle. Then then, then both of us return from retirement and get it, get exact, back in get back in Look, sleeve it up. Um, we were speculating. No gloving, no be, loving. We, we were speculating as to who was going to be in this draft. Yeah. And uh, Swifty made a comment of like, "Oh, Elaine's going to fly in and play <laughs> and try to." Crush as far her as I'm concerned, Elaine is Canadian now. <laughs> and I was like. If they brought back Elaine for a draft no. I wasn't in, I'd be pissed. <laughs> yeah, no. How dare I, I, I gotta take her on? Okay. Yeah, I, we would never spend the <laughs> we would never spend the resources to not have a, a champions draft. Ah, too funny. Yeah, I'm excited about getting to do that pretty soon on the Discord. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that has been a long time coming. I know I was the reason that it wasn't happening on the Discord for a while. I'm hoping. Well, but the, I'm I mean, it wasn't just you. It was also Ju Kim's and. Uh, and then, I guess couldn't do anything. And then also so I was I out. was just like not getting on my desktop computer for like four months. Nice. So nice. uh honestly that's not a bad thing. Every once in a while. Well, I, it's it's I only love... because I finally got my new computer chair. I'm so excited. Ooh, it, nice. it is nice. It uh I ended up just buying a barber chair. Oh <laughs> because really? Holy it shit. because it like listen, I am six four 260 pounds like i'm God, i'm a big boy i'm i'm much man and uh i needed something that is going to be comfortable for sitting for like hours at a time sure sure uh i needed something that was adjustable upwards my so most desks mm-hmm. uh are like two and a half feet so they're like or not even most desks yeah like they're like two and a half feet or something like that okay uh, that sounds so, low to me but uh, okay fair enough they're like 30 inches Oh, uh, desktop height and so and most chairs are 20 inches and so this chair adjusts up to 30 inches of height or like 28.7 or whatever it is mm-hmm. uh and so my desk is just like an ikea kitchen island that you buy and so it's uh-huh. like 38 inches tall and so it's enough for my <laughs> meaty thighs to fit under and like also be tall and like my feet can touch the ground without like Hilarious. whatever Ooh, we've got a pretty busting start over here so uh swifty started off with a triumph oh yikes and this oh, oh and a mind. strip mine steven was on the play so he led with a strip mine and a and, box you but know, no play and swifty decided i'll lead this triumph and see if he wants to pick it off Interesting, which that, I don't, yeah, it feels, mm, yeah, you know what? I don't know what's in the hand. So I would imagine that seems it leads good. Me, it, 
Oh, Pony. damn, homie. That's, damn. That's a tough one to beat. Honky. I'm not going to lie. Please tell me you've got Spell Pierce Swifty. Come on. Nope. Spell Pierce that bitch. Nope, it's happening. Oh, my God. Oko is broke. Are you kidding me? Oh, my Lord. Well, what's really broke is just like having access to moxes in any format. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, especially when your opponent doesn't draw one. Yeah, this is a, this is a, a very bad... It's an auspicious start Seems for like Steven. Yes, Oko the Trickster. That's our boy. Let's yeah. go. Oko el Trickster. All right, next draft, everyone has to pick at least uh, one six mana planeswalker, okay? So uh, can oh, pick oh. Onyx. Someone can pick Dib, Soren Grim Nemesis. Oh, someone can pick Soren Grim Nemesis? It's not good. Hot. Uh, no, I mean, honestly, I think the best six mana planeswalker is Ugin the Ineffable. Oh, uh, the, that is a really good the one. The second best six mana planeswalker is probably Liliana Dreadhorde General. Ugin the Ineffable should have been on Noah's uh, red green Eldrazi list. I forgot it. Yeah, That's of my course. Bad. Fuck. It yeah. was in my banned Eldrazi list, but I never went back yeah. and looked at my banned Eldrazi list yeah. to see oh, what. Oh, Morden Kynan. Plus it two is Dresky based cards. on the matches Smooth Brain plays. So, so far, Chicago has picked up seven wins. Jesus Christ. Uh, collectively, is... which is less than two wins per person. Uh, and they are playing four, four cross pot or four cross city matches each. So, there is still time for St. Louis to equalize. They just got to bang off some wins. I mean, and also, I mean, this, to be fair, this doesn't even come, this is more of a, uh, a stylistic choice to, you know, really turn up the heat when we have this, uh, yeah, this match yeah. win counter, because it really just comes down to who wins. Right. Ultimately, if, uh, if, you know, Jeff or, um, Steven, any of the guys, uh, come through with a hero record, they can still clutch out and become the ultimate winner. Man, this, honestly, this VRD is anyone's fucking game basically be, everybody is like like at best be, somebody is like what, Steven, two and one, two and a one right now match, swifty who we thought had a really really strong deck and was really looking good would be at one and two i mean you I, know. I, listen i speaking from personal experience even from zero and two it is possible to win a vrd it absolutely is have you ever heard of the mad jackal strategy uh the mad jackal strategy was a, was a dangerous and and daring strategy developed in the early days of competitive magic and it's where you intentionally lose that was three two matches at the start of the tournament in order to get into the weakest bracket possible so that you can run off an infinite number of wins uh i think they fixed Derek. that by having <laughs> match win percentage and also having enough competitors that that is a bad idea uh listen whether or not it's ever worked is questionable, but the Mad Jackal uh, you know what? I'm, super I'm sure if you have that. a field of less than 64, that's a reasonable approach if you're trying to cut the top eight. However, uh, yeah, I mean, Caterbug says it right. Running up the back of the bracket is the best feeling in tournament. Uh, so, obviously, everybody in chat knows that I won VRD7. Uh, of course. What of course. they, everybody knows what they may not know, because... Uh, I think perhaps even the casters weren't completely aware of it was that I did that by going at, but after losing my first two matches, uh, both of them, uh, one and two losses going 12 and O for the rest of the tournament in my games, not dropping a single game for the next six matches. My God. Man. <laughs> yeah. That was beast mode. All right, guys, this is looking pretty grim. For yeah, our oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been missing on a lot of land drops. Hasn't been able to put anything together. And, uh, and the hex drinker coming in to close getting out. Getting out, out carded. Oko is just running a train on him and Swifty and Look. Steven gets the Look W. At this man I can tell Cater Perk is starting to get real bugged out by that two and seven scoreline creeping up. Yeah. Up, up, let's, up, up, let's up, go up, ahead up. and make that three and seven. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Which, uh, Oh, that was game three for those guys? Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that first game when Steven took it down. Yeah. Wow. And now we've got Noah and Jeff on yeah. deck. Jeff just lost a match to Dylan yeah. Papke, so which puts it, him at 2-1. and if one Jeff, and out. Yeah, if Jeff uh, takes this uh, match down against Noah, then they're both at 3-1. and one, So this is... You know, is anybody, this is, is still anybody's turn. It, it very, very much is. Um, yeah. Now, Noah has expressed he thinks it's a very bad matchup for him. He does not think he has... Uh, the appropriate interaction. I told him, uh, I hey, think a braid was on your list. Why didn't you get it? Why didn't you put Jid? Because Swifty had to get it. Yeah, well, apparently. <laughs> I think, uh, I think oh, yeah, once again... Have, oh, they still have game three. Ah, see, I knew it. What? Okay. Yeah, I knew it. See, he didn't win one. He With the Urza and the Hex Drinker? All right, I well... I think that was a different match, right? Oh, that was... Wait. Against somebody else? 
that the case? Swifty won game one. Who did Steven beat? Yeah, we just had Steven on camera, and he beat up uh, Chad, right? Oh, okay. So we kept Steven. All right. Cool, 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 cool. That is generally how we've been doing it. We're doing I, King of the Hill style. Where you I, two I was... Uh, boom, boom. I had not connected the dots, perhaps due to consumption of alcohol. Um, but that's unlikely because I'm an adult and I can handle my liquor. <laughs> Anyways, it's not liquor. It's beer. Uh, Steven, beer, you're in the clear. Steven in his hand has a Dovin hand of control. A okay. very so good mo- card. <gasps> Swifty's got multiple lands and a mox. Oh my Lord. Yeah. This, Holy shit. So All hands on deck guys. I do not. I can't see everything that Steven has in his hand. I think that this is going to be a barn burner of a game. This is already set. Oh, that's a, that's a mole. Did I see him? Bottom yeah. He had to mole to six again with the land. Yeah. yeah. Swift Swifty uh, sh- is not uh, based on recent history is not a person who should be here's, putting here's, lands away. Here's what I want to know. Okay. But, and this but is next just a general this, question. this turn, he will be able to uh, mox and then play a, uh, a Teferi, which is a, a very auspicious start, uh, especially because he can pop that Chrome Mox back to Steven's hand and put him down two cards just to have a single freaking artifact. This is just going to be a generalized question for chat, but chat, have we, has every single game that Swifty played so far at some point involved him missing a land drop or having a crucial land come into play tapped where if his Mox was just a basic land card, it would have been better? Mm. No, I mean, Sam against Sam, say. against Sam, having the moxes in there is what won him that game. That's true. The fact that they were artifacts was pretty helpful. Uh, yeah. And the fact that he could search for and one yes. of uh, Ursa Saga. But I'm just saying, when you talk about moxes in that way, they it, sound very it, beta. Swi- sound the, very beta. The, <laughs> I mean, they were, they did, they were released in beta. Uh, well, they, I mean, yes, they were released in beta. They were also released now. What? Shut up. <laughs> Anyways, uh, We've got a Raugrin Triumph coming in, tapped. It's going to untap at the beginning of Swifty's turn. We are going to see a Mox, and then we are going to see a Teferi. Teferi to bounce that and bitch. is the... Oh are we bouncing the Suspicious Stowaway, or are we bouncing the Chrome Mox? Because personally... Well, if you bounce the Stowaway, your Teferi lives. Uh, yep. That can be useful. You know what? I, 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 I will... Agree with that sentiment. Uh, the value is lost, but um, the, the thrill lives on, brother. Okay, and we got three uh, mana coming down. Oh, it's a Dryad of the Lysian Grove, but wait, doesn't Dryad allow you to play an extra land per turn? No. Does okay. it? I think it does. Play an additional land. All right, like so we didn't kn- play an additional so we land. Kn- we know that Steven only land. has heat. He's really good. In the gas, the drops. Holy. All right, that's what I like to hear. You know what? Either that that or sounds it. like it could go very poorly for him, but I believe, I believe in the him that believes in I, us. I believe in a thing called love. Okay, Swifty again going on the offense with his milling, and is he about to miss a land drop? He is no land drop for Swifty yet again. Again. And he bottomed it's one so like a bottom. Brutal. Oh my god! Listen, you can only harp on one stupid thing for so much. But you Get only... down! Oh dear god! <laughs> you can only harp on one solitary fact over and over and over again for four or five hours at a time. So that's what I'm going to keep doing. Yeah. Uh, I so in that. In that situation, like all right, you're not getting a trigger off of Suspicious Stowaway if it kills Teferi. Uh huh. You like he has a Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Well, you didn't know that at that point in time, but like I yeah. still think you take a swipe at the Chrome Mox because you have to exile something in order for it to be effective. You're you're it's like you're strip mining something from them. Yeah, in a, you, in, you almost certainly. Do I, I get I that mean, that it's, I get it's that you have the chance of drawing something to protect yourself or, or something along those lines, but yeah, like he was a he was a land drop away from having Venser, you know, and right. Venser does a really nice job sort of protecting Teferi yeah. and really trying to get a second bounce out of Teferi, which is what you're really right. looking for. Um, I mean, it, well, a second or a third because you know it still acts as a blocker after you've done it, and plus he has Caracas right there, so you can block and then bounce itself. Yeah, 
Blancus uh, Caracas. I think uh, I think Swifty is kind of being undone a little bit by. I mean, listen, he's we can't cast too many aspersions because he does have uh, the supreme judgment in hand, which will is absolutely. Is he not playing Benser at end of turn to bounce Chrome Mox? No, well, Swifty. No, oh no, because he gosh. no, he doesn't want to Why because. Not? Because then he doesn't have the mana to use Caracas to balance his own Vincer to protect it from Supreme Judgment. He wants to keep that combo online. Get All with right. the fucking program, Mason. It's fine, but I really like bouncing people's shit. Well, yeah, but you just, you just, just bounce a land. Oh just do it later. So oh my god, it's not run. It's fine. Uh, Plus, what if you oh, land? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, oh. like, I think Steven's going to realize that this doesn't matter too much now that uh if if Swifty gets a land here he does not <laughs> man i can't believe he bottomed that land that it's turning out to be pretty brutal okay. uh i mean yeah there we're you go kill that guy we're gonna kill the other guy oh kill the chromax do it no kill the chromax oh, come on that's fine i i mean obviously steven is not suffering from okay there we go Ooh, uh, ooh, okay, so the the like getting rid of the Caracas right now is pretty huge zony, but um, it's tough, you know, because on the one hand he's missing so many land what drops was the, he wants to be able to get in his stuff. Oh, it's a questing ooh, beast. Questing beast, that's a nice one. Yeah, so uh, he can bounce this with Vincer all he wants. Uh, Strip mine's going to take care of that Caracas, and you're left with a four four trample that can't be blocked by that Vincer with no way to recurse it. This is very loud out there. It is a five five. <laughs> Wait, doesn't it cost five? Why is he, he only has four mana? Am uh, I missing no, something? No, no, no. It, it's got a miracle cost. You can miracle. Oh, he drew. Okay. Yeah, he yeah, miracled yeah. it off the top, which is fucking nuts. Let's go. I mean, I mean okay. It's not a legend. Uh. Wait, Questing Beast is a legend. Yes. Uh, so if he plays Questing Beast and slams, so if he's just going to block and then mirror. No, he, again. well, he blew that up and he played Urza, so. Yes, That's... which is fine. So Swifty's got an awkward spot right now where he's got Stony Silence to like turn off the Chrome Mox, but the problem is it turns it doesn't off turn Mox. It doesn't turn off Urza. Right, and it also turns off his own Mox. And then you can just use Urza's ability to tap the Chrome Mox for mana. So. Yeah. That's rough. So like the, yeah, the, like the thing. Oh, interesting. Going for the attack, not waiting to waiting back to block the questing beast. That's interesting. Uh, it probably makes a bit of sense though, as you probably don't want to trade. Your I mean, guy you're you're you're, you're at two attacks away from winning, and you are relying on the fact that Steven is mana screwed and has to. I mean, not only does he have to fetch to get this land right now, but his waterlogged grove is. I guess now that he's fetched for that uh, volcanic island, it's less uh, less relevant that his waterlogged grove hurts him. Mm, yeah, right. Uh, oh, wow. Wheeling. So Wheeling is, and dealing. Uh, so this is end of turn, and if I understand Urza correctly, it does not break timing restrictions. I mean, it's just, second, it's just second main phase. Oh, this is a second main phase, Urza. Yep. Oh, okay. My, my mistake. I For some reason, I was thinking that it was... End of turn. Uh, no, that was just first main phase because he hasn't even attacked yet. And oh, he attacks for... I was complete, I, for some, attacks okay. for three or four? Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, just three. And then he can just block with the thought monitor. Beautiful. Okay, we flip the J's right. over. Uh, I'm trying to hit some land drops and here, maybe? It turns out, uh, Prismatic Ending... Not so easy to get rid of a seven mana thought monitor. I it would be okay to get rid of Urza if he could draw any land, like just get a land because I mean I guess I mean, a white source he, really. What he, like he what really needs a white source? I mean you have to absolutely you have to entirely tap out to exile Urza and that doesn't change the clock or anything. You know you have to 
down tick, then your Jace goes away, and like you're just relying on Steven not having any new blockers. I don't think that's a way out of this game. <sighs> I mean, I think it's, you really it's, need it's to get three to eight. It's, board, it's, you know? Wait, oh shit, Steven just took it. He just let the. He's confident. He's confident he's just going to come up with enough blockers from here on in that this, uh, this Miracle Boy is going to matter. Okay, we finally got some lands. Let's go, Swifty. What bottom them. Put, put them both on the bottom. Take a I, chance on the top I card. I also like to live dangerously. I think he's only going to keep <laughs> one. Which is sick thing, because he drew a polluted delta. See, Comet Stellar Pup, there's a burn spell for you. So, uh, last right. game, we saw Comet come down and immediately just dome Steven for five. If that, if that happens again, it's going to be game, my friends. Yep. Will of the Council, nice, coming in clutch, cleaning up that Urza. Maybe this is the point where Swifty turns the game back around. Why, why did he point at that? Uh, he upticked his chase to give it minus two power. Uh, okay. So that seems like that's going to be a blocker. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me if it was Questing Beast coming down now, crashing yep. and uh, hitting Jace for four. Um, which would give uh, Questing Beast and the... Does it in a chance to kill Jace? Well, because well, I mean, technically, <laughs> um, actually, uh, the questing beast would attack uh, Swifty and then deal four to Swifty and then deal four to Jace in response because um, it has an ability that allows whatever damage it does to that player to deal it to a planeswalker that he or she controls. I believe. Um, that is the text on Questing Beast. Anyway, it doesn't <laughs> fucking matter because he plays a dumb other card. I don't give a shit. I have to pee now. All right, have fun. Uh, we see the Mightstone and Weakstone coming down. And I gotta say, I'm still really skeptical about this card, but hey, why not? Look, it's gonna do the job and kill the 5-5. Five five. So Swifty will put all of his stuff back and we will see when it comes up somewhere in the next six cards for another miracle. Steven, however... Uh, at this point, just needs to needs to live, ride to live, and live to ride. You know, um, Swifty looking like he's got some options now. At this point, Swifty really just needs to float through a few more damage. Uh, he's got he's got Comet in his hand. It looks like uh, hard to tell, but uh, he's got the Jace ticking up in a way. Steven's checking out his phone, looking for something. Oh, tapping the water log grow for mana, going down to two life. Questing Beast comes down. How many creatures is going to attack with? If he attacks with too much stuff, Comet might come down and threaten to make two hasty creatures and be even more dangerous. We'll see about that. See if I can adjust my mic here at all. Okay. <sighs> Swifty so deep in the tank, trying to figure out what his next move is going to be. Land play for turn. Another fetch. Considering his options, and he passes. Doesn't want to run out Comet. Wants I'm, to keep up. I'm no, really glad. Not is that the pig again? Did he board in pig again? <sighs> Why? I can't tell. I don't. It looks like it. Why? What is it good for? Is it just like war? What is it good for? It's Absolutely nothing. That's a great point. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you, Mister Curry. A little done though. Are you related to Tim Curry? Yep. Nice. That's dope. Yeah. That's why you guys look so similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yep. He's a great actor. My dad got to work with him before. Oh. Yeah. Neat, neat stuff. All right. We're hitting him with the strip mine. Is that what's going on here? How do we get the strip mine? Oh, Crucible Worlds for the strip mine. Oh, man. That Yikes. could actually That could actually be the truth. And the the way truth, the, the truth, down. the light, and the way getting rid of his red mana source. 
Oh. Uh oh. He's gonna have to find a way here. And I have to find the Vincer. I mean, Vincer, does it, is it target permanent? Or is it target non-land permanent? Oh, wait, because uh, the Yashurn says you can't sacrifice shit. Does it have flash? It does not, but it could potentially come down next turn and protect and pre- Swifty and, from yeah, and keep, unlock. Uh, which possible, also puts this... Puts this comet coming down at an additional plus three turns from when it was able to be played for the first time, or uh, reasonably able to be played for the first time. Uh oh! And that guy caught a removal spell real quick. What? Dylan beats Dan, bringing the Chicago Jeez, crew. Dan is getting fucking bodied. Dan is getting absolutely annihilated. Is Dan zero four? Such a shame. I think he might be zero four against the same uh, against the Chicago crew. Well, no, That's one of one of those uh, losses against Sam. Oh, okay, okay. And he also lost to Jeff, I think. So it's he's he's zero two against Chicago as of right now, I think. But we'll we shall see. Who who gotcha. who fucking knows? Well, I think Noah played against him also, but I'm not sure. Uh, Dan. Oh shit! Dan has played six of his matches. Damn, Dan is having a rough day today. You Damn, know what, Daniel. Um, I respect him as a man and a player. All right, I'll say that much. And the last time I got a dub ski here, it was only because Dan's incredible infect play was able to crush the nearly un un Ind- indefistible. Light. Ooh, Swifty peels, and it's no good. Stephen Hagen takes down the match, Yikes. bringing him to one wow. and two. Stephen up to two and two, and the 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 plot thickens the soup thickens gentlemen the, the booyah base has settled into an in iridescent gelatinous blob <laughs> in iridescent even huh okay all right i like it um <clears throat> we've got noah and blyden on deck i know they've been waiting for a little while but that's yep. cool we're excited to see them get in there and play all right so yeah dan is 1 in 5 uh so I guess Sam, I, Sam is probably in the middle of one of her matches. Um, I think that it spells trouble if uh, she is still one and two because I do not think that games go that long are in her favor. <laughs> uh, just looking at the deck lists. Yeah, um, uh, but I she can't disagree with that. Yeah, she may be waiting a little bit just to uh, get back on camera against some of the other people. Um, so yeah, Dan is just cruising through these matches, and uh, he's having a hard time. Uh, you know, with a slower combo deck like the one that he's packing, I have a feeling he's having an issue where he's either being outsped or he's being interacted with too much. Um, uh, you know, I there is you can't take away from the fact that it can just be really bad luck. Like you can it, just it, be getting really it, bad it draws, be. and, and Dan uh, because is, like against Sam. You, you saw against Swifty where, uh, you know, Swifty got, at least in game one, got the crushing draw against her uh, where, you know, picking up the Mox and the next turn getting the Mox yeah. and then I can get a Teferi here of Dominaria down. Like, that's 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 pretty brutal. Um, and, you know, from what Sam described to me of her match with Dan, she just, she put out a contamination and he's done. Yeah. Right. And, uh, okay, goodbye. Yeah, and then no, after I, no and then joke, after that, Dan, Dan could just be having a, a bad yeah. run today. You know, usually, usually at these kinds of things, it's not crazy to see one person who strings together a nice run, like uh, an above yeah. expectation performance, and to see somebody like un- unfortunately just not have the matches break their way. That's magic. It's a game we all play. You know, it's a it's, yeah. a it's a relatively high variance kind of endeavor. We're not playing chess here, okay? Let's yeah. let's be honest. Correct. Chad beats Sam in two. Chad clutching up some victories. Let's go. Um, I'm just going to take this time to call out Chad for being the least experienced member of our crew. Uh, He is the only one of us that's never really traveled to play competitive magic uh, in any in any real capacity. I think he played in a GP once. I want to say a limited one, maybe. You know what? I was about to say that I have never, I have played magic after traveling. Mm. Not as a primary focus, mm. uh, but then I was like, "Oh wait, there was a period between 2017 and 2018 when I, 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 I went to Phoenix, I went to Dallas. Uh, actually, to be fair, 
when I went to Dallas, that was for a Carly Rae Jepsen concert that also happened to be at the same time as a uh, ah. GP. Oh, uh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, I got fucking trashed. It was amazing. I loved it. Uh, and guess what? Turns out Boggles uh, was really good against Hogak when that was still around. Mm. I had a yeah. Mm-hmm. I had a. I had a. You know what I lost to though? Huh? Lantern Control. Oh God, that deck was an abomination yeah. in its nature. Jeez. Agreed. All right. Noah Chicago. trying to continue his <laughs> undefeated streak. He does not think he has a very good matchup against Mr. Blyden. Blyden coming in, feeling yes. great about his deck and ready to rock and roll. Will Noah be able to put on enough pressure? It's been a long time since he I says he roll. doesn't have enough interactive pieces. I say, you've got Thought Knots here, baby. That's all you need, okay? You ask your opponent, did you think you were going to win? Thought not. Ugh, you slam it on the table. Yeep. Also, Noah had a perfect opportunity to draft Bonfire of the Dam today, and he specifically didn't do it. And I want you to know it's because he hates you, the people at home, okay? He said, and I quote, no, it's I want to have the least entertaining matches possible to make the, the folks at home who are tuning in to watch and suffer. Okay, That's a fact. That's a verbatim quote. Yep, I wasn't there, but uh, I tuned in uh, via my listening devices that I have everywhere. Oh my god, is that why you kept uh, making all those weird noises when you were staying in your Airbnb yesterday? Yeah. Oh my god. Absolutely. Well, I mean, no, I just make those weird noises naturally, Good. but... Uh, oh god. Yeah, no, it's a, that's it's a, we, it's a real that's medical issue. Do. Oh, jeez. I should call Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo MD. He went to Medicine University. <laughs> that's important. Yeah. All right, we got it. Who won the die roll? Did you see? Uh, it was one of them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's, it's not going to matter. Whichever one plays chat. the land first. Chat. Who won the dice roll? Yes, that's important. We need to get more chat. If you lie, here. we'll ban so you. I, I don't know how to do we that. We can't afford to ban anyone. We need the viewers. Uh, shut up. Don't oh, let wait. them. Don't let them know that they have power. <laughs> they the have, union have, makes us strong. Have no, they have no power. The whole chat is just in telling me that I'm a Listen, jackass. Listen, don't let labor don't let labor exploitation convince. <laughs> you have the power. Rise up. Revolt against your overlords. Exactly. If every Twitch uh, viewer just rose up to crush all the Twitch streamers, <laughs> you know, really well, at the end of the day, monorail, monorail. monorail. All right. So, uh, we are starting off with a juicy Ragavan. And this, uh, honestly, this probably spells, I don't want to say disaster, but, like, Ragavan is a card that Jeff just, like, does not want to see. No, this is, because, this is definitely Noah's best Oh, card. Ooh, and I mean, he's this forced, isn't so bad, He's though. forced this is, this is to okay. path to exile. Yeah, this is okay. Like, Noah still wants to accelerate into those four or five mana threats, so um, he's probably not feeling too bad about this, assuming that Jeff doesn't have anything yeah, crazy. But, Jeff's so, combo deck is not the fastest. Noah, if Noah has any interaction, he will be able to deploy it, presumably. Uh, the problem that uh, Ragavan poses to Jeff's deck is very similar to the problem that Noah's deck poses. Is it Noah's deck? It is more Ooh. like Swifty's deck. Listen, out of the ways that Noah can apply pressure, this has got to be at the pretty and much top he, tier. When he, when he came one. in here in between rounds, he's like, yeah, you know, I just don't know if I'm going to play Stoneforge Mystic. And I'm like, bitch, you fucking better. <laughs> How does he say shit like that? Oh, my God. Uh, listen, there, we got a lot of uh, we got a lot of basic bitches who play this format. You I know, guess so. some people oh just God. don't like getting five five haste indestructible exile all your goddamn shit stuff. I guess and, so. It's weird. You'd oh think, my you, God! You'd think more people. Would oh do my that. God! A stone forge. See, I feel personally responsible for this play that just happened because both of those cards may not have been in his main board were it not for my. It, my Genius sage advice and tutelage. Yeah. How so brutal. what are you doing, Mason? You're supposed to be their coach, and yet I'm the one I, who's coaching I, I, this motherfucker to a 4-0 and o potentially. All these card, I'll be very clear. All of these cards were on his list, okay? <laughs> uh, and who kept them there? You're welcome. That's a great point. You're wel- I mean, this is, actually oh, oh really brutal, this is actually a really brutal situation for Jeff, though, right? I mean, yes, yes. It's, like, this is, this the is, this is nasty. Down, pings the... I mean, it's like... Did it not It's It's a clock. The, 
Wait, no, he, it didn't, no, he couldn't. He couldn't. Oh, he didn't have the land drop. He wanted okay. to get the uh, Renin Six down, and he didn't have a land in hand, so he brought back the Wooded Fortress. That's honestly not too bad because the pressure of Renin Six going to try to kill uh, Mom Listen, should Mom, generally Mom can, stop it from being too useful. For uh, I mean, like, here's the thing: is it still has Trample, and then it just goes from a four turn clock to a five turn clock. But well, also, I just mean like you can always uh, just ping it to basically tap it down for right. the rest of the for the rest of the day. So. Um, but you also don't need to because you can just ping them for one damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, because otherwise, it doesn't matter. We're, Jeff is in a tight spot. It's good that he got rid of the Ragavan because the Ragavan exiles cards from the top of his library and a theoretical weakness, but also just like a practical weakness of Jeff's deck is that it is very tight. And if he loses any of the 40 card, like, you know, any of the four out of the 40 cards that he needs to set up his combo, like whether it's intuition, whether it's dread return, whether it's uh dick shitter in core, it doesn't matter. Like it's, it is fragile and vulnerable in that particular regard. Like cephalid illusionist with, if that gets just, Hey, off the top, Ragavan eat my butt. Yep, Yikes. Yep, yep, yep. That is, you know what? Quote me. Quote him on it. All right, we're pinging something. I'm imagining it's going to be mom for one damage. Yeah. What? Uh, so we've got the cephalid illusionist on board. I can see the little the flagellum. Well, I can see the flagella. Mm-hmm. I you know, I'm focusing on one of the specific flagellum, not right. of the flagella. Spe- fl- yeah, of course, of course. That's the plural. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Indeed. So. Um, yeah, I. I mean, obviously you have to make the best play here. Mm-hmm. I would not expect Jeff to make the worst play, which, in my opinion, would be to give the Cauldra complete protection from blue. That seems bad. You just have to, if you are a giver of runes, you just have to be able to target your opponent's stuff, and then you can target the germ, and they get protection from artifacts. That's a genius play. Uh, well, you'd have to make it protection from colorless. What did I say? Artifacts. Same difference. It's not. Pretty close. There's artifacts that are not colorless. Yeah, and there are not artifacts that are colorless. What do you, what do you want to say? Well, yeah. those aren't attached to Cauldra Complete germ tokens. Uh, you're not attached Frickin to... Frickin' idiot! Oh, oh man. Man. yeah, <laughs> this Liba is... And getting the stomp off on the Sephalid Illusionist... So he did get some free value, though. And as we know, just because this is going to his graveyard does not mean that it is down for the count. Um, um, Jeff has plenty of ways to, re- to return his stuff back to the uh, battlefield. This However, so my God, Noah is literally just putting in so much pressure. Yeah, that, this is some hot, hot one path, like really just Noah making maximum use of the mana. This is some turn. red, red wine. Noah not attacking with the Stoneforge Mystic feels like a little bit of a mistake. Uh, oh, not just kidding. He wow. Is with it. Mason. <laughs> Freaking idiot. It's because he could hear me. <laughs> I'm, a I'm a genius. Um, well, that's collusion, and you're disqualified. Ah, too bad I can't be disqualified. I'm actually not even here. This is a pre-recorded message. This whole thing. It, honestly, it, ruse... it's incredible. This is incredibly impressive. I don't know. I mean, I'm not talking to you. You can't feel. Did you pre have your ego inflated by saying how impressive this pre-recorded message was? Exactly. That is the case. Yes. This whole thing. Damn. Is, you're you good. actually just called my voicemail. This whole thing has been anyway to leave a message after the beep. Beep. <laughs> Taste my farts, nerd. Oh my god. Yeah, just so just, just getting fucked this round. <laughs> Let's go to game two. Jeff is kind of I mean there's there's no over here. I mean like, holy shit. There's like, no Noah was on the play, right? And got pathed and has just tapped out for these insane so, like, pressure plays even, and return. E- okay, so even if Jeff like Jeff has enough to do a two mana return to the ranks thing right now, like he can't there's no getting a Thassa's Oracle into the library and targeting everything a billion times, right? There's no... So, oh. I don't think... So. It doesn't look to Grand me like there are ways that he could combo now. Okay, he's playing the Oracle. He knows he's got to play the Oracle as a blocker. 
um, which is a rough one. Okay, well, but no, but that's not that's not true because he can still return to the ranks, everybody, and if he's yeah. able to get a nomad in core into the graveyard, then he can target Cephalid Illusionist a billion freaking mm, times only. So, so basically, yes, nomad in core doesn't cost the same. Uh, he's not using return to the ranks. He's using rally the ancestors. He doesn't have return to the ranks, does he? No, Whatever. So. You know okay. what I meant. I, I did know what you mean, but Rally the Ancestors will only get his two drops. It won't get a one drop. So he needs to like have the Nomad and Core in hand and Rally the Ancestors for two yeah. or whatever. Oh, but it doesn't matter. Noah has another giant hasty threat. My God. The Reality Smasher coming in from the top rope. Let's go. The power. The power Holy of Minsk and Boo uh, tribal is just too strong. I've talked a lot about the Eldrazi creatures of shit? over the years. Yeah. Uh, and how utterly dominant they are in the Chicago VRD meta. How seemingly the Eldrazi mid-range player seems to win an alarmingly high amount of the time. Uh, and Noah just showing off the sheer power of big hasty idiots. And I, that's a that's a topic Brandon big fan of with his questing beast. I um, love big hasty idiots. Yeah. They're very um, very good. As a matter of fact, I think it was actually it was kind of funny. Uh, I remember one of the first conversations I had about VRD in the Discord, I think, and Brandon was talking about how good the mechanic haste is. It's really fucking good. Uh, and at the time, I thought it was such a silly thing to say, like low key, you know, no offense. I, I thought to myself, I'm like. He, that's like saying, wow, like, first strike sure is good in combat, you guys. Holy shit. Like, yeah, like, what do you mean? Like, haste is good. But then, you know, you sit here and you play and you're like, man, haste is pretty fucking good. <laughs> like, I'm not... Sh- gonna I'm, kill everything. I'm Holy not shit. fucking around, man. I meant it. <laughs> like, just having a deck... Like, having a deck built around haste... See, this is what I'm fucking talking about, man. Like, this that's this card, this card would have been perfect in... Uh, Dan's deck. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. This would have been an interesting way. Like, just have a bunch of shitty little elves out, uh-huh. yeah. and then you can channel into this, and it's still just a cast trigger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you just swing and kill them with, with this. Great, do it. Do it more. Yeah. Yep. Can't argue with that. Uh, it's also a cast trigger, so even if they counter it, you still get to hammer That it. is exactly what I just said. That's exactly what I just said. I said it's a, I said it's a cast. You know what? Shut up. So it's fine. Never mind. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, Sphere of the Night. There's a hasty creature. Wait, is it actually? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's unaffected by summoning sickness. That's different, actually, because if you make it lose haste, uh, it won't affect it. It's got. It's, That's it's not that. That is arid. It is arid to have haste. Uh, I don't know how you could possibly edit or errata. Derek by beautiful summon legend. Uh, wait, wait, so is the Erita for uh, Spirit of the Night, is it a spirit or is it a... Um, it's actually a knight. It's a knight. K-N-I-G-H-G. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not. All right. Noah with the turn one Ragavan again, but this time Jeff plays the Nomad Encore. So, you know, the tricky part about this is you can trade Ragavan off with the Nomad and you're like fairly happy about that. But again, because it's just in the graveyard and... Jeff really does have such access to it. Um, it's going to still be threatening for the rest of the game. However, Noah, with the double mana land, playing Lelia, trades off, gets him for three. Jeff's under pressure. What's he going to do? Noah looks like he's got a nice handful Demon of Demon I believe that was a wasteland that I saw. Oh, land. shit. Ooh, interesting. So, Pro. unfortunately, Lelia is going to outsize this. Um, he does not have trample. He does not have trample. You so, know, you so know what? You know what? Trading. Lelia has a keyword of mm. looks like trample. There's there's a lot of cards that look like they have flying, which is the worst keyword. Mm. But looks like they have trample is just as nasty sometimes. Yeah, I would say so. Ooh, okay. So this is actually quite interesting. So Noah already had the wasteland in hand. Yeah, that looks like uh, it has and flying. And now he whippoorwill. It's also it's no will of the wisp either. Weep of will. We'll wisp your willows. Yeah, get wrecked, nerd. Uh, so I'm thinking Noah wants to play Trinisphere this turn. That's kind of see- seems like what he was setting up here. Yep. And he does. Okay, he says, Jeff, I want you to be on 
a gentleman's one spell per turn for a while, please. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, I know Noah is hoping that he plays a non-basic land here so that he can start trying to strip mine. He doesn't uh, have strip mine, so that would be difficult. He has wasteland, sorry. So I know he's wants he? to Where? waste in is his it? hand. Um, so he's got the wasteland. He obviously wants to loop some uh, wasteland red and six action. Yeah, TNN kind of does it all, you know? Really, really carries I mean, a lot of water. Honestly, as long as you have three basics and Trinisphere's out, I mean, you're ticking up your Ren and Six, but honestly, like, who gives a shit? Um, yeah, I mean, that's probably fair. That makes sense. If Jeff needs that mana, like, he can just swing in on the Ren and Six, I guess. And is that... That's not intuition, is it? He just paradigm shifted to exile his library. So he's going to untap and... So he is threatening to untap and, and play Thassa's. Thassa's Oracle and win the game. Yeah. And unfortunately... The trigger Noah, just happens. Yeah, the trigger just happens. I think yeah. Jeff, Jeff's Jeff got this one. Uh, it Block. would appear so. It would appear so. Such. Um, he can wasteland to take out one of the lands, but also still doesn't have help. Three mana. So, assuming that Jeff did not just commit honorable Sudoku, uh, I would imagine he has the Thoracle in his hand. Seven. That's how you commit honorable Sudoku. Why do you say seven? Because it's like a good slashing number. Oh, interesting. I always like to do a three. That's too many. That's too many curves. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, you have bones in there. It's Stop. more. It's more honorable Ooh. that way. No, it's not honorable. It's just impractical. Stop. You're you're not that talented. Four, five. Looking for something, anything. Doesn't look like he's found anything. Can you grab a sword of fire and ice off of once upon a time? Yeah, it seems really unlikely. It doesn't matter, but. Uh, Yep, he's scooping. Yeah. Yep. That's the game. Uh, all right. Uh, rebound air cheese. Go to game three. For a nice, clean game two. Noah put a lot of pressure on the board. Was not quite enough to outpace. <coughs> Was not quite enough to outpace. Derek, that's disgusting. Um, that our, a our AI disgusting. robot just learned how to... Uh, burp real loud. You know, I used to do a podcast with some friends of mine. It was all about cube drafting. Um, mm. We had a cube podcast. It was super cool. Loved it. I think we made like 15 episodes or something. Cute uh, cast. And uh, one of our friends, one of the hosts of the show, it was me, my friend Josh, my friend Alec. Alec used to just randomly burp I, and all the time. But like when we were recording, he would specifically burp really loudly, like sort of into the microphone. And he kind of thought it was funny. And Was it? The rest of us. Uh, I... I Sure, why not? You know, sure, it's funny. It wasn't. Um, Spoiler alert. Okay, it wasn't. Uh, everyone who listened to the podcast would usually say something along the lines of, I really enjoyed the podcast. It's really fun to hear you guys talk. Uh, I really dislike it when Alec just burps into the microphone. That is probably whoever the fault of whoever is editing it beyond uh, We fault. did zero editing. Well, we would, so we recorded you're, it on my... You're trying to put together a multimedia experience <laughs> and you don't even bother editing? So, so Audacity the, the is only free. Thing the only thing that would happen was uh, my friend Josh uh, would record the whole thing on his cell phone. Just we would all sit around the table and talk on his cell phone. Jesus Christ. However, and I'm not even joking with you guys. I don't know if it was like the, the glass table that it was set on. I, I don't know if it was just his phone was out of this world. I'm telling you the audio was fucking pristine. Dean. I mean, it was. People would ask us all the time what kind of equipment we were using to record. Yeah, no. Since, like, if we were in a studio, what kind of mics we used. Like, and Josh would always just say, "Like, bro, it's literally just it's my since phone. <laughs> since 2016, the audio quality of like just like recording like voice memos has been impeccable. Uh, like, this is we're sitting here using a Rodecaster Pro, and there are definitely certain advantages to that. <laughs> Uh, you know, multiple mic setups, like you can cancel out certain audio streams. You can mute things very effectively. This motherfucker was like $1,200. Jesus. Uh, well, you know, but, one of, 
Oh, you know, sorry, the, you know, the you can mimic this quality <laughs> by just having a phone, which, to be fair, is also twelve hundred dollars. But I don't right. know anybody yeah, who has a Rodecaster Pro and not a phone. <laughs> That's a great point. That's a good point. I mean, I, there's probably some broke musician out there somewhere or something, you know? Uh, nerd. Sure. Who's to say? It's a mystery. Shut up, Mark. No one cares. Mark, uh, a real quick question in between games here. I just want to get it in. Uh, I was just looking in the stream and I was collecting my channel points. I don't see the option for cashing in my channel points to... Uh, I'll do some shit. Get Mark to I'll do get a shot real on wild. camera. I'll, I'll get... Buck wild, buck nasty. Is that we brought some malort? Can we get you to do like a? Oh, malort you Chicago shot people and your uh, malort. I didn't do it. God damn it, Derek. Derek dropping shit again. Fuck. This this AI really needs work on. I agree. Being, being All right, good. enough channel points, and we will go do a whole office space on Mark Derek the robot. Okay, hold on. Beat the can, shit out. They're they're getting set up. Can you switch to the caster cam? Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> This is filled with water. I filled it up twice today. Cheers. 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 All right, mulligan's happening. We got to turn one. What did put it? Oh, and Noah's got the mana crypt. Let's go. He's got the beats. How... He's got the beats. I don't know how He's many. He's got the beats. I don't know how many mana crypts uh, he has played on turn one so far, but uh, I haven't God, seen any. What an animal. We went back and forth on this for a while. I've uh, seen him bottom it due to either Once Upon a Time or uh, Ancient Stern. He doesn't have Ancient Strings. Whatever. He Natural should have Ancient Strings. Ant God damn it. Well, you know, that's that's his own fault. Oh, okay. So oh, the turn yikes. Layla flipped over so that the is Karn. that is a Karn that goes away. It's not so bad. Abundant Actually, Harvest. for like, the Thank first you. time ever, Jeff's not playing a deck that's particularly artifact heavy. So. Well, you know, I, I had no idea. <laughs> oh, I'm playing an ice of isle. That's my impression of Jeff. It's really spot on. As soon as I say that, he plays the like one artifact in the deck. It's beautiful. I love it. Nice job. See. Oh my god, Noah's got yeah. the min skin boot. This game's just over, right? I mean, no, holy it, I mean it's it's shit. it's close. This is Okay, wait, wait, wait. I take that back. Jeff could just win on his turn. <laughs> uh he could certainly play. Um, he could vial in his one drop, he could play his two drop, and then just brrr, win the game on the spot, right? Well, he his vial has to tick up. Which it will when he untaps. I, to one. Yes. So he can vial in the one drop, yeah, play but he the can't, two drop. He can't, and then he doesn't have a, he can't cast his Thassa's Oracle. He doesn't need to. He'll mill his whole deck, put Narcomeve into play, and then dread return it. Assuming that none of those I thought you have to, hand. oh, wait. All right, that makes sense to me now. There is a bit of a lag, and there is a cacophonous. It sounds, it sounds like there's some uh, some screaming outside. I might be screaming. He, oh, he has Oracle. Okay, Jeff has so. said, "I was gonna get you next turn," but he has the Oracle in hand, which means he can't mill his entire deck. Can't dread return from hand, yeah. So unfortunately, the mill my entire deck of dread return stuff only works if he doesn't have any of the combo pieces in hand. He needs just the illusionist and just the but uh, farts the nomad. But Double. Noah, Noah with the turn one Layla, turn two Minskin Boo. Wait, 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 wait. Layla doesn't have trample, and so he's at ten life. He can aether vial in the the one drop to block the Lelia and do the rest of it on his turn, right? Um, you know they are certainly figuring it out. Uh, it's possible maybe he doesn't have both combo pieces. Uh, because I'm sure if he did, he could just play them both, mill almost his entire library. And then just, you know, untap, draw, and play Thoracle. I I don't. I'm sure that's I, I not don't, the case. I, I don't know that. Have... I don't know that he's lost yet. Like, this does. Uh, this obviously doesn't look good. But at the same time, like, wait, what is he, what is he rolling? Rolling for, for mana crypt to see if he takes damage. 
He okay, should let's just see. He you just have yet another it. large idiot, Noah. I mean, uh, I... actually, so Noah actually has a burn spell in hand, so he can just attack okay, with so both just... creatures. The hamster will hit for four. He can fling it for four and then stomp for two more. Okay, lethal that way too. So yeah. That hamster is stupid. Stupid fucking awesome. Let's go. You know what? You. I'm, it makes more sense now that you signed off on this because it may be stupid, but it is, uh, Minskin it's Boo is actually ex- acceptably stupid. Yeah. Minskin Boo is dominating legacy right now. It's like so fucking good. What do you play it with? Uh, you basically just play it in like rug or four color or five color piles of like good cards and it's just like you know you play like brainstorms and pyroblasts and counter spells and force wills and shit and just just kill them with minskin boo or you All play right. it in a dark depths deck so that you can make a 2020 and then just fling it at their face ouch yeah it's it's dope yelp and that's the game! Let's go, Noah! Yeah, good good work, Noah. Woo! This is some real goddamn unprofessional fucking work from our other co-host or, or whatever over here. Uh, me, on the other hand, am... I am... I've got it tightened up! Acting completely reasonable. I have to put up with this shenaniganery. It's really, frankly, disrespectful to the institution that is Magic of the Gathering and to my time and your freedom as Americans and people from other countries. Anyways, uh, that was a very good game. Um, we got to see of, like that, that Minsk and Boo is indeed very powerful, uh, that a four-drop uh, Planeswalker... Ouch! That hurts. Um, and uh, it did still show us that Jeff's deck is is incredibly resilient, but that, you know, Mana Crypt is a first-round pick for a reason. And, uh, you know, you couple it with just... With, with the right uh, hasty boys, and uh, you get it popping. So I'd like to take this opportunity to reiterate my previous arguments about how much better Mana Crypt is than Soul Ring, because people like to argue this all the time, and they're super wrong and dumb and make bad arguments. Um, But Mana Crypt... So Soul Ring is a turn one play. Mana Crypt facilitates turn one plays. And when you are accelerating your mana as much as those cards do, uh, your colored mana pips... Um, become a really valuable resource. You, you can't make as much of them as you're going to make colorless mana. So Mana Crypt facilitating a three drop on turn one, after that, they're both going to make the same amount of mana every single turn. So just get your Mana Crypt in. There's no reason to pick Soul Ring, guys. Yeah, Mana Crypt, is, the, Mana Crypt is demonstrably <laughs> better than Soul Ring. The last time we I played one of these, I'm pretty sure I played Brandon in round one. And I'm pretty sure I lost like six mana crypt flips in a row and put myself at two life. How do you think this was against me? I think I think it was against you, wasn't it? Didn't we? Play Listen, that? it Didn't doesn't play matter. I, I throw all my games against you, so I don't have to. I don't have to worry. I know that my competition uh, to get into the finals is elsewhere. All Too right, funny. I don't give a shit. Too funny. All right, we got Chadley on the left with his new tree. See, it's so convenient when people pick partners because then I just can identify who they are. I don't have to look at their hands like I do, though. I mean, you don't know your friend's hands? How, why do you know your friend's hands so well? Well, uh, I, think hands. It's, I think it's pretty easy to identify Sam's and Jeff's. <laughs> and then it's really only a challenge to identify the difference between Stephen and Dan. I... <laughs> cannot imagine why it would be easy to identify Jeff's hands. I'll be honest. I well, actually, I actually cannot. Uh, <laughs> because he wears a watch. Okay, sure, Brandon. Yeah, Jesus. and because he's always checking his ding dang phone. Oh, that's a good point. He does do that a lot. I actually really haven't been on my phone a lot today. I wonder if people are blowing me up. <laughs> Just kidding. No, of course. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean, huh? <laughs> let me know, just hold on. Let me decommission. Oh my god, plot. more text okay. messages? Jeezy, crazy. Why does everybody want to talk to me? Oh, people 
got packages shipped to my house and are asking if they can pick them up. That's fine. I'm more than my address, people. Anyways, we've got right, someone now, who isn't Chad versus someone who is Jeff. Um, and I know that because of the ring, because of the marriage. So now we have to be concerned with what if Noah, after putting in very little work, happens to be the first 7-0 in this, game, in this draft. Uh, Louis I mean, wouldn't that be exciting with his Minsk and Boo combo? Uh, it is very difficult to intentionally three win three matches in a row. Uh, it is. It it's is. once you've already done it. I mean, like if you look at a tournament and you look and like you have somebody who's four and zero, oh, that's one thing because there's like getting to three and zero oh is a byproduct of having everybody play matches right yeah uh and so getting to four and oh is kind of a a coin flip yep once you uh once you're already there that that chad is three and one holy his deck did not look like it was performing against uh steven so man the fact that he has banged off three wins already is nice Good job, Chadley. Do we know who he's played? He played Steven. Do we know who else? Dan, I assume. Yeah, Dan. He played, of course. Dan, unfortunately, just an ATM today. Just giving, a, giving him away. Uh, Noah did say the only reason he was able to beat Dan was because Dan didn't know what Calder did and therefore made a, a bit of a misplay. Which really harkens me back to the last time I had to beat Dan in a soup. match. And it only Text worked soup. because he cheated. I got a game win for it. Ha 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 ha. Uh, what? Oh, he just, uh, when he went to Windfall, he put his, like, graveyard in his deck or something. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> that's that's not how that card works. Yeah, so it was like, oh, you get to look through his deck and pick, like, seven cards and put them in his graveyard. And he was playing, like, a fragile storm deck, so I just put every card that did anything into his graveyard, and it's just like, oh. <clears throat> Fair enough. Well, that sucks. Yeah, close one. Uh, Get Jeff wrecked. leads off with the Aether Vial, and I can't tell what that tapped thing is. It's too glary. I can't see. Uh, it looks like a magic card. Yeah, it's rectangular for sure. No way to tell what it is. Um, yeah. Couldn't tell you. Uh, Don't know. Something, I'm sure. I'll figure it out eventually. And we got a Bowmat Career coming in, putting a second card underneath. Time Vault. It's Time Vault. Okay, hey, let's keep, that. keep doing the play-by-play. Play. I'll be your, be your Okay, Brandon tells me to do the play-by-play. Play. Huh, don't you know we haven't been doing play-by-play play this entire goddamn yeah, day? Holy oh, shit. Uh, Chad coming in. I'll just, I'll try to do my best Cedric Phillips impression, okay? Chad gonna rifle through his hand very quickly. Uh, checking it out. Jeff plays a Flooded Strand very quickly and passes over to Chad, who's going to tap his lands at the end of turn very quickly and play a braze, uh, Petty Theft to return Aether Vial on two back to Jeff's hand. Jeff has no activation prior, and Chad's going to move to his turn, untapping all of his cards very quickly. He's going to draw a card. And uh, plays his uh, one lander attacks. When Bowmat Courier was spoiled, I had originally said that, to me, it looked like a combination Lava Spike Ancestral Recall. And every time a third card goes under it, I just think that I was right. Ugh. Hello! <coughs> no. It's okay, Derek keeps knocking stuff over. That's yeah, right. up. How's it going, Steven? Oh, it's going all right. How's yeah. it going in here? It's going great. We uh, we just got to see Noah clutch up a tight win against Mr. Jeff Blyden. Yeah, those were I was playing next um, to it. I was losing to Bitter Blossom right next to it. So ooh, rough stuff. How did your how did your guys match go? Uh, no, I lost to Sam. I like nice. like game one. She uh, she was on one land, but I was totally flooded, mm -hmm. and she just beat me down with Bitter Blossom tokens. And then game two, I turned to Blight Steeled her, and nice. then That's game three. Um, she, I had a solid hand, uh, but uh, she hemmed and hit the Seed of Synod in Pinted Prism, and it wrecked my mana, and I had never got above a third land until it was too late, and I can't deal with the Bitter Blossom, and she just, again, bittered me down like like the old days. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, so I'm 2-3, 2-1 um, versus Chicago, but 
Nice. Good job. I, I saw that you had picked up a couple wins against our boys. Yeah, so the two nice camera job. matches. So. Nice job, nice job. Yeah, you uh the way you made Chad's deck look when you guys <laughs> played, I was like, Oh, that's gonna go badly. And then he comes back and he's three and one. I was like, Oh my god, wait, he's, yeah. he's banging off wins. All right, I'll take it. Um so very nice choice. Has that man ever remembered a death right chan- uh, dragon rage channeler trigger in his life? I uh, no. swear. Ooh, yeah. No. <laughs> that's rough. That's rough. See, that's why you play Delver. Yeah. Okay, and it looks like Jeff time has time mode. Yeah, yeah. So he Jeff's got key. Mode. I just don't know why Chad didn't concede to it outright. I guess he was waiting. I think he did. I think he would just show it basically. And gotcha, gotcha. Oh, sure, sure, he sure. He had the sorry. key and then he dropped the bolt. Uh, I so. makes sense, makes sense. Nice job. Well, Jeff takes that W down. Chadley at the three and one, uh, yeah. trying to hold on. Yeah, Chad's so, there solid. I, there was a couple like uh, he probably should have had that Balmore, the one we talked about during the preview show, the one that yeah. gives uh, all your guys plus one zero and trample every time yes. you cast a non creature. Yeah, absolutely. like he just had. I think he needed to go more in on the pyro, pyro plan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that. That uh, like, I don't think. I mean, I've said it before. I actually don't think Dragon Rage is good in this format. So. Yeah, I haven't played it. I suspect it's quite good, but I, I have don't. I've never been impressed by it, by anyone that's played it. And I've played against it a lot. So it gets drafted all, all the time online. I've seen it here. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. It's like Delver. Also, a Delver's not good. I mean. Yeah, me and Brandon were going back and forth on that a little bit. I think it's not bad. I think it's just. I mean, you, you don't have enough. I mean, he's got a decent amount of ways to flip it, but you're not flipping it super reliably. It's. You know, it's not fast enough. I will say anything that Delver can do, I feel like you can probably get a better version of. Right. You know, I don't think there's any reason to play Delver when you have much better options. Right. Um, I mean, I think if you want those little guys, I, I think you want more of the pyro and the go wide. Or like, like Dragon Sprite's really good because it just gets bigger consistently. So. Yes, absolutely. Everyone was kind of commenting on your guys' match that Chad wasn't using the Sensei's top mm-hmm. and flipping it on top every turn to just play a free spell right. or play a one-man spell every turn. Yeah. Um, and grow his Sprite Dragon, which we thought maybe could have given him a relevant blocker. Yeah, no, I, yeah, it definitely could have. That's good, man. I, I mean, he ended up ended up losing out. I mean, he he traded off with something pretty big with it anyway. He like double traded with it against uh, Questing Beast. Yeah, but, yeah, so that's fair. He had to use it and something else. Uh, it and Vendalian, I think. Ah, uh, yes, Vendalian Click. Everybody loves Vendalian Click. I was a little disappointed. Um, I don't know if he's gotten to get anybody with Hole Breacher plus Vendalian Click yet. I don't know. Um, think so. They were separate for me, but that was, God, that is a yeah, dope combo. Holy is. cow. Um. How do you think the? Uh, how do you think everyone's feeling out there with the draft and everything? Yeah, I think everyone's having a good time. I think I, I I was not focused. Like about halfway through, I just lost all the focus. This is one of the, I'm very normally good at paying attention to what everyone else is doing. Mm-hmm. I saw someone was like they had Archmage's charm, and I was like, oh, why? When did they draft? When did that get drafted? I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Like I t- just literally lost track of what everyone else had at some point. So yeah, I, it's it's uh, it's tough to maintain that super focus for that long. But yeah. I have definitely been feeling it. I am exhausted today, so I've been like, Whoop. okay. Yeah, it's normally one of my strengths, but I, I'm still pissed about the Renin Six. I just kind of forgot the card existed, and then after I realized it, I just kind of put it there. I was hey, pissed next- about the Strip Mine. I was like, Noah, what are you doing to me? <laughs> also, I was even more surprised because it went as late as it did, but it would have been legitimately quite good in like six people's decks. Mm-hmm. You know, it's oh, one of those yeah. kinds of drafts yeah. where it, it would have been good in almost everybody's, you know, sort of mid rangey creature based sort of beat down decks. Yeah. In the um, end, I needed, I, I got a little too much cute, and I probably needed another. I need. I should have drafted, I was going to grab Prime Time at the end, and I didn't. And I should have either grabbed mm-hmm. Prime Time or um, the big beast that when it blocks, it makes beasts or gains life or draws cards. Elder Gargroth, yeah. Yeah, like one, one of those two. I just needed, mm-hmm. I needed a fatty. I, I there somewhere. I don't have enough yeah. like fat. Yeah, I was a little surprised. Signing off, got a magic of uh, got magic event of my own to run. Hey, smooth bread plays. Thank you for hanging out. And Thanks for tuning in, smooth brain. Uh, alrighty, we've got a start to our match. We got a turn one mom coming out. Chad's mm-hmm. got a turn one sensei's divining top. Uh, young, goes young, into a young peasy, young pyramidal. And Jeff leads. I don't know if y'all notice on uh the um, game against Swifty. Uh, the game that he won where I was all in on the Hex Drinker. Mm-hmm. He didn't have the White Source, and mm-hmm. he uh, 
Tom scoured me and drew the white source. Uh, and then he was going to be a full level. It was going to be a hex, eight, uh, yeah, a, a yeah. unkillable hex drinker, basically, the next turn. And it was going to be dead. I, We were looking at it, and we were like, yeah. well, uh, he better find something. Yeah. Because he, otherwise he did not have the white got, source. Uh, he ripped it off of. He's going to have to supreme. He ripped it off the Tom Scour. Yeah. He would have been Dex. dead before that. I mean, it was already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were commenting on that. We were like, yeah. that's going to be a very large hex drinker on turn two. Yeah. It was going to be. Well, it was, he took four on two. It was going to be an eight, eight on three. Kind of a rough one. Yeah, but he got it. But I got through in the end. So that was mm-hmm. those were some crazy matches. Yeah, yeah. No, we've honestly a lot of the games have been very, very close today. So yeah. as as competitive as an event as they come, let me tell you, even though Mark is just having a horrible time in chat. Wow, that yeah. guy molding. Such an emotional man, you know him. He, he well, feels so much. He does. He just wears it on his sleeves, so all right, well, I'm going to put your full-time announcer back here and roll on out. Thank all you right, all for well, tuning for in, in to uh, St. Lotus, and uh, we'll catch you later. All righty, Chad coming in with the clowns. Almost, di- oh, and he just has Time Vault on turn two and he on turn three, and that's just over. All right. And that's why we leave it to wow. the professionals. Chad having really bad luck on stream. Holy... Chad have what? more matches to play. Get him another match on camera so that he can try to put up a dubski. Because oh my god, has his deck looked so he's atrocious. gone three. And, he's gone three and zero oh off camera. Yeah, and on camera and on he cameras. just gets rolled. It's not even close. Wait, oh, is that the match? That was the match. It was just oh. turn, it was just Damn. really fast time vault combo twice in Damn. a row. Yeah, absolutely brutal. So, poor Chadley, really just getting a rush. And, you know, his wife and kids are watching, too, which oh. just makes that absolute humiliating. It's okay. Wife and kids, go so ahead go ahead and turn it off. Yeah, that's rough. Apparently, because um, it's 6 o'clock, and you know what that means. Mm-hmm. It's time for dinner, and, you know, it's that's good family time. So that you shouldn't be having things time. on in the background. No, that's good. Mo- too many you monitors. See your dad no. on TV. Let's go. Hell yeah. Heck, heck yeah. yeah. Heck, heck, heck yeah. Oh, man. We've been cursing a lot if there's children yeah. watching. Well, he says... I've been uh, saying a lot of... Rachel said Ollie's going to start saying bad bitches now because he heard you say it on stream. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> he, he says bad bitches. That's your fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> he said bad bitches. He's going to be the coolest kid in kindergarten, okay? He's going to be like rolling up. Like, hell oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sorry. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm a little bit sorry. Yeah, boy. Uh, but... Um, it, you know, barring any crazy, well, I, not even crazy, but like Noah's got three matches left to play yeah. and can, yeah. and can definitely lose them. Uh, it, For cause, sure. because this is, this is an event with a lot of parody. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got to play against all the other Chicago guys. You know, Chad's been picking up wins. Dylan, it's uh Pat P it sounds like has been picking up wins. Let me see where he's at on the, he's played three and he's went two and one. I bet he's played more than that. I yeah. Bet. I bet yeah. he's underreported so far. But, uh, and then he's also got to play against Swifty and Swifty is also definitely has, has a lot of good cards against Noah. So they're going to play a very chunky kind of match. I don't understand how Dan already played all seven matches unless he just conceded he the just, last one. I, I guess it sounds, it's happened everyone, before. Everyone who said, who like told me a story from their match is just like, yeah, he just got fucked. He's like, got absolutely rolled. Yeah. He just got I, absolutely I mean, cracked. Yeah, uh, which is, I mean, it, it's a huge bummer. <laughs> like uh, yeah, obviously, yeah. I mean, I really you, like Dan, and he's such a delight of a guy. He, to play he's also a like a very good magic player. Like even I, like and I intentionally draft some like very asinine decks. Uh, even I have never gone one in six. Like you have to either like you either have to be like not at all aware of how this format works or you have to just get like absolutely bamboozled by luck to go one in six. That's it's like tough. Dan is it's a tough. much, Dan is a much better than a one in six player. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, it sucks that he drafted something a little bit different than what we've seen him do before. And it worked well, out this way. Um, I, I think the thing that sucks about it is that not once did we get to see him get absolutely creamed on camera. Like if if yeah, he's I was say, wait, did if, we actually not get to see him no, on camera? Not once. What the 
fuck? Yeah, I know. That's, that's such whack. a disappointment. Wow. I, like, if you're going to, like, have a historically bad performance for yourself on VRD, at least allow us to document it like an adult. Exactly. Honestly, That's it's pretty. It's pretty juvenile. I'm fucked up. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty juvenile for Dan like, to to not, not only perform so badly, but then also to behave so badly. You know, it's um, kind of honestly. Whack. Maybe we shouldn't. It's just him hurtful. To come back. This yeah. should be his legacy. From yeah, that, it's you know? it's hurtful. Like, it's hurtful that he would betray don't us ask in him that back manner. On the team is what I'm saying. You know, <sighs> kick him, kick him to the curb. Man, it was. I, he, he was. He was a good friend, but for him <laughs> to betray me, in such um, a manner. All right, what do we got here? Jack leads <laughs> off with turn one nomad. It's, uh, yeah. Steven plays a uh, chrome mox into a pen prism. So he he's turn one. yeah no. Wow. So he's already got Oko another artifact. Was he threatening to have like seven mana this turn? Yeah, uh, silly. Yeah. Like, is yeah. it like one, two, three? Four, that's a uh, that's five, not a sit of sign on. That's an Odawara. Christ. Yeah. So he's had six mana this turn. Jesus yeah. Christ. And gets to lead an Oko. Oko is. So that yeah, that's uh, very nice. Um, though he doesn't use it to elk the uh, doesn't use it to elk the, is that the nomad. nomad uh, which is fair. I can understand why you wouldn't do that. Yeah, we, I, th- I think you. I think you wait a turn. I am a paranoid man, and I would have done it right away. Well, I would have just so snapped it off. That all that all depends on what is in his hand, because like that extra food token this turn is uh is another two mana if he has uh urza in hand that is true and it looks like jeff does like an- another two mana is not, not insignificant uh yeah absolutely but i mean the risk of just dying on turn two of jess if jeff has like i land land if if bo- you if you have a nomad pieces. in court in play Oh, man, and he doesn't do it this turn either. Wow. Okay, he must have something in his hand that he's cooking with here. Because otherwise this feels particularly greedy. Wow. I don't know. Yeah, okay, that's the creature side. It has a face on it. You should have... That's if, a, if, I was listen, actually thinking that earlier. Yeah, like, if, if you're the, playing it as a food token, you should have the QR code on the back. Check me out on TikTok.com slash whatever the fuck my address is. It doesn't matter. I don't make TikToks anymore. Uh, Brandon, this and is by just I, I mean Dr. Peter Poo MD. He's this a real just, medical professional from Medicine University. This has just come to my attention, but the people need to know: Are you an elk? Are Are you? I've been claiming all day that you are a big man. Is it actually true that you are in fact not a big man, but in fact a big elk-like creature? Shh. Don't worry about it. Don't uh, listen. Um, you're troubling your little your little heart. We <laughs> don't need to do that. Okay. Just, just, listen, just shut up. <laughs> is, is that your elk voice? Hey. <laughs> Are all your voices the same voice, just at different volumes? No, I'm Jason Stathams. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do Italian and Jason Statham at the same time? <laughs> no, I'm not the Jason Stathams. <laughs> That's pretty good, huh? I think you're just adding S to the end of all the words. <laughs> Uh, oh god alright more more magic gameplay uh, oh Jeff played intuition but uh, it got what countered did it get countered doesn't look like a resolve I'll tell you that much uh, and it looks like there's some oh he got crop triggered. rotted so now he's getting crop rotationed uh, got mystical dispute I don't know okay, so that was, I don't think is that that's a main deck mystical no, dispute I don't think that mystical dispute is a magic card Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're very useful to have on camera. Thanks, yep. buddy. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Way to go in the in the commentator booth. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, main deck mystical dispute. Interesting. I don't know that I'm a fan of the main deck mystical dispute, but I suppose I don't, you're a motivated. I don't dislike it. Man. You've got other things to do. You can just keep it in your hand until it's relevant. Like it's not that bad. Fair enough. Uh, we do finally see him elk off the nomad in court like, now that he doesn't have the safety of the uh, counterspell. We kind of talked about this before, like against the force spike. It's the same concept where, like, you're you're creating leftover mana if you have to like tap a Talarian Academy to like play an Urza or like blah 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 blah. blah. Like, there's there's a surplus of mana, and so like if you have an extra blue floating and you're playing against one of four other blue decks, then Mystical Dispute is like really relevant. Whereas, like, 
Okay, other times it's just like it's just an expensive a bad mana leak. It, it's just yeah. an expensive mana leak. Like That's it's not fair. it's not the worst thing to play. That's fair. The fact that it's Especially just... if it's protecting the Urza that you're trying to cast with like an off like a weirdly loaded Tolarian Academy. All right, fine. I'll accept it, but I'm not happy about it. All right. I don't I don't care that much. Oh. Well, thank you for having such passion when you defend your ideas. That that was passion? I didn't even use an accent. Oh, no, I'm we have sorry. A moment for a visit? Yeah, absolutely. Of course we do. Bring in the the celebrity shot. Hello. Bring it in. Oh, <laughs> Listen, baby. I'm Jason Statham. It's so nice to meet you. You're, you look nothing like Jason Statham. Uh, why? Because I have. Hello, tiny guy. Look, that's you. Look at that. Look at that. That's you. <gasps> Hi. Oh, wow. Hi. So, um. Adorable. This, what a little cutie. That is um, bar- Barbarian Barbarian ah, Caterberg. An interesting name, but one that I think suits their personality. Yeah, I, I was surprised by that one. I thought it was like I, a joke at, the, at first, but then I mean, you I saw really, it embroidered on the pillow, and I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, it's not just the the um, the role playing game formerly that everybody played, formerly known as D anD D class anymore. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. It's it's uh, it's really become a cultural phenomenon to name your children barbar- barbarian. Classes. Yeah, how is that going to work after with the new, uh, classes? The Coast, yeah, um, that's why we're we're formerly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because you can't do that anymore. No, no, no. You have, gonna, to, you have to. You think they're so, going to sue Mark for his baby? Yeah. Game? No, that's why. Maybe. That's why I was so surprised. But Mark said, "I'm ready for a legal challenge." <laughs> that's a great. I really want to. I really want to fight. Yeah. That, uh, that I want to like take. I want to take him say. down because. If Mark loses, ugh, they get the baby. But if Mark wins, he he owns magic. Oh wow! Which, I mean, That's it's so a great. it's a risky why gambit. Wouldn't, why wouldn't he own D and D? Well, because uh, uh, <laughs> because he uh, magic's more valuable, so you know he gets oh. to pick. Uh, That's exciting. Also, he's sitting on like three counter spells. Oh yeah. So if they're like, uh, uh-huh, well, you're an idiot. He's like counter spell. <laughs> he's like, oh shit. Wow. That's yeah. exciting. Well, I'm I'm very excited to hear uh, how the court case goes. Of course, you want to talk about the magic thing? Mm, all right, all right. So Oko's still really good. Oko's still bussin' bussin'. Uh, it looks like some trades have happened. Maybe the trades of some elks. So funny thing, I actually think um, the nomad on core in the graveyard is a lot more useful to Jeff than it being an elk in play. Um, a lot more ways to recur it. Maybe get it back into play, et cetera, et cetera. Um, looks like Stephen also went ahead and played the might and weak stone as a divination again. That's fun. The suspicious stowaway. See, the thing is, uh, I'm glad that these games are working out this way for Steven. Like, he's picking... But, like, you oh, look at these cards and we it's have just a, a hot mess. Nice, yeah. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Um, you know, you know what you can do? Is you can turn your land into an elk, and it's a 6-6. Six, six. It doesn't it, it actually yes, kind of makes it work worse though because then it doesn't have haste and vigilance. Vigilance. Yeah, I mean you can always do it after a turn after you've like made it or whatever. Sounds like something an elk would say. Hmm. Hey, listen, Henry, shut up. Shut up, Henry. <laughs> shut, up. shut up, Henry. You're blowing, you're blowing my cover. What do you think if his if his uh, Twitch name is Henry the Wizard? What do you think his real name is? Hank. Hank. You think in his by like at his day job he goes by Hank the Wizard? No, I think oh. he goes, he just goes by Hank, huh? No, he goes by Cornelius Hank. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great name. Listen, I don't dislike Hank Cor- Cornelius Hank. I'm just saying uh-huh. that. Yeah, no, no, no. Listen, don't blow my fucking cover. <laughs> okay, yeah. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, wait. Killed, what's your deal? Uh, funny. All right. So, Steven looks like he's going to be able to clutch this one up with some well timed Oko charges. I mean, uh, you know. Caterberg's over who's, who's winning. I don't know. Let's take a brief look at the board and see. Is it the guy with 190 permanents or the guy with four lands? Hmm. I don't think either of them 100, Great 100, question. have 190. I know you need our expert analysis on this uh, tenuous board state. But so far, Jeff hasn't played any spells. Uh, spells however, are, Jeff has one from that situation. So what does Jeff need to win from here? Oh, the problem I, is Jeff never shows us how many goddamn cards he has. I don't, I don't know if I like... 
why is why is Steven cracking his fetch right now? He has a uh, tireless tracker in the deck. That's true, but is is, is there is wait does, does 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 her does suspicious stowaway have a thing? Unactivated ability. Oh no. wait, okay, so he he's got red or elemental blast or whatever. Mm, or uh, or volcano, so he can. He does have volcano. That's true. Yeah. Um. So, so Jeff has won from situations like this, uh, because his uh, a lot of the stuff in his deck is very cheap, <clears throat> and he does have a lot of lands in play. So he could do something along the lines of playing reclamation on the nomads and core, and then playing Sepulchre Illusionist and milling his library and trying to go for the win that way. If Steven doesn't have anything, that's going to be good enough. That's going to be lethal. <coughs> if Steven's got anything to interact with. All right, so here's my question. Because right now, much tougher game. right now, it's looking like uh, Chicago is going to pull away with this one, right? Because um, St. Louis is kind of cannibalizing their own field here. Um, what, what, if we're going to Chicago, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, do, am I, am I still the coach next time? Uh, I don't know. You might have to play rep your city, you know? I don't know. I mean, like if I, like, do they even, whoever is the coach, if I am not still the coach mm-hmm. 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 and I say quote or coach with, you know, very aggressive quotation marks. Yeah. Uh, do, do they even pick me? Am I too Ooh. much of a? Am I too much of a, a wild card? Oh my god! You're, he's actually am I, washed. Am I just didn't participate in one BRD and now he's a goddamn mascot? Yeah, wow. I they Absolutely. they've really they've really cornholed me here. Mm. You hate being cornholed. Yeah. Like that. Um, you know, I think we'll I think we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the event in Chicago. Ooh. Okay. Malevolent Hermit comes down. And Jeff decides he does not want that happening. So that makes sense. He's gonna play spell queller. He decides whatever. That spell queller is a Jeff swell is speller. Try to do on his turn, whatever he's gonna do on his turn. Um, Jeff has decided that malevolent hermit is too much interaction. He doesn't want to have to deal with that. So, all right. So there's definitely been some bad math because I can't understand how we would end up with 17 matches between St. Louis and Chicago. That doesn't sound right it, to me. I think there should it be... It seems like it should either be, be 18 like, or 16. <laughs> I, think, I think there should be 16 matchups, right? I think. Because uh, it's four people times four. Mm, four people. Oh, unless we've been counting matches. games, which seems oh, weird. Yeah. All right, and Steven's going for the win with the attack, and he gets it. So, very nice job. They're going to game three here. Uh, with a decisive-looking win for Steven, he just had all the right interaction at the right time. I wonder how Jeff is going to approach his last match. I'm curious as to if he has boarded in a way to bring in his uh, his fair initiative creatures, or if he's just been on all. I I all I mean I honestly think that you just say that that was a failure of like it was a failure of execution. You pivoted out of it. Like why would the deck doesn't support it really? Does it? I think there are arguments to be made, but I don't think I remember him doing it against Swifty, and Swifty is probably the person I would do it against. So I, I mean, to be <laughs> fair, I also don't know what that special Undercity dungeon does. So I it kills people, Brandon. It yeah, I, I like I said, I have not paid attention uh, to Magic ever since like the great oversaturation of 2022 commenced in June or July. That's a great point. So, um. Blessing. You know, there there are a couple of cards, like, uh, kind of for Christmas. Um, Sam and I bought our own Christmas presents, and so we just went to a game store and got a box of Dominary United and Brothers War and just cracked those open. And uh, nice. we're like, oh, man, there's some really good cards in here that are very impactful in VRD, and we've seen several of them drafted. Um, but, yeah, just in general, I don't really know... Um, Okay, so yeah, five and five and nine. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Let's see. At this point, at this point, uh, I think, uh, Sam st- 
still has to play. Is it Chad? Maybe it's Chad and Dylan. No, I think it's it's either Chad or Dylan that uh, that Sam still has to play. But uh, it would take a real like Chicago would have to. Your your players would have to beat Noah. Which uh, would be yeah. which would be Noah, a Noah would need to take some some, some L's against the home team. And by the way, if uh, if there are any concessions, we're Oh we're, no no no. We we had a discussion about that at breakfast. Yeah. We we all discussed how, you know, obviously obvious collusion on a It's met, you have to be met with real corporal subtle. punishment. You have to be real subtle. That's smart. Yeah. I was like, guys, if you sacrifice your black lotus to abrupt decay your own soul ring, like people are going to know. They're going to know. Well, especially because black lotus only makes one color of mana. And so right. that's a, that's exactly. a, and how did you get black lotus and soul ring in the same deck? Literally none of it makes sense. I, yeah. I did in the last in VRD eight. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. And guess what? I didn't see soul ring until match five. Wait, <laughs> that's also true. The last, the last one we played together? Were you yeah, in seat two? the last one I played? No, I was seat one. Well, there's no way I would have passed you black. What? Oh, wait, there's no. no. Way I would have passed yeah, yeah you, you, were, you were seat one. I was seat two. And so I went Black Lotus. And then on the 15th pick, I took Soul Ring. And then I, and and then and I then, got Time Lock? What no, happened in no, that draft? No, and then I went Hole Breacher. Okay. Yeah. What happened in that draft? Exactly. I'm so confused. You went. I'm pretty sure you went force of will, force of negation, and then got then got. I thought I got time walk, didn't I? Didn't I go? Like, yeah, yeah. That was. Walk? Yeah, you got time walk and then snapcaster. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds fucked. I'm pretty sure I went. I, I went. Yeah. We're we're, we're really cool. We're so good. We're really so goddamn cool. All right. That's awesome. So we've got Steven leading off with that signature turn on the uh, that he always seems to have. Going straight into the, like, mono clock with a uh, hex drinker. God, you, you really wish that's a Mox Diamond in a deck where you have a fucking Crucible of Worlds. Yeah, probably. Uh, Crow of Mox um, is such a pale comparison to the Mox time Diamond. Time Vault coming down with Grand Abolisher to protect it, but it looks like Jeff's missed a land drop at this point. Uh, now so Steven, it looks like. And I'm guessing the Revoker is naming Time Vault? I mean, that seems... Pretty reasonable. This time vault has seemed like a distraction the whole time in Jeff's deck. Um, uh, no, because he just <laughs> he just <laughs> exoed Chad two zero. That's with, true. So I feel like it mostly is just like that's a how time vault works. Unsynergistic if, block, it, and it's just yeah. Sometimes I pay three mana and lose the game. That's a there. that is a confirmation bias kind of thing where time vault is on stream uh-huh. for yeah. 93 seconds at a time and then you've won and you know mason's over here way too fucked up way too blitzed to to notice it and give a good commentary about how he's getting the w and i on the other hand have been drinking water like a good boy the entire time i don't know did jeff just win that'd be good your water smells a lot like vodka uh that is weird because oh, I'm sorry, that's the inside of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> why does everything smell Anyways. like vodka? This pencil smells like Why does everything too. smell like cocaine? <laughs> Anyways, uh, that time vault still tapped. That Phyrexian Revoker yep. still... But the early questing beast coming down and getting the chunk in. Yeah, like, this is this is why you do this. Because, like, you like all right, ooh, I play my thing that wins instantly. Okay, I counterspell that. Okay, I play my other thing that wins instantly almost and then it's like all right i flash in the thing that prevents you from winning instantly all right here just fu- take four goddamn damage every turn until you can make that stop how about that oh. you're like oh all right well ouch that hurts well, why you gotta be so your detention to shut down the hex drinker which is a nice way to stymie the bleeding a little bit for jeff give him a little bit more time i mean you know what hex drinker is just the thing you do Ooh. until you can get your questing beast paid for you know, I was about to say there are very few creatures in Jeff's deck that can block Questing Beast, but that is one of them. There is, I mean, the Dream Den coming down. Uh, Steven saying, "Would you like to chump block with it?" And I have to imagine Jeff saying, "No." I mean, just attack with it. You make it'll be fun. Do it. I fucking dare you. <laughs> 
and a raw crucible with no lands in graveyard. Yikerinos, buddy. Yikerinos. Yeah, this isn't. This is not ideal. Uh, but at the same time, like you, have, that's why you have crusting roost. It's real good. It's real, real good. Providing a nice clock. Um, we'll see if it's enough. Chad, uh, so I'm, I apologize. Jeff oh, really looks shit. like he's, he's lining up for a big play. Um, we will see if that turns out to be good enough. Was that Oko? Steven deep in the tank. You know, he should... figure out what his line's going to be here. I think it's attack for four. That's pretty good. All right. And Jeff goes all the way down to one, wants to keep his Luris online. And Steven's going to crack his Waterlog Grove, replay it, take a look at his three mana. Consider his options and pass turn. Jeff's going to untap very quickly and draw. Jeff now in the tank, trying to figure out how many more turns do I have. Being at one life super awkward, because when he attacks a Questing Beast in the Block of Argus, you only go to four, which does not give you an extra turn. It's, you know, you're dead right after that. All right, so I believe, just, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the math in my head here. Somebody has to go five and two, because Dan went one and six. Is that true? Uh, based on... Based on, like, the... F on Noah having gone for no, except against the Chicago people who... So, like, one of them... Noah will either go... F at, at worst case scenario, Noah goes four and three, but that implies that one of the other Chicago people goes five and two, I mm. believe. Interesting. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Fair I enough. Well, I it still think... wouldn't surprise me if, uh... What? Is this a concession from Jeff? Because he does not have a way to block Questing Beast? Counting up all of his lands. Yep, it looks like he's that's, just saying... That's it. Got a little mana flooded, and it wasn't any good. Steven I, deals nearly 20 points of damage with so Jeff it goes. Beast. it goes back to what we were talking he about, which is, up. like, sometimes you just cannibalize your own matches. Uh, or, you know, in, in this, in the format that we've concocted here, where it's, you know, goes to the winner. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it looks like, unless my math is wrong, that is the last X and 2 gone from St. Louis. Yep. So that would make. Uh, and listen, there is a there is a there is a slim chance. If Noah loses all three of his. But I, like I said, I believe that, you know, amongst Noah Swifty. I I I don't know. I think there's like one very very crazy edge case scenario, where Noah loses all three. Uh, like, and every there's like five people who end up at four and three. I gotcha. Well, I hope that's not the case. I mean, well, we'll, we'll I mean, see. we'll see. I kind of do, but that's just you know for the for city championship purposes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at like, this point, we have I, to see we, I mean, uh, if Noah can continue his undefeated run. Yeah, and Sam so Sam versus Dylan next. This is exciting. Have we seen Dylan on camera yet? Uh, no, I don't believe. I don't believe so. I don't think we have either. I'm Why excited. does that look like my hand? What is this? Oh my god, are you actually out there? Oh wait, no, that's there's a lot of tattoos. Oh, uh, there are, and you have beautifully painted nails, my friend. Uh, well, except for this one because I was setting this stuff up. Oh, yeah, that one's that a one. bungle. Don't show me your weird gimp nail. Yeah, there you go. Aha, genius. Uh, yeah, gorgeous, so, darling, just gorgeous. Oh, I thank you. Oh, oh my it's Steven, it's oh, my Steven, stars. Uh, Steven and Dylan. Okay. Wait, uh, Canterberg, make sure we get, uh, Mark. If get you, Sam if you back if on. If you don't mind. She's adorable. She's America's sweetheart. I, I would sweetheart. like a chance to maybe see Chad try one more time on camera, if we can get that in, because Yeah, so, far, so we he, can get him to He lose. has just not performed on camera so Unless far. it's against it's Noah. Been Let's rough. make sure that. Let's make sure that uh, Chad's on camera. Sam is going to crush Jeff first, but then she's up against Dylan. All right. Sounds like a plan. 
Oh, Sam's gonna go up against Jeff now. Okay, and I think because Jeff is Jeff is okay. three and three, and so I think we're uh, perfect. So here, here's the thing. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know exactly how the Narc Amoeba Leyline of the Void interaction happens, but I do know that not good. Uh, for whomst? For, for Jeff? The, the Narcomiba. I don't think the Narcomiba yeah. comes Yeah, so uh, the thing about that is it doesn't matter because Dread Return doesn't work, and Sam has two of those effects in her deck. Whatever recursibility sure. uh, Jeff has, this is not the deck to go up against it with. Now, that being said, if Jeff just gets in for beats, if the true name Nemesis gets up and gets going and he plays kind of uh, plays more of a tempo game with her. Yikes. That's going to, that's going to be bad. I think for her, uh, she like, we, you know, we, we kind of know this, that um, the more crowded the board state gets, the worse it's it is for Sam. for Sam. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but it also does not seem like that is the match that we're getting right now. Yes, this looks like Steven versus Dylan. Is okay, so the, Steven versus Dylan, and then we'll get Sam versus Jeff, I think. No? There, okay, Sam versus Jeff is happening off camera. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, I understand. I understand. When he, when he says Sam is going to crush Jeff, she means, he means off camera, and then she'll play Dylan on camera. I like it. Okay. Meanwhile, Dylan's only gotten through five of his matches. He still has two more whole matches to go. Just as that is the case for Sam. And, like, you know, Sam said from the very, not even from the very beginning, from two weeks ago, she's just trying to go four and three. She, hey. she, she, like, I mean, honestly, that is the most impressive thing to happen here today. If a player, if somebody who didn't play Magic in 2021 comes in here and gets a winning record. This is the most obscure, complex, unnecessarily, like, Byzantine form of this game that you can play. And, like, getting a winning record here is actually really impressive. Especially against the players that are assembled here today. So, I completely agree. Yeah. Uh, And, you know, let's also not discount the fact that like Steven can go four and three. And if the one very ridiculous series of circumstances that lead to a four and three being first place, that if is still not even guaranteed to be possible because we haven't seen who in Chicago has played up against each other yet. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe Steven is ends up tied for first place after uh, a lot of different bounce backs and stuff. So we shall see. All right. So far, we've just got a very slow game, a lot of lane development back and forth. And against Dylan, which is the Splinter Twin deck, right? Is it actually Splinter Twin or is it Kiki Jiki? Both. Okay. He's got both. So, uh, in this case, you name Kiki Jiki because otherwise the Phyrexian Revoker has to name whether it's Pestermite or or whatever uh you yeah can yeah it, it's not a bad choice it's just uh it's it's you know, it depends it's on convoluted you're, you're right because to... the creature has the ability that fraction revoker turns off it's not splinter twin right. itself um, so. the question is like is kiki too slow or are you more concerned about getting combo dogged by one of the three mana creatures you know? you know i particularly i would just be concerned that he's already got five mana and Kiki Jiki is a one card you can answer. That's Ooh. that's yucky. Like this guy. Oh, and he gets to blow it up with a volcano. Am I, oh, oh wait. God. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> nope, it's Cyclonic Rift. Go back to the uh, <laughs> Wait, Did does, he wait. not untap one of his own lands when he played it? Um, I guess he went. No, why, he wait, no, why, why? He would he would tap it in response. Well, if he had untapped one of his own lands, then he could have just replayed the Deceiver Exarch again. Well, he has to target it on, on ETB. Right. 
during the attack phase. Yeah, and so then, he would have played it, targeted his own and, untapped, and then and after he after he's Cyclonic. after he's selected the target, then Stephen plays Cyclonograph. Right. So it goes back. He to doesn't. Hand. No, but he's already taps. he's already selected the target before Cyclonic Rift even gets played. I agree. Okay. On his own land. Why? But he has no. He doesn't have any concept that the Cyclonic Rift exists yet, because he's already targeted when it has entered the battlefield. I would have suspected that Cyclonic Rift was coming. That yeah. seems bad. I, you know, I'm not one to judge. I'm just saying. It's <laughs> I mean, he could have, but like, all right, that's a a weird kind of. Uh, I would argue tapping one of your opponent's six mana sources is not that useful. But I would argue yeah, that, you know what, my son? I would argue that they're not you. And that's why they made this bullshit, stupid I'm play. I'm not saying it's a good play. I'm just saying it's... It, like I know you're not saying it's a good done. play. I, 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 I know. It. You're saying that it's garbage, stinky poo-poo. I was saying it's possible he, like, big-brained him and was just like, oh, I'll untap well, my own well, thing did, and play a different it, Is that what you think actually happened? Yes. I don't. Well, I mean, it obviously didn't happen. I thought it was. Then why do you think that it is what happened? I. All right. Good things are happening. We got Nisu Shakes the World. We got Oko. We've got Beats coming down. We've got Mason being a sycophant. <laughs> Boom, baby. <laughs> Slam a jam a ding dong at your face. All right. Um, let's see. So. Yeah, Steven, these are Steven's a lot. Steven's got to be pretty well favored on this board, but like Shark Typhoon is a hell of a magic card. What? Oh, so this was actually hard cast. Yeah. Oh this damn. Is a hard cast okay, I thought card. this was at the end of turn with a creating a one one. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so he mu- so Dylan must have drawn that that turn. Yeah, Dylan's played very few spells this game. He's played what two a a can a, a miscalculation and a Shark Typhoon. A lot of stuff floating around in his hand. He's got the combo, but I'm assuming the Deceiver Exarch is named with the Phyrexian Revoker. Mark, what is uh, Phyrexian Revoker naming out of curiosity? Is it Deceiver Exarch? It's naming your butt. No poof for you. My God, man. <laughs> you know, you've lost your mind. I did many moons ago. All right. Packy showing us the juice. Uh, he could play Dig Through Time and get an 8-8 eight, eight Shark. That's pretty dope. Yeah, this is going to get mana leaked. Uh, but it doesn't... Listen, that forest taps for two. Mm-hmm. I think, so... Uh, the forest taps for two. All right, that's fine. But apparently Stephen does not care. He does not need Urza. You what, he can... needs, what he needs is to beat Dylan to death, okay? Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I think that Stephen probably should have untapped that before he cast the Urza, but whatever. Uh, I mean, like, I don't think it matters. I think that this is game over on board. Uh, It's uh, close to lethal attack, I think. There, I mean, okay, he's not tapped. Okay, cool. And then... Oh, okay. And we've got the Prismari command that's going to be blowing that jabroni up. <laughs> so, I think theoretically this could land him at one. Okay, so dig through time creating an 8-8. Eight, eight. But uh, we are representing, yeah. We're, I mean, we're still representing eight, but uh, you right. know, but there's still you know the opportunity <coughs> to get a. F- we have the next. Fa- year we, we have the. Uh, oh, does goodness. Dylan? Dylan was in the second spot, so he does have force of will, which can he can force of will the Prismari command if that is something that he drew. That's true. He can. Uh, what is being attacked with here? Two, uh, uh, two three threes and, and an elk? two. Uh, well, sorry, three three threes and the revoker. And he doesn't have the mana to, um, to drop the combo this at the end step. Okay. <sighs> 
Anyways, that is uh, a force of will. So the two two stays Ooh, up, and because it's a force of will, go. yeah. This is a. Uh, uh, I think that that was a really nice sequence. Wow, that was that was honestly pretty. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, it, it was, and you have to, you know, if you're Steven, like, I think you just go for it, because even in doing this, you have to tap out to go down to three. You still can't, like, you're you're still making three threes every turn. He's at three. Well, I like, mean. And he can't do the combo in one turn. He can use... So, like, you, you still go for it. But, like, yeah, that's... Listen, incredible incredible play and great draws on Dylan's uh, part. Yeah. It, but it still, it still looks pretty nasty. For because sure. that mox uh, is still, 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 still there. Enough. And still st- very, it's still going to be a 3-3. Three, three. He's at 3. It's going to be 3 versus 3. And... Uh, he can absolutely poop out a blocker. It's just the question. It, oh, okay. He's, uh, he's going to take out Nissa. You know, yep. That's one way to answer some of the three threes. Now he's got to Jace play bounce Jace. that thing. And uh, if he bounces this... it, it's just going to get moxed. Oh, but the shark typhoon makes a four, four. So he bounces that one and says, what do you got? Oko? you got nothing. Okay. So can we get. Oh, do you want to tap that mox? Wait, wait. Okay, so he can swap control. He can tap the mox and then swap control of it with something. What? Okay, creates a food token. I mean... And oh, and then he sacrifices three creatures. That's hilarious. Uh, I okay. So to be fair, I still think that the play there uh, is Noah is, wins versus Chad. No, Chad wins against <laughs> Noah. Chad, who has not been able to string to like rub two. Two pieces of cardboard together to get a win it's on happening. camera. It's happening. Actually comes back. It's happening. And crushes. Meanwhile, we've got just an absolute pajama rama happening. A tinker for Gate to Phyrexia to make Dylan All right, let's, sacrifice let's pull, his board. Let's pull up Gate. To, uh, let's pull pull up a uh, Phyrexian portal um, and see if it's on every upkeep or if it's just. I believe it is on every up. Uh, no, each of your upkeeps. Each of your upkeeps. So. Oh man, this is just an absolute slobber knocker. Every time Shark Typhoon looks like it's just why, gonna wait, why take is, over the game. Why is uh why is Revoker? Yeah. Okay, good. Maybe he thought it just pulled one back immediately. Perhaps. Uh and <laughs> Which so, is great, because it's it means he's gonna get another turn with his Wait, Jace. so I mean, he just needs one more mana, right? And so he's gonna brainstorm and if he gets another mana, then it's What's, game. what's the extra mana do for him? Oh no no, because he it, he doesn't have haste to activate the splinter twin. Yes, right. Correct. Okay, so unfortunately. Um, well. Wow. If this really comes down to a situation where we've got five people at four and three. I don't I mean obviously I don't unlikely. think so either. That's it seems incredibly unlikely. unlikely, but this is the path that we're on. We, That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Um, Nobody what, has we'll a more worry, than we'll four. We'll worry about yeah. that right after this. I mean, I'm For not. now, Dylan and Steven still just, if you would have taken some various screenshots of these boards, yeah. you would have been absolutely positive this game would have been over three times So, already. like, okay, so just, you <sighs> right now, you just turn this mox into a 3-3, three, three, and then you get rid of, like, you, and you get rid of the C-Rex arc, right? Uh, it's possible if dylan is careful he because can probably just tap anything down that threatens to attack him this turn with a combination of splinter twin or with a uh, deceiver exarc and Pestermite. well and okay then, no so so what you actually do mm, okay so Oko the, yeah. probably needs to make an elk to try to attack yeah 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 because yeah, the phyrexian revoker doesn't have haste the uh you're revoker making is okay. definitely naming jace he's right? making a food token 
and he's got a hall of the storm giants, so Steven doesn't think he's getting away with anything here. Play the Pestermite as well, yes. Play the Pestermite as well, yes, 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 queen. Oh. Taps down the Mox Ruby to try to turn off any active volcano shenanigans. Four mana comes down for the Splinter Twin on the Deceiver yeah. Shark, and that's Scoop. game. Damn. You. Wow. Damn. Dylan takes an absolutely insane game. That that was a uh, that was you know very it was, was very well played. We should have paid more attention to the game that whole time. And you know what? That's fair. We're, Me and Brandon are not good commentators. Okay, I'll give you. We're that. great. <laughs> we're gr I am a magic player. Damn it, coach. I'm a player. God damn it. Put me in. <laughs> Uh, no, that I mean, did, I don't know what you're talking about. We were paying attention to the game for a very long time, you know, much longer about, than my attention <laughs> span allows me to be. And so I think that in that the, speaks to how great that game was. That my attention was devoted to it. In the words, at of no great, point was I not paying attention to. That in the game. words of a great American philosopher in the year of our Lord 2022. If our if Derek Bot is texting me, I, mean, I haven't sorry. been paying attention. The the magic speaks for itself. Okay, that's just a fact. Time. Derek Bud isn't texting me. Yeah, no one's texting you, nerd. <laughs> I mean, that's not that's demonstrably untrue. People who <laughs> this guy thinks demonstrably is a word. What an asshole! <laughs> uh, it's demonstratively, you dumb bitch. <laughs> you, I, I'm I'm glad that we were we all were orientated with the briefings and uh, that everybody's ju booty is nice and <laughs> voluptuous. What the fuck are you saying? Creative technique. Yeah, see, demonstrate. Thank you. Uh, demonstrate. 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 What's demonstrate do? When you cast a spell, you may copy it. If you do choose an opponent to also copy it. Oh, that's cool. I'm sure this weird EDH card is like this close to breaking vintage in half. Just this close. <laughs> Five mana can't get there. Uh, don't tell too uh, many strip mines. I don't know any random white creature that. Yeah, hate to hear it. Okay, shuffling up for a very after that game two. I did not shuffling know, up or after that game one to I reveal not know cards from the top of your library until you reveal them. I'm like. <laughs> Probably not that. I am so funny. Anyways. Probably not that. Yikes. Steven has relatively hairless hands for how hairy the rest of his arms are. <laughs> he also has a relatively hairless head for how hairy the rest of his is. Well, you can choose to do something <laughs> about that. <laughs> ah, too funny. Too funny. Yeah, you can wear a wig. Derek, uh, Derek Bot Steven is... Steven, leading us off on the play with a Prismatic Vista, grabbing a land. A forest, which is interesting, because I feel like he's a little bit less green than he is. But Can he we talk about how hands. wild it was that Prismatic Vista oh, was, like, one of the last uh, <laughs> fetches to get drafted when it's, Prismatic Vista when it's the best? Good. Oh, you're such a pud. You're so wrong about fetch land. <laughs> uh, ugh. Uh, it might as well be an Evolving Wild. Let's get out of here. Oh uh, <laughs> if, if you like Prismatic Vista, I got a lot more fucking fetch lands for you, okay? Let me tell you. Oh, my God. Uh, ooh, interesting. So instead of going for the level up immediately... I mean, it, 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 if it doesn't get you to four, then it doesn't matter. What's... Wait, what's the logic behind using one counter to put one... What, what's the logic it doesn't, behind going to it doesn't, one putting a counter? It doesn't on? feel sure. like there is much of one. Uh, I, d I also think it should probably just be on two. I don't. Why? Yeah, I would probably have just left the man on Pinhead Prism. I'm not really sure what the logic is, but either way, it looks like it's at least going to make it to three, which is nice. And if Steven plays his cards right, he might get a many progenitus. Uh, Could be fun. Ooh, Fry comes down and takes out the Ledger Shredder. That was a sideboard card Steven brought in for this matchup. What? It's a nice one. What, Fry? No, I just don't understand why you're using your Pentad Prism when you don't. That that feels very sloppy to me. I, I get, I'm gonna guess that Steven has some motivation for doing this, but it just feels sloppy. Yeah, to be clear, Steven could have. I mean, like two counters on his Pentad Prism right now, and no counters on his Hextrigger. 
But instead, he has and, the opposite. And, and, he, could, and he could use it to cast an Urza, which he could then tap the Pentad Prism and the Construct to put those same two counters on Hex Drinker. I, yeah, I, well, I mean, if he doesn't have Urza, he doesn't have Urza. Well, but, but you could draw. That, that's the beauty about drawing cards, is that that is how that works. <laughs> sure. What I'm saying is that if the two counters can come off the Pentad Prism at any time, like. Who cares, right? Like you can yeah. use them later. I, like we're we are in agreement that it yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. it does not feel like well, using Pentad Prism counters choice. to get Hex Drinker to a level that, that doesn't, doesn't does do not anything, confer yeah. any benefits is not beneficial. Yeah. Either way, it has made it across the finish line to four mana and Well, that is not quite the finish line. That is the half mile marker. You're the half mile marker. You shut up. Boom. Which makes me the marathon Hello. runner, baby. And no get on the bed. <laughs> oh, that was that was oh that God. felt really gross. Wow. <laughs> is it? I'm sorry. What is he doing? Uh, he's leveling his axe drinker up. What do you mean? What is he doing? That's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. He's leaving mana up for like a counter spell, like maybe a mystical dispute or like a mana leak. Oh, I, I okay. Mana, I, never, all right, I thought he did that before yeah, he attacked. I don't know. I'm just. I. I mean, he might have done it before he attacked. I, gotta okay. get that F six value in. Okay. Sure. Now, is he going to go full potato and try to get eight counters on his hex drinker? I hope so. Do it one at a time, you know, like a like an appropriate little beagle. Yep. Beagle. Yeah, That's I don't know. So I don't know what I'm saying. You're weird. Oh, and he Pestermite taps it with the eighth counter on the stack. Does Steven have anything? He didn't counter yeah, that, I don't, so doesn't, it makes doesn't. it look like he doesn't have anything. Ooh, cycling the Shark Typhoon, the card that won him single-handedly the game. Does that mean he's just looking for another red source so he can play Splinter Twin here? Wait, did he just draw three cards? No, he drew one at the end of turn with Shark Typhoon and one when he untapped and drew. Now he's playing Brainstorm. That is well, he, he also cards. only has he only has one red source. To find a red so yeah, I was thinking he was maybe trying to find another red source to play Splinter Twin, but he only he, he's already hand, played I don't a land. See Splinter Twin has he? He won the last match, so. Steven, oh, lost, Steven missed one land drop, and so, yeah, I believe he's already played a land. Um, interesting. Okay. Well, if that is possible, I thought he had five mana last turn, I'll be honest. Okay. I mean, he... Yeah, yeah, he, he, had, very, he had to, okay, well, he I guess, I guess not. and then cycled the Shark Typhoon. All right. But so, know, he does not have the Splinter Twins, so yeah. he was kind of digging for not a lot of benefit there. So I don't think he's at eight life, is he? No, he probably is actually. Cause he's probably going to be getting beat by this hex drinker. Oh, um, he's Sam got beats all Jeff counters. Oh my god, Sam just crushed. Hell him. yeah, Sam! Let's go, I'm Sam. so I'm so Holy. proud of her. I'm so proud of her. Jeff's deck looked so dominant for the first part of the tournament, and now he's I, just picked up a few yeah. losses. I mean, here's the row. thing: is that devastating. If there's there's if there's anything you say about Jeff, it is. He does not have a lack of confidence when it comes to playing. He has no. played more matches than anybody else in this yeah. room. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, Dylan really under the clock here. You know, not only is he super under the gun, Hex Drinker uh, threatening, a progenitus threatening uh, to kill you when you're at two life, but Papke's also uh, locked under the brainstorm. So unless he comes up with something really crazy. Oh, yeah, he's, he's just, he is just digging draw. as yeah, best he can. through it. Come on, Pepke, you got to find something here. Something big. Why is it still tapped? It's got to be, it's gotta it. be Red Source Splinter Twin, basically. I think that's the Hail Mary. Untap your Pestermite. And it can't be that. Uh, Untap your Pestermite. Steam, uh, steam guns. I think he's just looking at his hand and about to concede is what it feels like. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, He's got Mystic Confluence. Oh, he's got... And he, but he can't oh, play the Steam Vents. And he can't Steam play Vince. the other red source oh, because God, they drafted dumb so fucking brutal. lands that don't come in untapped. Oh, it's so brutal. And that's a game two to Steven. Oh, golly goshy. Yeah, I hate to see it. Wow. This is a similar thing to what happened to me. Dude, the, okay. In the last, in the last <laughs> what I was what I was just describing is potentially coming to fruition, which would make me the hypest of hype. I mean, we would have a really weird I, right? and then we would have to be like, "Hey, Brandon, can we rent that Airbnb for another night? Yeah. We aren't going home." Tonight. I mean, we, like that. honestly, oh, we would shit. have to like. I mean, I would. I would have to be like, yeah, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm going home. Oh, no, I have to call this. That would be a wild. We would one, just. Holy. I don't know what we would do, but we would have to. Uh, we would have to 
bring everybody else back and just be like, all right, everybody play everybody. The winner wins. <laughs> Every, that's it. We're running it everybody, back Everybody, every four and three plays everybody else. We're running it back. A whole nother draft. All the four and threes do their own VRD. Good luck. Yeah. I would, you know, I've already, the rooms you had, I, well, there's still one left, uh, but there, everything else got rented, so. Tonight they did? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm, how did I'm, they get cleaned? Or how did they get, like, re-cost? What, you think, you think I don't run, like, a legitimate business? <laughs> No, I just I assumed you did it. Do you I, I, normally I do, but yeah, on, on occasions like this. I oh, can, you just have someone else going. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> I've been doing this for eight years, man. Yeah. Well, and, <laughs> I, and I know. I mean, you have a gigantic. I mean, like you know. Yeah. You, I actually want to pick your brain about it a little bit because actually seeing how awesome it is for you, like yeah. I'm like, man, I wish I could. I mean, listen, go. it's not exactly something you can do in Chicago. Oh yeah. Be- I mean, kind of sure. Because. Uh, your entire cost basis goes towards maintaining a mortgage, yeah. but uh, yeah. in St. Louis, where my mortgage on a nine-bedroom house is sixteen hundred dollars, no fucking way, yes. yeah. dude. If I want to buy like, uh, if I want to buy a house in a neighborhood where I'm not going to get stabbed walking to my car, it's yeah. going to cost me half a million. dollars. Okay, well that's your that's your first problem <laughs> is that you give a shit about getting stabbed. <laughs> Just stab them first, you dummy. I have a girlfriend. Okay, she's four feet tall. What do you yeah. want? Oh, from me? oh, what are you bringing that up to me about? <laughs> you think you think I don't know what that's like? <laughs> well, Sam's at least four foot two. Hell. <laughs> Listen, earlier today you said three foot nine, and that's what we're going with. <laughs> that's a great point. Much more hobbity. All right, we're back to the game. We're back and at it. On the play, he plays that spire bluff canal. Just oh just, man, just, be, to, just to just to just to spite bluff canal. Yeah, he's got a mat. He's Dude. gonna be super mad at that fucking land. Right. This I mean. this is why that shit matters. <laughs> like it doesn't the, not matter. I'll tell you that much. My God. Like, oh uh, man. Yeah, just like just draft the friggin' pathway. Also, like it doesn't help that your your yeah. one and two seats just cannibalize yeah. each other's. Yeah, is it you know, sources? You know, I can't believe that their records have come out as well as they are. They're I, not doing. I, I well. mean, listen, I don't want to take anything away from like in a, a brief clarion moment or moment of clarity, whatever you want to call it. Uh-huh. Well, hold on, save your brief moment of clarity. We got some serious fucking that was pace magic on. That was kind of a. That was really dumb pacing by oh. Steven, why he didn't just <laughs> axe that. Well, he, it looks like he needed to play the Mox in order to get the red mana for the blast. Uh, unless it was that no, he the... played Stowaway and then, okay, got it. So he played Stowaway, then played the blast. Just a little bit of a misequence there. Let yeah. uh, Papke get one extra rummage off. But that's Bre- okay. Just, you know, just briefly, a... to be clear, I want to uh, celebrate... The, uh, the all right, we're sorry. We're looking at Dylan's hand, and we've got a Merc Tide, mm-hmm. Mana a Leak, a Memory Lapse. Uh, okay, so he's like, you know, uh, Crucible's not so bad that I need like Mana Leak to make sure it never comes back. But making you draw next turn sounds pretty nice. So, oh, that's a nice sequence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Stephen. Uh, Stephen has at least a few cards in his hands. So he's gonna get to do his own little rummaging. Little Who cares action. about Elysian Grove? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Suspicious um, Stowaway has gotten a surprise amount of play in the Vintage Vintage Redraft format. I, I think that it just does, like, anything that forces you to answer it is yeah. is pretty strong. Which is, like, Hexdrinker forces you to answer it in a really painful way. Mm-hmm. Which is that, like, if you don't answer it, you lose. Mm-hmm. Another uh, attack coming through and drawing a card for Steven. This looks suddenly really bad for Papke. The, the opening turns were not so bad, but that's uh, Stowaway flipping over and being unanswered. Papke having really nothing in his hand. Yeah, I mean... What's going on? He's uh, got a mana leak, whatever this is, for sure, so he can try to get this Merc Tide down. Yeah, he's going to have to wind up mana leaking this, and that sucks. Like, that is not yeah, a card I you mean, particularly care about. Look, like, look, look at the board. It. The only thing it does is represent future drawing cards off of Waterlogged mm-hmm. Grove, and you have to... You, you, that's what you have to mana leak? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he's playing Consider, which is <coughs> nice. He's going to flip that thing over. Yep. Now, what I wonder is, I wonder if he should have just uh, considered on his own turn, his own main phase, so that he didn't flip the stowaway over in the first place. I'm uh, very so curious the, to why that, what, that was the decision that was made. Um... Well, he's not planning on. Oh, he. It, it's if you don't play any spells, it flips. Is that correct? Because it's a day bound, night bound thing. 
Yes. And she and, didn't yep. play any spells. Uh, so he's not playing any spells now. So I, I'm a little curious why he didn't play Murktide Regent here. Uh, unless, does he, oh wait, does he have Pestermite and Splinter Twin or something? Does he have, oh my god, my mic's cutting out. Does he have Splinter Twin and Pestermite in his hand right now? I think maybe I'm just talking too quietly. Uh, I think your mic is shifted. Thank you. You're welcome. So, um... Okay, so that looked like a flash in at end of turn. I think that's a pester mite. I can't tell. It's, it's actually well, glared. Well, there's only... Okay, there you go. Yeah, there's only one red source. Mm-hmm. And... Again, only one red source. Kind of a bummer there. Okay, Jace the Mind Sculptor comes down, though, and bounces that sure, guy sure, sure. back. Get out of here. And uh, now the Noble can get in for beats, which is what all of us anticipated would be happening mm -hmm. uh noble hierarch uh trying to take out a jason, jason line sculptor a classic vrd play yeah a matchup as old as shards of alara my god tale as old as time that's not actually true did zendikar come out after shards of alara i think it did so uh yes tale as old as it was Wake. the next set i believe yeah i think you're right tale as old as world no Wake. uh uh no yeah yeah, yeah. that's Malevolent Hermit coming in, threatening to protect some of Steven's stuff. Crow Mux offering him a little extra mana. Dylan, uh, if he has a red source, could potentially do some shenanigans like bouncing Malevolent Hermit with Jace and then trying to stick the twin. But we're just not sure what he's working with. We're not sure what he's twerking with. And let me tell you, that guy backs it up and throws it in a circle. Oh, wow. Does, do they ever? Um, that's so wild to me. Sorry, I'm just looking at chat very briefly. Sam beats Jeff in two. I know we've talked about it. I'm just, that's, that's super, great. that's I'm super excited. exciting. Yeah. No, it's great. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we're fate sealing our opponent first and then brainstorming. And I think some people would do that in the reverse, but it's probably pretty close as to what information you want where. Um, I'm guessing brainstorming first and then fate sealing might be a slightly better I choice. don't know what fate seal does. Fate seal oh, is okay, look so at the top got... card of your opponent's library and put it on the top or the bottom. Is that a verdant catacombs? It is a verdant catacombs. What is that getting? So Papke drafted a few different triomes just to, just to be able to use that and marsh lots. Okay. Um, so he's got several blue-red triomes with, like, random third colors. He's got yeah. the Jess guy one and the Grixis one. All right, fair enough. So we finally see him stick I mean, you got to do what you got to do. Murktide, right. Finally see him stick his Murktide. And he's got the Verdant Catacombs, which means he's going to be able to go get the Grixis triome, which will finally give him double red. So if he's been waiting... However, not him. enough to play double oh, yeah. blue this turn. <sighs> That's true. Not enough Wait, to... Wait, why, why does Dylan have the X? Dylan won... Game, game one. So it's, it's, it's one and one, yeah. right? Oh, but the tap out. Malevolent Hermit can't counter Splinter Twin. Yipes. Oh, and Dylan Papke steals a second win with another Splinter Twin finish. Wow. Wait, so. Oh. Incredibly so close. Wait, incredibly wait. Close. I think, I'm pretty sure that Dylan's last match is Sam. Uh, and yeah, if Sam wins, sense. then they're both four and three. Really? Yeah. That'd be exciting. All right. We just need Noah to lose the rest of these, and then we've got a real ball game here, folks. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. Can uh, you pull us up the uh, Derek bot records? Beep -bop -boop. Thank you. Um, we gotta look and see. It, this is gonna be real anticlimactic if we just pull this up and like no <laughs> one is no no one is. Well, last match. Chad beat Noah, which was great. Yeah, uh, you know, because Noah's not going seven and zero. Thank God. Huh. Why does it say Noah is four one and one? Thank, thank you for that. Appreciate it. He's gonna go investigate. It says he has a draw against Dylan. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh my god! If they fucking drew against you each other, you can't have a draw. You can't have a you draw. Can't have a draw. God apartment. damn it! I. It looks like it's misreported, and Dylan got the win. Is what I'm guessing because it. This is saying Dylan was t uh, two two one, whereas the screener just on present two. Hi there, friendly update. Hey the, there, the draw that's listed there was actually something they got misreported, so that's currently reported as a 0-0. Zero, zero. 
They just haven't played their match yet. D- Noah and Dylan still have to play. Okay. Oh, gotcha. So Dylan has two matches outstanding then? Because he just beat someone and went to three and two then? If you want to refresh it, it should show up correctly. He's currently three and two. Uh, we have uh, we have just having Sam and Dylan about to play right now. So Sam is currently gotcha. three three. Dylan is three and two, I believe. Gotcha. And then are we holding any... Uh, is anyone on their like last matches that we're like holding on to? No. The, do we have people well, that are Sam, finished? Sam is on our last match. Dan Sam's and Jeff are both finished. Uh, okay. Sam is about to be on her last match. And then we have... Steven is currently playing against someone. Oh, no, Steven also just finished his last match as well. Gotcha. So we've got... Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, can I just say, Sam winning this last match puts her as the top of the St. Louis Pops, baby! Let's go! Come Woo! on, Sam! We're rooting for you, girl! Come on! Let's go! All Hell right. yeah, baby. Oh, but that's my boy, Dylan Packy, though. No, he, it's, I mean, sure. All right, you're right. Or fuck like Dylan whatever. Packy. Yeah. Yo, fuck Get Dylan wrecked. Packy. Fuck Dylan Packy. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Yeah, we were just where, 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 okay, these, where, these, where are these buds? Hell yeah. Where Hello. are these buds at? No, right. All right, so we know that we know that Leyline of the Void is at the bottom of her library. Now, mm-hmm. what we really want is for that to be at the top in her opening hand. Do we? It's, I mean, I guess it's, against, not, it's, it's not that bad against him. It's okay. He's got like. Dull I mean, spells. he can't play Merc Tide and d- d- dig, dig through, through time. time. Yeah, and, yeah. That's decent. I mean, like it, you don't not want to see it. Right, right. It's it's. I remember. Um, you don't want to draw it back later. Back in the day when you would play like Grixis Twin versus yeah. Grixis Twin, like there was a consideration to bringing in Leyline of the Void to try to shut off. Uh, to try to shut off like Tassigers or Treasure yeah. Cruises or yeah. Snapcaster Mages stuff like that. Um, especially in the days like Tarmo Twin, where people were playing a lot of Snapcaster Mages and Tarmo Ghosts and stuff. Like, yeah. Graveyard Hate was not terrible against them, so. I mean, th- there was a lot of Delirium stuff going on in general in that 2017 to 2019 era, uh, beyond just Delve stuff, so. Um, that makes sense. Right. That, I, and I, I mean, I do remember that period of time where Leyline was still, like, pretty undervalued i mean like to be fair like do you want that taking up a bunch of slots in your deck i registered a lot of decks that had four ley lines in it let me tell you i did too like, uh except they were all boggles and they were all ley lines of sanctity <laughs> or like yeah ley lines of sanctity that's funny I, I ran four main board ley line of sanctity jesus christ that's a lot of uh guess what yeah it counts for ethereal armor and you cannot thought seize me turn one that's a great point. <laughs> Dylan is grabbing another drink, which is important. St. Louis. That's a great point. Hell yeah, Get it, baby. Get it, yeah, repping those St. Louis streets. I. Let's take this as just... a moment to shout out our wonderful host, Mark Caterberg, and his beautiful wife, Neem. Uh, having a newborn baby, uh, you know. That was Neem, not Mark, just to be clear. I think it's a team effort. Well, the not not the, not the not the not the not the birthing of that baby, not the having of that baby. Were you there? Do you know that for sure? Huh? Doctor Fifi Fufu <laughs> and me was, and no one's ever seen us in the same room together. <laughs> oh, that's a great point. Um, but you know, uh, Mark uh, just recovering from like this accident that he was in last year. We're so happy that he made like a like a most full, most I, I most of a, a recovery, full, a full healthy recovery. Uh, we're all super happy about that. I don't that. know. Have so you just, talked to him recently? Just a shout kinda, out to Mark just off. and Neem for being such wonderful hosts. Like, uh, when we were coming down here, the guys were asking me, like, hey, what do we have to bring? Like, how do we give Mark money for pizza? Like, all of these things. And the whole time I was just like, oh, you know, Mark actually just kind of takes care of everything. Yeah, this, isn't like, how Mark Mark, this, isn't, this isn't how Mark operates. Mark's, Mark's just a G. Mark's just, a like, a really, really gracious guy. And, you know, yeah. he doesn't play all the time. He doesn't always do a lot of commentary. But, like, he is always here as, the, as like, the reason this happens. So props to you, Mark. Shout out. Thank you so much for hosting another wonderful event. Let's get in on Sam's on the plane. She's got the turn one carrying feet are a woman after my own heart. God, uh, do I love the aristocrats. It, yeah, love... Dylan counters it with and, one of oh, his and, dorky triumphs. And we've got a turn to him to Torak, I believe. Ooh, that's a nice Maybe one. Maybe a that's Dark a Confidant. Nice Man, she has yep. a Tomb Reanimate in her hand. Like, yeah. if she had drafted some big idiot, some, like, Crystal Brand or something, she could just... You know, it... Uh, I... Obviously, that's true. And in this particular hand, that's an accurate assessment. 
but uh, I I'm think a terrible idea. Don't, would would never it, recommend it, doing. Yeah, it, yeah, but. yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but it's just funny that it worked out that way because that's yes. like such the ideal opener for so many reasons. Oh, effects. ooh, yikes! Dark ooh. confidant. Oh shit! Force of William, she, a dark confidant. I, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, she has him to twerk in his hand or in her hand, which means that that force of will plus the him to twerk puts her down, puts him down four cards. Does she have a him to twerk in her hand? I, I can't. I, help I, I thought that that's what it. I mean, it, it's no. Hard. That's Ashnon's altar, right? Uh, she doesn't. Uh, Phyrexian altar, maybe. Phyrexian altar, yeah. So I mean, <clears throat> she's actually got a oh. pretty good setup. She can entomb for Gravecrawler, play Phyrexian Altar. Well, and she she's can, like ninety percent there. She can right? just she can just entomb for Gravecrawler and play then it. play it and then sack it and then swing for three. Oh, oh in, Inquisition. So she can Inquisition and then entomb at end of turn and threaten to go yeah. combo. Yeah, like very, and and then just shortly. and and then just well, so it doesn't work with Carry On Feeder. Uh, because you to recast it, you can't. It's a oh, double. It's a right, Phyrexian right, altar right. sacrifice. She would need trigger. something else going yes. on. She would need something with death triggers. She would, uh, need, she would need champion of the parish or diagraph colossus. Yeah. Or um, oh, look at that! Look at look at her. She's feel like just confident hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And hey, I mean, at this point, I, she's got six matches under her belt. I'm sure she's <coughs> feeling better now than she was she, in match she, one. She know? still, she with this match still left to play. She has tripled her lifetime uh, VRD wins, and that's that's a very cool thing. Hell to the yeah, this. let's go. And I'm gonna have to. It's <laughs> rough. Bless you. Oh, my skull's here. Oh, Whew. Wait, how is Dylan still at 20? Dylan is still at 20. Oh, she is definitely swung with Carry and Feeder last turn. Yes, I'm not sure where that update is. We'll send our robot to go drone strike their mana, their their HP pools, their, their life totals. Thank you very much. Yeah, oh, she's reanimating Dark Comp. All right, babe, babe, I, babe, I fucking love you, but you need to stop doing this shit on pre-combat main phase. <laughs> Somebody clip that. <laughs> Your voice got like a whole register lower too. You're like, babe. Listen, babe. 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 If you don't stop, to, if you don't start playing your sorceries in second main phase, I, we're gonna, we're gonna have to have a talk. <laughs> we're, we're I swear. I swear. Uh, hilarious. Is this a splinter twin? Uh, it looks like it yep. is in fact a splinter twin. Yeah, just an easy, and, clean, easy. And she's like, "What does that mean?" Uh, yep. Cover okay. yep. So uh, I talk about this a lot, uh, especially in like cube draft scenarios and stuff. But fun fact: Splinter Twin has no bad matchups. You can try to say like, "Oh, my deck's good against Twin." You're wrong. Your deck's not good against Twin. You Twin's know what, good you against know what, literally everything. You know what it's real bad against? What was it? Rakdos Charm. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like there are individual cards that you can say are good against Splinter Twin, but at, holistically, there's nothing in the goddamn game that is good against that deck. Um, let me think about it. There's probably um, some kind of white aggro deck that you can make that is good against that. Some kind of white hate bears -y thing that you can make that's good against yeah, that. Yeah, I, th I think that hate bears is probably accurate, maybe? I don't know. Um... The problem with those style decks is that Splinter Twin is that they're not as good? good at falling back on, okay, well then I'm just going to play this really strong control game and bolt and kill all your guys. Sure. And then eventually once I remove whatever hate bear you have that actually matters. Yeah, you know, no, I the mean... The Thalia doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to try to play two two spells and I'll get taxed on them. It's a, uh, it's definitely, it fits right into that wheelhouse of like what we talk about makes a good VRD deck, which is that you've got Versatility? Uh, I mean, you've got, yeah, sure, versatility, but, like, redundancy is more important. Redundancy is that is you, huge. like, there's there's two parts of the combo, and you have at least at least two, and then you've got cor Corridor Monitor, which is a third, uh, that fulfills the role of the, yeah, of there, the Pestermite, there's, whatever. There's like infinite dorky creatures, right? You can play Village Bell Ringer and Bounding Crassus and you know, who knows? Um, 
Yeah. But, so, um, but, but like, I mean, you can even play Restoration Angel with Kiki Jiki. That's a really nice one too. Um, so, yeah, um, it's just a ton of nice combos, <laughs> and you can do. I mean, in that game, he just played what like two or three interactive spells in the first few turns of the game. Just played like a memory yeah. lapse and land. Tap something down and then combo. The, you know? the the point is that there are at least two. Uh, I mean, and realistically, there's at least three of each side of that combo, mm-hmm. and they have their own utility apart from that. Yes, and you build the deck to like around their CMCs so that you have effective like defensive strategies. Uh, going into that point and that like, yeah, it, it, it's, it's good. It, it is good. And personally I hate it just cause it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have that satisfying pop. It is not a particularly fun thing to lose to when you're just like, you know, they're on the play and you play like your so, third land yeah. and so, you go, well, do you have it? And now here, here's a, here's the thing that yeah, I can tell you about Sam uh, is that she doesn't sideboard? Okay, okay. Uh, nice. because it's Solid. it seems like a lot of work. Sure, yeah. And uh, for sure, for sure. the card that she wants to bring in that she's that she didn't is uh, is dismember. Mm, and I'm almost certain that, that she didn't that she didn't bring it in. Ooh, discipline Mulligan decision by Sam here. I feel it, like a lot yeah, of people it was. see a mox and they go like, ooh, mox. Well, like a mox and a reanimate, yeah. yeah. And and was just like, you know what? That's not going to win me this. I, yeah. I'm like, she got, she's got three wins on the day. Uh, yeah. she's, oh, she's like, she's that, not that, playing, she's not, she's no slouch. I mean, yeah, three, she's, three in this field. She, I mean, she beat some killers, man. Yeah. That's, that's not easy. She beat Dan and Jeff. Yeah. And those guys, Wait. those guys are great magic players. Wait, did she also beat Steven. She, did she get all of her wins against St. Louis? Oh um, fuck! Yikes! Maybe this was a bad choice. <laughs> no, but I, I, but yeah, realistically, I'm I'm super proud of uh, everything that she's been able to do, and it looks like she's got a one lander here that doesn't disqualify her, but yeah, she yeah, she's going for it. Um. She's on the draw. And gets started with a grave crawler. She's got to reanimate. Um, and realistic. I mean, she's just she's hoping to draw land. And she just doesn't feel like going down to five. Yeah, it's a tricky spot, especially with 12 lands in your deck. Oh, and and pulling a mox and all right, hey. please, please, babe, second main phase. Second main, don't don't play your relentless dead until the second main phase. Also, uh, just no, on, play that with your lands. He, he can only fetch up tap lands with this. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> as a pro, oh oh, it's not even the real instead. It's Ooh, bitter blossom. No, she wants to go with bitter blossom. I like it. Okay. I also, you know what? I'll have a talk with her after this <laughs> about where she places her <laughs> places her mocks. It's going along with the other artifacts and enchantments. What the hell? I mean, that's where the artifacts and enchantments go. Uh, okay, so. Uh, what is that other card she got? Is that an Entomb? Uh, she have Tomb Reanimate in her opener again? That's no. <laughs> it, is it? Uh, oh, yes. man. She, she, she should really uh, Entomb Grief and Reanimate it. Mm, that'd be fun. A nice, nice little play there. I mean, well, especially against a combo deck, like, you know, you get a three, two menace, which like, if you're, if you're pulling the pester mite or the, uh, whatever mm-hmm. out of their hand, mm-hmm. like, Oh, Ooh, but, 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 a, but a him to Turok is really what we want to see. It's gotta be a better one. Cause you gotta figure if he doesn't have a counter spell, this is going to be, you know, it's gotta be your best play. Now the fact that yeah. it looks like you get those cards up. Too real. Let's see you peel Deceiver X Arc and Splinter Twin. Oh yikes! That's seven cards. That is seven magic. Take cards. the good ones. What if it was just eight instead? That'd be dope. <laughs> the, <laughs> we, <laughs> just send them to the pillory. Yeah, I agree. Those two, get rid of them, and we've got. Oh, don't slow roll it. 
Memory Deluge and... Oh, that's not a good one. Splinter Twin! Yeah. Hey, hey, let's go! Liberty Bapo! <laughs> All right, swing for two. Come on, let's go, baby. Uh, Come on. Oh, wait. Did it's you just all reveal lands? all lands? <gasps> oh. Can we go to the replay? <gasps> ah! That's what Mana Bond ladies do. Okay, he had at least a consider. He had at least a consider. I mean... Oh. And it was a land. <laughs> yes. And he'll draw... This is hilarious. He'll get ready and play. A trio me. A trio me. And uh, please untap your mox. What up? Hey, real Eric Benson. Thank you for the follow. Remember, for wanna hear each, my Want to hear for, my impression of Eric Benson? I would love to hear your impression. For each follow, he will do an impression of one person in the chat. Good luck. Hi, I'm Eric Benson. Wow, that's a... I don't know Eric, but I feel like I do now. Yeah. No, that's that's crazy. Holy cow. All right, mana mana draining. Uh, oh, 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 great. Hey, dead. guess what? Just reanimate it. <laughs> uh, it seems like you could in fact just reanimate it. Seems possible. It seems possible. I mean, you don't really want to do that because you don't have any mana open to uh to pay to bring it back. In that case, but you know, also who cares? I mean, it is eighteen to twelve. Fake Eric Benson moment. Real Eric Benson gaming. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, my friend, uh, okay. my friend so, in the chat, my wizard friend in the chat, did in fact clip your horrific. <laughs> God, I don't remember what you said. You know, if, if she listen, start babe, I fucking, I, babe, I fucking love you, <laughs> but you need to play your shit in second main phase. <laughs> or we're gonna get divorced. <laughs> Whatever you said. That that would be difficult. Hilarious. Eric Benson sounded a lot like Jason Statham. What an acute observation. Mm -hmm. Way to go. Oi, I'm Eric Benson. <laughs> Eric Benson's got a. Got a speech issue. Boy, <laughs> might David Michael Phelps will fill my ire. David David Michael Phelps will fill my ire. Whoa! Wait, how oh, do you, oh, how and do we, you know oh, David Michael all right, Phelps? Okay, so we've got a okay. plague belcher. Oh, which uh, is killing popping, the gravecrawler. Popping the gravecrawler. That's minus which is one. Going to shoot him for damage, please. For the love of God, someone remind her that it's yeah, damage. I. We, we, we talked about it. <laughs> the David Salinger, <laughs> Salinger, Jesus Christ. It's been a long day, man. Uh, the beatdown is coming. Dylan's got to find something or he is looking like he could go all the way to the grave. Toes we have been live for over eight hours, you guys. We are feeling good. I'm yeah. honestly feeling better now than I have been all Day. I'm not the feeling end of great. This draft has been Where, coming up so where's my big. Budweiser? Never back down to the beatdown. That's right. You know, uh, Derek Ravine, have you ever heard of Never Back Down to the Beatdown? It's the greatest fight movie of all time. That's a fact. Derek okay? is a relatively a new AI. Okay, that's a dark ritual. Okay, this is dark ritual. That is a Frexian altar. And this looks like it's the combo of game. Probably game. That is game. Even if, even if he can answer this, he's getting beat for nine. Or no, for eight. So even if, no, more, I think. Yeah, right? I'm, get, I'm him, get him! Right in his tutor! It's, uh, it's a close one. Here we go. Never back to never back down to the beatdown is the greatest fight movie of all time. Okay, so we've got the, manic, the Mystic Confluence. To I presume counter the Phyrexian altar, Wait. bounce the plague bearer. I mean, so she still wins. She just attacks. Uh, so it's not. So he is at nine, and she's. I mean, only but but like he five. can't. He can't do combo this turn. Probably not. But there could be ways he could stabilize. Uh, oh, he's also bouncing the grave crawler. Okay, so very disciplined. He's not looking to draw extra cards. He's trying to save as much damage as he can. Shipping in for three with the fairy tokens. Bitter Blossom, the bane of everyone that played Magic for an entire like two year period. 
ironic because it is the bane of Ellen Mackey's existence literally right now. Oh my god, you know what would be so funny if she drew contamination? (laughs) That would be funny. (laughs) That would be really funny. Contamination would be awesome. Uh, Dylan plays a land past his turn. Now, Dylan does not I mean, so she has has six on board. Right. Uh, So she does in fact have lethal at the moment. That would require her to swing out for six first. Uh, and she is, she, listen, listen, I, I love her. That's my woman. <laughs> however, however, she has been known to do some suspect things Ooh, in terms okay, of like. Okay, so we got an update from Kaderberg. Archmage Charm, Shark Typhoon, and Land in the Hand. That looks like enough stuff to keep him alive right now. Uh, yes, however. Playing the ghoul. Okay, I thought that was the thought sees. And she's shipping in for six. Papke's got to either make a shark and block the grave crawler and take four, or use I mean, you, the you, archmage oh, to wait, it's steal not a flyer. the grave crawler. Okay, he is in fact making a four four. It's that weird card that turns into squirrels. Don't talk shit about squirrel girl. This is just the Wednesday Adam version. Squirrel Girl, come on. Okay, um, so he goes to two. Goes down to two. And, then she and recasts she's still got it. Plague Bearer in hand. I mean, yeah. And all she's she, still just got an army of idiots coming in, and they're not is he, slowing down. He's I mean, Splinter Twin is in the graveyard. Right. So, like, he, he's got six lands out there. He can't play Kiki Jiki this turn. So if he has a red source, Kiki Jiki and Pestermite, he can still just win. Because no, because that's not enough mana. It is enough mana. So you, Kiki Jiki costs five. Yeah, and Pestermite costs three, but you get a one mana rebate because you don't tap the land. So it only requires seven lands. But then it's tapped. What's tapped? The, oh, shut up. Yeah, you only need seven mana, so... Um, that's a scoop. Ooh... So Dylan Packy takes a quick L, and they're going to game three. Sam. Oh my God! Please, somebody, to throw somebody, some dirt in his face. Somebody in Come the on, somebody everybody. in that room, tell her to sideboard in dismember. I'm not saying it. Yeah, just like put it out there, put it out there into the void that this is like a Mark, very good thing to do when it gets targeted by Mark, by cough by loudly Splinter and make Twin. It sound like dismember. <laughs> dismember. Just, just do it. Like, life. please, 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 please. <laughs> just say it very... No, just honestly say, like, if you don't side in Dismember, then uh, we've got... Jason Statham's got your boyfriend. He's held hostage. Oh, no. <laughs> it's going to be terrible. <laughs> like, my boyfriend gets to hang out with Jason Statham? That's dumb. Please. Steven, go said, tell I'm go tell her to, to sideboard in dismember. In go do, do it now. What? Don't tell her to sideboard in dismember. <laughs> do it. Come on, don't be. <laughs> I can't. Yes, you can. No, I what can't. kind of code of ethics are you upholding? Wait, wait, will she think that that was Jason Statham or Eric Benson? Because it sounded just like. Eric oh, I'm, uh, well, oh, damn it! Yeah, this tough, plan yeah. is falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How's it going? While you're out there, you mind telling her to sideboard in dismember? Sure. Thanks. Well, just wait until he cracks the door open and just say it really Which fast. member? <laughs> oh, too funny. Someone Listen, do it Listen, now! Little collusion never hurts. This anybody. is for a good okay. cause. Let's uh, let's call up our friend Eric Levine, who's not here and probably in another state somewhere because he works for the coast now, and let's ask him, hey, Eric what are Legally your speaking, thoughts on just a little collusion, like a, a healthy amount of and, collusion. And and to that, Eric always responds, "Who the hell are you, and why are you talking to me?" This guy is yeah. a big dickhead. He always just such comes a off as nice when he's here, but if you run into him on the street, he is like really uptight, like super uppity. He will just he he spat on a guy once, Derek, right in front of me. Derek was insane. Levine. Derek Ravine. We were talking Thank about you. how Eric sounds like a nice guy, like when he's here, but mm-hmm. then if you run into him on the street, he'll like you, you he'll just punch me. I bought the call you. once when he was head judge, and he literally just walked up and nut tapped me in the middle of the GP. <laughs> Dude, yeah, like, same. Just like I've, I in the middle of the GP, and just I, nut tapped me and said, "If you do it again, it's harder." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking about the tap. You, I own you. I'll be honest, and, uh, and it oh, sounds fucked oh, up, but that oh, sounds like oh, Eric. I wait, agree. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Okay. This looks we, like a nice we, hand. Yeah. It's got seven whole cards in it. 
Oh, okay, I thought one of those was a Dothi Voidwalker in a helm. Mm. It, I don't, okay. be, well, I don't, I don't believe that it's leading off of the steam vents. Here we go. Here, can okay. you see? Yeah, yeah. Steven. Okay. Yeah. As long as you speak loudly, we should all be able to. Jo- we got uh, Steven in the in the. Thought I was going to get Dylan at least go three and one against Chicago, but <sighs> was it a two and two for you against Chicago? Yeah, yeah. Nice, good job. All right, we're going with okay. the Shambla. Got the Shambler in play. Does she? Does she have any lands other than the Takagawa? Wait a minute. Did she not play Skull Clamp? Because I have not seen it yet. No, no, no. I think she has it in the deck, right? She has to. I think, I think so. It'd be kind of wild. I doesn't. still have not seen it, though. Like, that makes me very concerned. Has she ever played with Skull Clamp before? Because that's a yes. very weird card to evaluate if you haven't played it before. Okay. Yeah, she's got it in her deck. Come on. It's Wait. just very unlucky that she hasn't drawn it. What the hell? It's on camera. Yeah. You never draw your best stuff on camera. What? Okay, I'm 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 so nervous right now. She's tanking, and she, you know what? Honestly, <clears throat> well, because she drew a castle lock, Wayne, which yeah, only comes into play castle, untapped. It, if, but like, I I thought she had a. I guess she doesn't have another swamp in hand. These are untimed matches. You can take a yeah. second to like make a decision. You know, it's yeah. not a big deal. That's fair. Just I, don't let Eric Levine come over and give you a give you a slow play warning because I heard he nut taps people. Oh my god, well, it's. Oh, Dark Ritual. And... <coughs> ooh, it's, ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 that. that's unfortunate. That's a brutal revamp. Like, revamp. yeah, you... <laughs> play, your fu- play your fucking spells in second main. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that time, I don't think it was going to matter too I, much. You know what? Shut the, up! The revamp's brutal, and she doesn't have a third land yet, so we're going to hope. No, she <laughs> she has an Agadim's Awakening. She's I think she's just averse oh, to playing... Paying the three life, which, like, it's not going to help Castle Lockthwain come into play I mean, untapped. The, it's the correct, it's the correct order of play. Mm-hmm. I mean, three life doesn't matter or not because you're, yeah. you're losing to a million life or you're. But broken. but it's you know this is the way that you get yeah. three untapped lands on turn three. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we're looking at a Splinter Twin, a Force of Will, a Deceiver, Deceiver Exarch, Exarch, but not the just but he's not just the missing. lands. He's just, well, he's got an island. So oh, I think oh, played. she played Mox. Wait, Ooh, how did played. how did she get a mox in? Oh, she because it's it's the it's the three mana. Oh, is that Malakir Rebirth? Yeah. Yep. So she played the mox. She played the Malakir Rebirth as a land. She can play Diagraph Colossus if she wants. Alternatively, I think maybe she's thinking about doing something like Carrion Feeder, Entombing Grave Crawler, and playing Grave Crawler. I could see her doing something like that. All right. Okay. So she gets. Okay, it doesn't look like she wants to play the Entomb. I think maybe she's got bigger ideas for what this Entomb's going to do. It's instant, I mean, right? it isn't instant, but if she Entombs her Gravecrawler, she should have just played it in the main. So it's, she must be going for something other than Gravecrawler. Uh, no, she's she's she's, she's, at, she's, she's she's getting a Gravecrawler. You think yeah. so? Yeah. Interesting. It's just Interesting. before everything. It's experience. Yep. Interesting, interesting, interesting. See. All right, fair enough. This experience uh, of Pap, he officially has it all rolled up right now. He's got the Splinter Twin, he's got the Pestermite, he's got it all. And he uh, looks like he's stopping her for well, some reason, giving her some kind of... Lecture. Uh, okay, yeah. He's saying, excuse me, young lady, what, what, did you know that I'm six foot five? I, I think he was, talks about that a lot. I can tell... <laughs> what a wiener boy. I can tell her her game against Noah. Uh, if, like, no, but if she if she game. has... She, I mean, if she draws a... And she didn't. That's unfortunate. Uh, I if was she drew Alter, she might have... Well, if she drew Alter, I don't think she would have had it necessarily, but... Uh, would have been dope. No, 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 she would have, because she can sacrifice Nested Shambler and the other... Yeah, I think the problem is she can I mean, make obviously, a listen, large it, guy and uh, and then it would just get tapped down by the decision. No, because she can sacrifice the zombies that come in off of Diagraph Clauses. She can use, sacrifice them to Phyrexian Altar to pay for Gravecrawler to do it infinite number of times. And then she can sacrifice those to carry on feeder. Right. But she still only has one infinitely large attacker. Um, Not that but... It uh, that but it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Instead, Papke has the combo. It's rolled up. He plays the Splinter Twin, and just like that, a fast Splinter Twin man. 
is really good. It's really, really good. You play a reman, you play some interactive spells, you play a cantrip, and then boom. Yeah. Combo. It works super well. I know Dylan Peck, he's got to be so happy. He was so excited to come down here, yeah. play in this group of people with the guys, and play Splinter Twin. Yeah. He's uh, he's always in the chat telling people to draft it and everything. He's got to be excited about it. So. Uh, yeah, no, congratulations to the Chicago crew. There's one more game to go. but I mean, more, it, doesn't, it, doesn't go, yeah, it doesn't change. Yeah, it doesn't change that they, uh, we have what? You're all fired. You're all off the team. Yeah, I should be. Sam's the only one with merit. <laughs> Noah finished everything and... No, no, no. No, no, It's misreported. It's misreported. So Dylan and Noah still have to play for first place. Yeah. Dylan and Noah have to play and Chad and Swifty have to play? Is that... I guess so. No, I think it's Chad and Swifty. I think that's it. Gotcha. Are they... Still... No, the... I don't know. Yeah. Then, get, then get out of the all booth. Right, go find out for us. Yeah. And if it's all... Do Chicago, something useful. If it's all just the Chicago internals, I'm going to... <laughs> all in on Team Barbel. Hey, if you're on Team Barbel in the chat, let us know. Really yeah. Quick. Give us a, like a hashtag Barbell, okay? So that guy needs all the support he can get. He cries himself to sleep literally every night. I shared a bed with him last night. It was profound. When you cast uh, Derek Bot, when you cast Reanimate, you have to have a target in mind. You can't reanimate and then entomb. Okay. I was thinking that might be it's. I understand right, so now Dylan why. Noah and then Swifty and Chad are playing right now. So those are the two that are. Okay. Swifty and Chad are playing right now. And then Dylan and yeah. Noah. What game are they on? Can they uh, like, it's like two or three. Can they get in like for the rest of their game three or whatever? I would try to move. I can see where they're at. If they're playing at the other table. If they if can't, if they can just they's slide bitches. Over. Chad, I just wanted to see if we could get one dub on camera for Chad's daughter. Okay. Here's like, the, the dirtiest part about this is if uh, you look at the standings, it's going to be a guaranteed top four lock for Chicago. Yeah, we know. And a bottom four lock for St. Louis. No way, really? Yeah. Holy it seems hell. like there's a lot of collusion on the Chicago side, which really pushes a lot, things in yeah. direction. So <laughs> yeah. I understand that some people care more about winning than about honor, but it's just like a shame that that's how it had to come out in the end. <laughs> wow. You know, sometimes you close your eyes. Accusation, sometimes huh? you huh? close your eyes and okay, see the place right. where you used to live. They're finishing two, and it doesn't look like it's going to go to three. All right, fair enough then. Let's get our final match on camera, okay? Let's do this. That's a you know what? That's, that's a that's a good Yahtzee roll. It is a good Yahtzee roll. Uh, much better than that garbage oh, pile. Oh boy! Uh, if I had to guess, they were doing poker poker hands. Well, uh, Caterberg says poker roll. That is a classic. In Chicago, okay. Oh, uh, we just we poke a roll and drink malort, and oh, don't you know, you fucking idiots. <laughs> Anyways, let's play some goddamn magic. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> Man, I can't I, believe uh, your boy <laughs> did my girl I, like I that. I knew the end of this draft was gonna be salty, but wow, this is ugh, brutal. I mean, do you want me it, to pull one of the other Chicago guys in here to do the last match? No, so this is don't better. Have to no, I don't. I, it doesn't. It doesn't work if I don't know them. This is a this <laughs> okay, is good this banter. Is good. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. I, we, I this is we don't we don't never. Oh, wait, wait, oh, that's eight cards. That's eight cards. <laughs> well, uh, you know, Mark did very clearly explain there was a lot of collusion going on. Okay, so you know. Hey, Dylan, stop drawing eight <laughs> cards. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He just so, put his fingers together. Um, if I understand, though, with the standings the way they they are, after this match, we will have one conclusive winner, right? There are no other five ones or five twos. Two, three, four. Why are you cutting away? I'm counting how many cards he has in his hand. Okay, only so. Oh wait, no, we'll have two wow. five. Wow, we'll have two five twos. Derek Bot is in on the collusion. Oh my god, that means we might have to have a playoff after this one, you guys. Low key, low on the low low. We might have to have a playoff to decide the champion. Are you excited? I'm so excited. How are you excited about a turn one library of Alexandria? How does that feel for you? How okay. do you how do you like that one? Oh, wait, he's tapping because he drew eight cards? What happened to SCG champion Mason Lang? I'm literally right fucking here, bro. What the fuck? How was um, he draw? He was on the play. <laughs> what do you mean? He, he tapped library at the end of his opponent's turn. He, when he's on the play, well, how does he have... He did, he, uh, did he do it on his own turn? Uh, and he, then missile, and then daze? So that's why he only has one land in hand? How does he have... Dylan is announcing his plays like he's on Yu-Gi-Oh. I love it. How did he... If he played Library about... All right, you know what? I don't care. This is this is all an asterisk in my book. All right, I have to pay attention to this match because this is some high-stakes stuff, okay? Let me let me do my thing. Yeah, well, the, maybe tell your players not to cheat. 
<laughs> Noah tapping four mana up with that mana crypt. That mana crypt coming out on turn one. Actually insane. Hey, somebody go back and clip, blood clip where Dylan elf. draws eight cards. For a Bloodbraid Elf into a Punishing Fire. Pretty low-key cascade. Kapop. Played his library on turn one and then played his second land. With well, he life. shouldn't be able to do that with eight cards in his hand. Uh, punishing Fire coming down, targeting Dylan in the Chrome Dome and putting a little bit more pressure on his life. An attack puts him down to 16, and now we are going to see, basically now, does Dylan have the combo rolled up or are we going to continue playing Magic? <sighs> but you... Okay, so you see that... that if it were so not for that Splinter have... Twin... Dylan would be three and three right now, and then if he beat Noah, then they would both be four and three. Sam would be four and three, mm -hmm. and then whoever between the other match would but also be four and three. Between the other match, there would be one, five, and two. Yeah, just no. That's but fine. if we kill that guy. Yeah. Yeah. So Papke's going for a main phase brainstorm. Now, so far, these brainstorms have not been great for Papke. Uh, usually, when he's playing them, he's just drawing the next two cards. So he's untapping and drawing for his turn. He's in the tank. And he will... Okay, this is going to sound a lot like smoke, but Dylan Packy is the slowest goddamn magic player in the freaking world. I, and he I, plays on Marsh Flats in attack hey, mode. You're, you're acting like I'm not even here, and it's <laughs> fucking rude. Okay. At least I know when you're uh, ta in the tank, you're thinking. I'm pretty sure when Dylan's in the tank, he's just thinking about, like, One Piece or something, okay? Well, you He's know, just thinking it, about it's a really long board. anime. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give him credit Ew. for that. It takes damage off the mana crypt. I feel like that's the first time I've seen Noah take damage off mana crypt. Low uh, yeah, key. yeah, no, I mean for fucking real. That man is the luckiest human being alive. Okay. He's also super rich. His family is rich as fuck. Oh man, kill him all. In case you guys didn't know that. What? Yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> Tapping three mana up for his bl uh, beloved Layla. beloved Lelia. He is and tapping his Carplus in Forest. It is. I feel like it's a little weird that he's tapping his Grove of the Burn Willows instead of just. Oh, he. That's a. That's a brush Temple Garden. Got it. Yeah, Brushland Temple Garden. So he only has the one red source. That makes a lot of sense. The attack coming in for four off the Exalted Trigger, putting Papke to thirteen. Is that right? Did he take less damage than he should have? I don't know. No, he was probably at seventeen. That's fair. You know what the really cool tech it like listen man i i, I really want to i really wanted okay. sam to finish in top four or whatever it's they, fine they, it didn't happen but i thought one of the coolest pieces of tech that we didn't report on during the draft was after the um after the stoneforge mystic got taken mm -hmm. and sam had uh just she was in her sideboard picks i mean and she no, Skull Clamp had already been taken, gotcha. or she had already taken that. But what she took was Lion Sash, because mm. Lion yeah. Sash is a card up. that you can, like, you can get in with, uh, Stoneforge. like, yeah, with Stoneforge, yeah. and then like, if you got five mana, you can Stoneforge and get rid of Gravecrawler and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I feel like that was just a very heads up draft. Move. It was. It was a really good move. Yeah. On part. A really, really good move. She only. How I did that, that like Temple Garden hit, get uh, untapped? Hit. So oh, this that, is a, that was this is the next turn, turn yeah, and then Layla got turn. recast. And uh, then got but when the Layla came okay. down, we got a Force of Will, and now Pat, and then now Noah is following it up with a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Again, Papke does looks like he's kind of just trying to hold on at this point. Another attack for four comes in. Nine damage. Nine HP. Swift. If you go ahead and get in on here. I gotta go tinkle winkle with you. Okay, we're gonna have uh, our friend of the stream, Andrew Swift. Me and Swifty. Hey, Mason, how's it going? <clears throat> Doing great, buddy. Can't wait to see these last couple matches play out, and then potentially I think we're going to have a playoff after this one. Uh, the driver of the Chicago car said no, because the tie is going to be between me and the winner of this. So we'll see what happens. Sucks to be him. What the fuck? We need to set a winner, bro. What? <laughs> uh, All righty. Yeah. So we've got uh, Steam Vents coming into play. Uh untapped putting him down to six life this could be for a mystic confluence which would help keep him alive for an extra turn yeah very good stuff 
Uh, oh, it's no, Castle it's a Lenmark. Marset Parter of Vales. So this is an untapped land because, goddamn, we need to hit something. Am I right? And that is a remand. Not going to do anything on the board. Uh, technically, he is not dead on board. He's only facing five damage. No. Yeah, he's facing five damage. So the question is, so why did Dylan dead. shock in? Okay. Oh, it's because he's got a Merchant region. All sure. Right, that makes a lot more sense. Yep. Um... So we've got Merktide Regent coming down. It's probably going to be like a 6-6 six, six or an 8-8 eight, eight or something. 7-7, um, seven, seven, there you go. And uh, Noah is safe. He's going to draw. He's got a lot of hasty damage in his deck. Yeah, we'll especially see. with two more cards potentially off Fable. Absolutely. Tank trying to decide. I, I'm wondering if he's deciding, am I trying to kill him this turn, or am I trying to look... Oh, that's right, Narset. So, Fable's not going to get basically get anything that's, off that second trigger. Oh, I think Dylan's telling him right now, didn't you already discard those cards, sir? <laughs> yeah, but as we like to say... We're at, we're at a nice, casual right. at rules enforcement level here. We're, we're chilling. Not a big deal. Okay, so we've got the Renin Six. So we were repping two damage now, uh, potentially three if we shoot with Renin Six. We've got a Wooded Foothills, which means we can actually play Punishing Fire, which is good for one damage total. Um, but it is not looking like we have a profitable attack at this point. Uh, yes. We could attack with the Bloodbraid Elf, for four, and if he blocks with Merktide Regent, we ping with Renin Six, and then return Punishing Fire, and then use Punishing Fire to finish it off. Um, that was something we could have done, but we did not. Did we so, need to attack for four there? Because it took three off normal. We could still ping it for four to bring it to four damage because it's only a six six, and Punishing Fire will deal the last two. Isn't it normally a three three? That was a 2-2. Two, two. I think it's a 3-3. Three, three. I think it's a 7-7 seven, okay. seven right now. It's but seven. I could be wrong about that. If 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 that is the case, then okay. yeah, I think I think that probably would have been yeah. a play. Um, but instead, no. No, he's going figuring, to the face. Yeah, he's figuring with Renin 6 and Punishing Fire, Yeah, he can finish this guy off. Our set goes to 1. Looks for something. He's got to find something that looks like a consider, perhaps, and three lands. But he seems like he's in the tank, so he probably has a choice to make. Consider or something. Unfortunately, I really feel like Pappy's going to have a hard time with this game, even if he can live through this turn. Right. Between Red and Six threatening to ping, Punishing Fire threatening to ping. Yeah, because he like can't. Spot. And if he doesn't get another blocker, he can't leave. He can't attack with Merc Tide because yep. Dismiss is certainly not doing anything at this point. No. That is a very expensive spell to be trying to sling. There's this Hall of the Storm Giants. He is attacking the Ren Insects, so yeah. he's gotta have a way to deal with that attacking goblin from Fable. Mm-hmm. Two, safe off the damage. Barbell looking at his hand, trying to figure out what he's got. Got a flip on the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So now we've got the reflection of Kikijiki. Threatening a three damage attack. He's got a Stoneforge Mystic, deciding if that's worth it to play. I think he is in a situation where he could play, where he could go get Sword of Fire and Ice, probably, and, like, play it and equip it or something. Um, but then he wouldn't be punishing firing this turn. So it's probably worth it to just start by getting... Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't think getting a sword at this point is going to help because Pepke has Dismiss. But dismiss Papke can't cast dismiss because he's dead to attacking creatures. So, so Papke's got to have probably has Mystic Confluence to bounce all the creatures that are coming in. That would make sense. In which case, he would at least have bought himself another turn. Right. Uh, potentially another 
two turns if Noah plays this wrong. And two turns is really all he needs, because all he needs to do is turn that Merc Tiger to sideways twice. Mm-hmm. Um, Noah is at a perfectly low life total that Merc, that a couple turns of Merc Tiger Agent attacks could finish him off. Oh, gosh. Are you playing a Sword of Fire and Ice when your opponent has? Ooh, yeah. Yep. That's going to be ugly. Counter that. Bounce that. Bounce that. Oh, wait. Is he not bouncing Ignoble Hierarch? That seems a little weird. What are we saying that that token is? That token's a treasure from the fable. Ah, yeah, okay. Okay. So we're just figuring out what everything is real quick. Yeah, so it looked like he bounced all the creatures. The uh, flipped fable. Yep. So we're getting an equip. So Dylan is now at two life, which means he is... Yeah, with a creature that has a sword of fire and ice on it, so... Oh, and he's not attacking for one with Ignoble Hierarch. N Ignoble Hierarch just got recast oh, off the got treasure. Recast off the yeah. treasure. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Swiftly. Yeah. Are you five and two? Yes. So... You are up for the finals. Yes. That's awesome. I'm really glad. Yeah, yes. Thank you. It's I found my niche with these like white control decks. I won one online, like a Mardu with Mardu. So I kind of came in wanting to draft white control again. Yeah. So I mean, it, white kind of leaves itself open sometimes, and if you can capitalize on it, and you did with like getting the premium removal spells. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, I learned from this guy right here that, you know, balance is a heck of a magic card. I, you know what? I, I saw the deck list, and I was like, this looks familiar. I may have been peeking at your winning <laughs> list okay. from a few drafts okay. ago. All right. So Dylan has no answer to the sorted up creature, and Noah manages to take down the game. Really, really close game one. Oh, that's game one? <clears throat> that was game one. Nice. <clears throat> Brandon, do you want back in? No, you're... Okay. Chill, chill out, man. Yeah. You, you, no, I, I've been... If you're in the finals, you've earned a spot in the booth. I've wanted that's, that's to come why, in here. Why do, you think, why do you think me and Mason are in here, you know? Yeah. I've wanted to come in here every time I've been doing one of these, but never yeah. done it. So, yeah, it's fun to get to sit in a chair and talk about a match. Absolutely. Now, um, can we open up some sideboards or something so I can see what Noah or Papke... Let's bring up... Can we bring up Noah's sideboard? I want to see what he might have for the Splinter Twin matchup. I, he is pretty light on interaction in general, but I, you know, since we're treating this very seriously, TM, uh, I want to pretend that I'm actually going to look at and see what he <laughs> sideboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it Noah's... looks like neither of them sideboard at all. They're just ready to go for game two. Um, Sideboards are stupid. That's how Sam feels. Let's see... <laughs> Archon of Myria. Okay, so he certainly wanted to board in Archon of Myria. He did. And I'm guessing he could have also boarded in Asp Sorcerer's Spyglass. Probably better to stay in the sideboard because he's got the Karn. Right. Um, Ooh, that's a turn one monkey. Regardless, turn one monkey and turn one tapped Triome. Okay. Noah feeling very good about his, his Monka start. Okay. I mean, <laughs> he's already down to 17 life, and Dylan's at two. That's a great and point. So this monkey this is, is going to <laughs> take Dylan out early. <laughs> My <laughs> God, <laughs> actual, actually brutal. Oh, packing. oh my god, the signature play from Noah Marvel, <laughs> the Mana Crypt, the Minskin, boo! Oh this my. man knew he wanted to sling hamsters this weekend, and he is here yeah. to party, baby. Let's go. Big attack for five, also going to exile the top card, also going to make a treasure. Let's hope that it's not a one-mana cantrip. It's a mana drain. <clears throat> How does Dylan come out of this one? Um, he doesn't. The he... problem is, even if he can find an answer for the stupid uh, hamster, it's literally just going to come right back and start swinging again. Yeah. 100% chance I play in the next one. I can't let this bullshit <clears throat> I agree. What Minskin Boo is gonna be your new favorite card, Brandon? Are you me? kidding me? No, yeah. no, I don't like it. 
You're I'm not insane. saying I'm not saying it's not good. I'm saying I don't like it. How could you not like it? <laughs> okay, oh. my God, Noah's actually just popping off. Jesus Christ! How many lands? Not sword. enough. Get fucked. Holy! Dylan Papke literally has two <laughs> lands. <laughs> the man literally has two lands in play, and Noah is threatening. Is this a turn three lethal? Yeah, that's a turn I mean, three lethal, and Noah takes it down. Swifty, how are you feeling about your matchup against he Noah? He started it I, too. I easily beat him, and Noah. I'm. We're not going to say that on stream, but I easily beat him the first time. Okay, this is so, going to be a sick matchup. Then good luck for my friend. Get it. Yeah. Uh, send Chad in here. All right, send Chad in here to hang out. Uh, and either Chad can sit in the in the thing, and he can talk about. Or... Hey, did Chad go five and two? No, it's my seat. Uh, you didn't go five and two either, nerd. Last time I played, I did. <laughs> That's a great point. Um, yeah, isn't it crazy how usually the conversation is like, oh my god, like, if Jeff wins, he goes 6-1, then we have a 6-1 playoff, and there's a 5-2, but, like, this was a really, like, at, so, at the end of the day, this it was, was so really close. It was so tight. You know, they're going to a game three. They're going to game three? Yeah. Didn't? Oh, Papke won the last game? Papke won game one. Papke won game one. Oh, I'm so bad. Okay, yeah, Jesus. Don't worry about I, that. I, like, I got distracted looking at something else for, like, two seconds, and then they scooped up their cards. I was like, oh, I assumed Noah was, like, just attacking with the thing. All right. Well, no, I didn't see what happened. Well, but, come uh, hang out. Hi, oh. Come hang out with us, Chad. Give some commentary sure. on your friends playing Magic. It's fun. Uh, I didn't see the end of the first game. I know uh, Papke won, and I know that Noah said he made a misplay. And that Noah, made a, really Noah made a really bad misplay. Noah made a really bad misplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Noah basically had the choice of just, like, hanging with Renan 6, whittling him down one life, with punishing fire and leaving him like, you know, vulnerable, potentially dead. And instead, he like ran out of sword into like he knew his opponent had a counter spell, and instead he had the better counter spell, bouncing forward and everything. It was just a really bizarre line where like think, Noah was committed to this. Yeah, like, Noah's, sword. Noah's essentially um, checked out. He said out there uh, quite, quite pointedly that. He beat everyone from St. Louis, so he doesn't really care too much. Oh at this my point. God! Do you guys <laughs> not want to win the draft? Jesus! Like, th there's like what a, is with you there, guys? There's like an there's an additional like hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> worth of food, prizes baby. that you Come get on, to take up. And like, right. you guys don't strike right. me as not drinkers. <laughs> Um, he's not, too, not but we're well, all. Well, right. I, I got the draft order from my wife, so. Okay. There you go. <laughs> we've got our <laughs> game underway. We've got a turn one fetch for a triome, and we've got a turn one ignoble hierarch. Noah, not popping off yet, but definitely still threatening the turn two Minsk and Boo. <laughs> okay, a couple lands, and we're playing the Carplusion Forest so that we can play Lyla. Carplusion. There's no I in it. What did I say? Carplusion. Oh, that sounds about right. It sounds wrong. <laughs> and we got the Layla, but the mana leak hits the Layla. And now we got the third land. And we got the Thought Knots here, the TKS. And another counter spell. This one what? Is, ju is just delaying it by a turn. Th so that's, th that puts you at a card disadvantage. It's a time walk, bro. It's a time walk. Time walk is great. All right, there you go. Sure. All right. Is there... And now we have the actual hard counter spell. So here's the thing I hate about you, row. Chicago people, uh, is that you keep your it. goddamn hands all the way back. <laughs> you, we, you can't see. It. We're not. I'm pretty sure I yeah. visually on stream. Don't worry, it, it showed earlier. Really I mean, okay, that's fine. But you guys keep your your fucking hands back. We don't know how many cards no, you no have in hand. Me to. Oh, nobody... T you know what? They, that's a fair point. That's that's, that's honestly camera, Mark's bro. fault. I'm pretty sure Mark was born in Chicago, probably. They don't know how to play on camera, I, just, I, don't, I don't know if that's accurate, but it is now. Okay. That's, we that's canon. Guys, it's canon. I don't think Trinisphere is that bad for Papke in general. He does no. have a lot of cantrips in his deck. Uh, but well, But then now his, his Splinter Twin has to cost at least three. Baby, What is happening? So, I'm so confused. What is happening right now? He, like, played Trinisphere, but, like, Papke already had Pestermite in play? Or something? I don't get it. Something weird just happened. I don't understand. You Chicago players are so fucking loose. 
<laughs> yeah, I dare you to say that. Brandon fucking Curry. They don't call him the magician for nothing, okay? It's not because he plays magic. I'll it certainly magic. isn't. My God. All right. All right. Regardless of what happened, instead of playing Trinisphere, he stomped the Pestermite. Okay, that's what's happening. They don't call me the magician for nothing. <clears throat> Where did that eye go? He put it in Carplusian Forest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, now we've got the Jason the Mind Sculptor. Now we've got the Trinisphere. Now we've got the Fable of the Mirror Breaker to make a token. Is Fable of the Mirror Breaker better than playing the Bone? I completely Bones forgot Bones? that Dylan had a Black Lotus in his deck. Okay. I have. This is the first time I've seen him play it, and it's not looking good in this game. I'll tell you nope. That. No, he got it against me in our match and cast a like turn three or four Shark Typhoon that got countered. Yep, that's rough. Yeah, that's like Ariba Dachi might. Ariba I mean, see, you know, it seems like with your deck, you know, you can do some, uh, you know, turn two to fairy and then just hold up until he goes for attacks with Splinter Twin and just be like, oh, yeah, you remember that time where I let myself cast everything okay, that's a sorcery as instance? Of, Supreme Verdict. Running yeah. up the oh, Sword yeah. of Fire oh. Dice and getting in with the Ignoble. Got a little trigger action. Taking out the Jace, drawing an extra card. It's looking good. But we've got the Deceiver Exarch, and if we've got the... If we've got it... <laughs> I'll pay three because of Trinisphere. If we've got it, it looks Is like it? it's good. Oh, uh, and it's good! Dylan Packy takes it down! It's a playoff. How do you feel against, about your matchup against Papke? Pretty good. To, yeah. to, hey, play Teferi into Supreme Verdict. Make Blow him out on camera. Let's see it happen. <laughs> well, oh, we're gonna Noah s- with a terrible... Yeah. <laughs> God, what a terrible line to lose yeah. that match. He was so close. No, You know, the unfortunate thing about Noah is that he gets tired. And when he gets tired, he gets it, the, unhappy. Sad day for the Barlow fans. Big L for all the Barble fans out in the stands today, guys. Oof. You Ooh. hate to see it happen. Uh, hey, you remember that one. Remember that time I was so, like, hey, so if Noah loses his last three matches... <laughs> yeah, that's true. And you're like, that's so unlikely. <laughs> uh, okay, we've got our final match against... I gotta message all the nerds. Finals match with Swift and Papke. They might be uh, drawing. Why? What are you talking about? There, there was talk out there. Because Don't do that. There's a what? long drive. It's, it's, a it's when you play that. Yeah. They have to have, a, we have to have a winner, bro. It's a, it's, it's a tradition. It's for... It's not really up to us. Like, it's not the institution of the good Sure. Okay? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Is I, 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 say that, I say that Mason refuses to drive until, you know... I didn't drive it. It's my car. Well, then I would say that you refuse to drive until they play their match. He's the one who's petitioning them <laughs> to leave. He want, he's the one who doesn't want no. to say. <laughs> well, it's too bad that... You slashed your tires. <laughs> oh, so, wait, what the hell? Hold on. Is there something you're kidding me? Hey! 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 We're gonna, we're gonna fuck! We're gonna, we're gonna fucking punch some faces! Kids these days. And somehow I'm still the only legitimate Chicago winner in these fucking drives. Are they oh seri- are they seriously they're, calling? They're seriously not playing. That no, that's fucking whack, dude. That's I say we give it to Sam. I I mean we just like don't have we have like a tie here. Third place, I guess. Like doesn't matter. Right, switch over to the top down view. We have uh, the no. Going. Yeah, okay. So I Burn guess it that, down. that is it. Chad, we're gonna need you nice. Oh, okay. yep. the draft we'll cut this part off at the end so the Are they... recording doesn't have to have us just Complaining at them for like ten minutes. Yeah, that's fucked. Yeah. Uh, that's 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 fucking whack. I'm like, listen, I like to talk a lot of shit, uh, but now I'm turning it on to the mode where I'm serious and I'm talking shit. Well, that's fucking whack. I agree. It is very lame and outside of the spirit of like competition. Uh, I'm sorry. That's uh, that's a bummer. Um, so. Yep. 
so I guess they're gonna pick out some bottles of alcohol. Uh, looks like some good stuff. I think that's two different Jeffersons. We got a Jefferson Ocean Agency and Jefferson Reserve. That's kind of cool. And that one also says Jefferson's Reserve. And I this guess is, they're this is disgusting. Yeah, this is uh, super. This is super upsetting. Okay. I can't. I can't I, watch this. I, yeah, I don't know what to say at this point. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, hmm? Okay, so. Uh, the announcement is the next Vintage Rotisserie Draft will be at uh, April 1st. Be there, be square. It's going to be intense. Uh, they'll probably post the lineup and who's going to participate in said draft. Uh, if I invited, you know I'm going to be here. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, and we'll, and we'll be here until the finals have concluded. <laughs> okay, all right. Hey, let's, let's try not to... I'm, I'm not I, happy look, with I'll, this. I'll, yeah, I don't need it. Uh, moving on. Thank you guys for watching today. Anybody who stuck out and watched a lot of the matches, we love you to bits. It was a lot of fun. Anything else, Mark, Eric? Uh, if this seemed like fun to you, you want to try out Vintage Rotisserie Draft, uh, jump online, jump on the Discord, come hang out with us. Uh, you can learn all about the format. You can play one of our asynchronous drafts on our Discord server. We play them. Uh, we haven't. Or we're gonna fire uh, a, a few pretty soon, and uh, you can dip your toes in the format. And if you crush it online, you live in the U.S., you can get invited to come to these too. Just bother Mark. That's he, true. He posts his personal phone number online. You can just talk to him. Just yeah. No, him. you can just Why you can not? sign him up for any yeah. number of mailing lists. Find his address. I oh mean, yeah. It's, easy. it's yeah. oh it's super. Man is not secure yeah, for, online. Okay. <laughs> this house right now. I could probably show you, like, is that, like, what is this? This is a mail right here. I mean, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's real bad. It's real so, bad. So jump on the Discord, hang out with us, play some Vintage Rotisserie Draft. Let's play this awesome format. Thank you guys so much. This has been a great stream. Thank you, Brandon, yep. for having an, Thank awesome, you, Mason. For an awesome day. Thanks, Mark, Neem, for hosting. Thanks, all the guys who helped make the stream run. It was a good time. Party hardy. Yeah, uh, and we will be doing this for years and years until the chil until barbarian Caterberg Caterberg and, <laughs> and an Logan Caterberg man. are just taken down one and two every single Absolutely. time. Absolutely. And we just have to retire the format. Next year we're gonna do the same tournament, Chicago versus St. Louis. We're gonna do it in Chicago. We're gonna host you guys up there. It's gonna be legit. Yeah, absolutely. Gonna be so uh, this is this is the child that is not uh, this is not barbarian Caterberg. Yeah, this is the uh, other Caterberg. This is the other Caterberg. Now uh, has been on every single stream, so we need to get him in here. Gotcha. Yeah. That's important. That's important. It's not gonna be open. Uh, yeah. He might be mad. We'll find out. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we'll listen, see. I'm we'll just see. as upset as he is about how this turned out. So. Uh, <sighs> You know, times. I, I get it. That's like fun. the little little kid shares my sensibilities. Mm. Well, you know. Hey -o. What's up, Logan? What's get up, up in here. Logan Ruski. Okay, So, um, give good. it, give it. What do you say? Like two years, three cheese. years? Cheese. Cheese. What kind of we'll, cheese? We'll have to start the VRD uh, juniors league. Oh, he doesn't need that kind of handicap. <laughs> well, you know, he, he's got his kids no, yeah. who can get in, you know. Oh, okay. I, I've got a few running around out there. They might be older, I don't know. We'll uh, when they so, make themselves known. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, my God, I guess my kids... I used to donate a sperm bank in New York, so I guess they'd be about eight right now. Hell yeah. yeah. I like it. Nice. I saw a movie about that once. All right, thank you guys very much. Thank you, St. Lotus. Appreciate you. Love you guys. Always fun.